you're one of us. Your passion is the world of mountain biking, from enduro to gravel races and everything in between. This is Insider MTB, the podcast that takes you behind the handlebars, into the dirt, and behind the scenes of the mountain biking world. And now your host, Austin White. I um, am playing Tetris with RVs and trailers and dealing with terrain that changes every year. <laughs> and it, the grid that they look at when they buy their camping pass is not necessarily where it is. <laughs> so we fit them in. You do make it work. I Seriously, like, it's been, it's crazy. Thank you. I, I, first off, um, <laughs> inter- give me a little bit, okay. Yes. So your sister as mm-hmm. well works at Sea Otter? And yes, she does. Her name is Jeannie Pruitt Redomoso. Now she goes by Jeannie Redomoso. She has been the operations director now, um, I think, for 10 years. But she was some other roles before that. But 25 years of Sea Otter. Really? Yes. And It flew by. I can't even... I remember the first time that she started working with Sea Otter with Frank Johannan, who's the owner. And she was stuffing packets, for like race packets. And I think I remember seeing them all in this room. And I introduced her to this whole crew through some South Africans. Um, the Neethlings know them. Uh, um, Erica Green and Spook Gronewald. Uh, Spook's not here. He's doing UCI stuff. But Erica's here, and she's actually managing the downhill course. Okay. And they've been doing it longer than, like, anyone. She flies uh, here from South Africa every year and just to do this event. W- okay. So then... <laughs> You know the insights of this whole, like, I, I was crazy in a sense, right? Like, This event is super crazy. There's nothing else like it. I've been coming to it since, I think, 96. So, I, or 97, I was, like, 14. We camped in the same campground. <laughs> it's been like this every year. I mean, obviously, it's growing yeah. more than back, you know, then. But there's no place where you can have so many cycling disciplines, so many vendors, so many exhibitors. Uh, the amount of bike races happening and podiums happening, it's just like, I don't even know <laughs> how people are working 80 hours a week. Like each person working, especially the operations team are working 80 hours, like literally 80 hours a week. Um, so it's an amazing thing. It's just like, we're creating this amazing bike festival. That's like a music festival. That's like a inner bike replacement. That is a new meeting place for new companies to connect and the the demo situation with bikes the last yesterday was more than they've ever had ever on a thursday is this the biggest sea otter ever right now it is yeah we had a meeting yesterday and i was just hearing like each like head of department kind of report 
And I was just like, okay, yeah, it really is. Because it looked like it. And from my perspective, the fact that people are so aggressive about getting campsites, I was like, okay, is it just me? <laughs> or is it just the marketing team is doing amazing? Um, it's the new Lifetime Marketing Team. So obviously, if you aren't following Sea Otter for the last 30 years, it has now recently been sold to Lifetime. So it is now a Lifetime event. So there's a whole new crew that's learning the the legacy happenings of this event. How much did the Lifetime sell-off, I guess, change for your sister's role then? Right. So she's still a contractor. She, okay. I'm not going to say refused, <laughs> but she... Uh, <laughs> You know, she's been a contractor for this whole time, and that works well for her. And she's not an official payroll lifetime employee, but um, that's the only thing that would have changed. But for her, she has a new team she communicates with. And uh, I think she told me yesterday that it was the smoothest Thursday they've ever had, <laughs> which is kind of crazy if you think it's uh, the most people we've ever had move in on a Monday. And then, right, so I've been on site since Saturday. She's been on site for two weeks here uh, at the Ops Center. Is there a house on site? I mean, or? she might as well live in the little mobile trailer. <laughs> but no, I mean, there's no house on site. How many staff members? What is it? What, like, give me an in, a little bit of oh, insight. Oh, I knew you were going to ask me this a, stuff. But like <laughs> a, a rough estimate. You don't have so to be on. So I do believe Lifetime put out some marketing material that has little numbers, mm -hmm. like maybe potentially accurate numbers of each thing accurate <laughs> numbers. okay okay um but we're like over a hundred thousand you know definitely way over a hundred thousand people here i wish i took that thing that i saw earlier gosh because it was like five hundred thousand impressions or something crazy like that and i was like what does that even mean is that like social media <laughs> like what is that? Yeah, no. <laughs> i don't know what that means so okay it's it's okay. So this is the biggest U.S. event for cycling? Biggest world. cycling event in the world. And world. it has been for like as long as I. When else have you heard of something like this happening? I don't know. You're right. You're 100% like, even right. Even the world yes. championships. I mean, maybe the Olympics, but that's not that's not what this is. This is there's yeah. no expo at the Olympics. I don't even know if the Olympics has this much for cycling, though. Right. right. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, they don't have as much fun as <laughs> they we have. They definitely don't <laughs> no, have as much no. fun. Yes. I mean, I will tell you as a media guy trying to run around and get to all the podiums or right. all the different things, it's wild. I can tell you how many media people have signed up. <laughs> I, I remember that number. Really? Yeah, 42. 42. I feel like there's uh, more out there. I'll be straight up honest. Well, honestly, I, there 42 are... 42 real people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's probably better. Honestly, you're supposed yeah. to have a vest, and that was a thing, and they're running where they shouldn't, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot. You don't think it's a big bike event, but it's huge. I mean, if you were yeah. to look at the numbers report after, this is just ginormous. I can't emphasize that more like everything is just big yeah about this event but it's okay so for me i would just i want i've came to this a few times and i'm like i am definitely never coming back for the fact that the traffic was so gnarly so then you <laughs> you got me lined up you're like hey check out a camping spot yeah changed my life i have rejuvenated my feelings about sea otter Yay. yes and i for anyone who's ever had the traffic delay for getting in right and i'm not it's because it's big i'd right like it's not nothing you could do right i guess you get a helicopter <laughs> or, or you camp those are the two you options can ride your bike here you can you okay you're right i'm not an athlete that much of an athlete uh, i've seen you ride bikes <laughs> plenty you could do it <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that that's feels good no one no one will believe me after that now um that being said like the the idea of camping at a mountain bike event it's crazy, like, it's the level of what you have here, too, right? Like, mm. you're catering to someone, like, we're in a great motorhome here, right? Yes. And, and yeah, you're, you're on a house on wheels. I'm on a house yeah, on wheels, yeah, yes. Yeah. I'm very fortunate. <laughs> but for you, you're catering and getting these tent sites, too, as well. Like, I mean, maybe some of them weren't even sleeping in tents. I don't even know. It's wild, like, how many people here and. I didn't even know, like, this is my first year even finding out that they were up there. Like, <laughs> I had no idea that there was even parking up there. And then I right. like, I was searching around. Yeah. How, how do you, I like, maybe it was handed a little bit easier to you, but, like, how did this get, like, how do you, how do you figure out this many spots or, like, because yeah. it's crazy. Like, there's stuff in places back there that I 
You have so many great questions and comments. <laughs> I'm going to start with, there's three permanent campsites here at the Laguna Seca racetrack. There has to be more than three. Three. I, there's more. I no, like three campgrounds. Okay. Sorry, okay. sites, grounds. Okay. I got confused. Okay. I meant that makes campgrounds. Sense. Okay. And that is uh, the one you're in, the one over there above you. It's called uh, A. This is C, and there's a B. Okay. They're out of order. Don't ask me why they're... <laughs> <laughs> Why they're out of order? I feel like that. But anyhow, you're in a great one. It's 40 feet plus long, has a picnic table, has a fire pit, plenty of space, very civilized. Power. Okay. So, and power, yes. Don't forget that. It's very important about that. Side note, if you ever come to Laguna Seca, do not drink out of the spigots. <laughs> there is a little tiny bit of arsenic, like tiny. You'll be fine. And Just rub salt on so it. You, you, don't boil it. Don't drink it. You know, as a camping manager, I feel responsible. Okay. Telling you, no, don't don't. <laughs> we got the disclaimer out of the way. Let's. Yeah. We'll be fine. So anyhow, besides that, uh, we we have. Um, I should have remembered the numbers. We have over fifteen hundred sites, campsites. So oh, really? Yeah, and I personally marked every single one of them except for three <laughs> campgrounds with my assistant Eli. Like since Saturday wow. morning, <laughs> about <laughs> nine hours a day. <laughs> Up Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> and remarked two hours the the paddock. Did the golf cart run out of gas? Battery? Actually, How do you get actually around? Actually, I can't to believe that? you just said that <laughs> because for the first time in my life yesterday, I ran out of gas. <laughs> oh, you did not. No. Yeah, I was on my way to go fill up a, like a good employee after hours when it's not busy, <laughs> and I ran out of gas right in the middle of H and I campground, which are like the fun. The fun, the fun ones is people build stuff. They jump over fire pits. They're not <laughs> supposed to, but you know, it's disclaimer. We watch that. Um, and I was just there like waiting for gas, got gas as they're pouring it. I said, this is diesel. And they go, <laughs> Oh, I didn't realize. And there's a huge diesel. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy <laughs> right there. And so then we had to siphon it out. It was this whole thing with the gas yesterday. So anyway, it's for sale. After this event now, that one is for sale. No. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. No. I'm sure it's fine. You have to drop the tank, <laughs> Kathy. But it was a little embarrassing because I had to be rescued by a bunch of boys. So Okay. Um, that got out of the way. But back to the question of how many campsites are there. That's about how many campsites. And we have 12 campgrounds. So I have a host at each campground. And they have, most of them, been doing this host volunteer job for i think five. Oh, so i have so like years. a host person that goes around here yes you do oh. actually and he's located in the b campground uh, his name's jake okay and he's great you're giving away too much information though people <laughs> are gonna <laughs> they know who he is you know how many people walk by want to know how you got this camp spot everywhere around here right because people want to know why things sell out so fast and it's because uh frank the owner really wanted people to feel like they were part of the family yeah. when this event first started and so they're called legacy sites uh, we honor people who have come for 10 plus years. There's a couple of people who have been 25 years. It's like uh, the monarchy. Yeah. They basically hand that campsite down to their <laughs> daughter or son. <laughs> so that's what one of them told me. Is that the most California thing you've said today or no? Because <laughs> it's monarchy. like. Monarchy. No, I'm just saying like the, oh, the, the fact that like the handing down of land because it's uh, so valuable. Like actually, that's how valuable yeah. a spot is No, it's here. just like that. It is. It's yeah. really like that's my plot of space in this zone for five days <laughs> and i'm not giving it up forever yeah, it's true, <laughs> like, it's true. Forever. it is and so i have this list of people this like rolodex gold inflated list that i have to reach out to way before everybody else yeah and i think uh you know if people want to start coming every year i'll start adding people to that list <laughs> You know, you got like Kathy, stick what, it. Kathy, what does a bribe start at? What do they got to <laughs> bring you? That's that's probably the real question here. Everyone needs to know that. I mean, I got <laughs> offered a bottle of wine the other day. I think it's got to be higher a than A couple that. sponsors I set up with stuff. They brought me some Pliny. I don't know why everyone's bringing me alcohol. I, I mean, like, <laughs> I could use a foot massage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like <laughs> The first one that gets a masseuse to you is actually going to get the Jeez. real, the best spot, right? Or the person who can go get my trailer and make sure it's empty. <laughs> like, go find those star people who... So you're you're deep in it is what you're saying. You're just you're in the thick of it. I'm a the camping land person. So everything that happens with camping, I have touched, I've printed, I've emailed. I know I recognize half the names. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. I never thought I'd be doing something like this. Uh but here I am. I I've, I've been doing this and I hope people are happy. I uh you know, we do our best. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, it's not like you're personally, you know, I get it, right? You're in a... You know, being an athlete feel like for so though. long, I any job I do, I, I definitely internalize it more than I should. Like, any job I do, I want to be the best at or yeah. as good as I can. And dealing with, with people who are stressed or, like, late for a race or all this stuff that is going into camping it's not just like oh here's your pass like bye like you're you get to know them yeah and you want to help them and um like i was saying just a minute ago it's kind of like a little family for the for the week for everybody yeah so you got to sort of be like um the real world like make sure the wrong people aren't camping next to each other and (laughs) fix problems and (laughs) stop fights from happening Uh, have you had a fight yet? No. Uh, there was a little bit of a scuffle last oh. night um, that I heard about, but we have this great security team, so <laughs> they love when I call them to go stop <laughs> situations because it's all about mitigating any kind of danger, right? We don't want people to get hurt, <laughs> no anything. So we just try to stop it before it starts. Um, so was it – how many years ago you were racing here in – the, the race that just finished I right now. I was just going to say, I'm right? like, who won the women's? I think, because I was watching on was my phone. Was it Sophia? She looked like she was pretty far yeah. like ahead, and I think... Um, the power couple? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That is amazing. <laughs> I want to know what kind of... Something in the water in Tucson and then salt. They got or, their yeah. system dialed. Yeah. yeah. I need some training camps. Yeah, I saw them a few times when I lived in Park City a few years ago, because they, I think, have a place in Heber, not too far, but, I mean, that's, like, like high altitude, and then, yeah, the training grounds in the winter, it's, like, perfect. How, um, how, like, you've always, I feel like, in the last 10 years have been in the industry, right, at at different positions, and, but also did the racing thing, um, are, Mm -hmm. are you, like, officially done with trying to go after the racing or is there a vet class popping up and you're gonna just <laughs> come mow them down i mean like what is the kathy plan from here you know there's been a lot of um things happened the last year where i just haven't had the mental space to want to even allow myself to think that i could race but w- when i see other people racing it's hard because i know i've been given a talent throughout my life like of being good at sports and i'm sort of I've been ignoring it in a way because I think I want to move on and not be that athlete. And I want people to be like, oh, yeah, she's like doing this for work and be taken seriously. It's really hard as a, you know, successful athlete to be taken seriously in the bike industry. And that's just a a thing I've noticed my, you know, my whole time in it as an athlete, not as an athlete. And so I kind of walk back and forth of if I put, um, you know, like ex retired athlete on my LinkedIn. Is that okay? They're taking me more seriously now. <laughs> ex retired athlete. <laughs> or former or veteran, you know, like you try to word it. But yeah. I think, you know, an athlete has the most work ethic really of anybody if they're motivated about their job. They want to oh, do for the sure. best. So I find it weird that they're not more like Ex-athletes. sought after, you know, because <laughs> they, they know people in the industry. They want to do a good job. Yeah. So, yeah, I kind of go between that thought process and working completely outside of the bike industry. Like, I have a couple jobs. This one is technically in the bike industry, but I have another one that I do part-time. And then I even work at a winery sometimes. So I'm kind of, like, trying to see what it's like. But honestly, I've been feeling a little, like, Uh "Mm, I'm not that motivated by these positions. Like, it's just not my passion. Like, I want to be excited about something I'm doing. Yeah. You know, I think everybody does, but maybe that's not the real world. <laughs> <laughs> what is the real world? Um, so question then, I guess. Yes. You're, I mean, looking at that, like if you did come back and do some vet classes, whatever it is, whatever you think. Stop it, saying vet. vet. You're making me feel Kathy, like I'm like really old. You're right. You know, I mean, there is, there but is people I that are old that rip. I mean, I get it. And I'm just saying, if you did come back, any of the classes. Yes. What would you want to go after? Because you you you've yeah. rode them all. Yeah. Let's be real. No, that is a good point. Uh, I know a lot of my friends in Santa Cruz really want to see me do enduro or downhill again. They always come to a did. shuttle laps. You with rode us. so good on. Did you really ever race enduro? Yeah, I won okay. through Crested Butte Ultra. I I was I doing know that. great at my only ever EWS I did until I blew my rim up. <laughs> oh well, that's kind of <laughs> part of it though. It is, but I. I had never really done one before, you know, it was my first and only, but I really like the idea of adventure and I like kind of trying to plan out like this is going to take this long and this is, that's why the appeal of gravel racing was for me. It was like, okay, 
this is my route. Until it turned like, turn into the Tour de France train. Yeah, level. like, how do you... It's kind of fun. It's not just, like, point-to-point, point, like, a four-minute downhill race. Like, yeah. that's super fun, too. But uh, I liked Enduro because of the aspect of adventure and sort of, like, kind of being your own keeper of, like, don't F it up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, and it's a good combination of fitness and also... Uh, so threading the needle of, of like don't break your rim and uh, you know break your equipment and also like reading a course but i love the blind racing i liked um what was that race series i did i won the the blind racing one up in oregon that i, I did know. i cannot think right now my brain but is like two brain cells so uh, the only bike you have in your oh, trans cascadia okay yeah i know i know that race. yeah okay um yeah. so i guess what the only bike that you have left in your arsenal is an enduro bike is that what you're saying or no <laughs> no, I mean, it actually is right now, <laughs> but I signed up to raise money for Pavlov, which okay. is Pediatric Cancer Foundation, and they raise money for doctors to do research. I've been involved with it before. That was what I Everest did. I was raising money for that. They didn't have it that year, so it was kind of like, uh, <laughs> so I'm back doing it again. Okay. Um, that's a road ride this year from Monterey to San Diego. Okay. Um, so and one I'm kind of like still bopping around doing stuff with drop bars and... <sighs> It's not the gr- best weather in Santa Cruz for road riding. Like, it's really cold. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's no San Diego where I first fell in love with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I Maybe I'll go, like, do some bike packing race. I don't know. Yeah. I need something to. <laughs> but I need someone give me, someone send me some information. I need <laughs> to be motivated by something. <laughs> yeah, they can find you here roaming the pits of Sea Otter, setting up camping and exactly. getting you set up question for you oh, what do you great. think what should i do <laughs> i think enduro honestly cycle cross no enduro 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 Not i've ri- i've ridden behind you on enduro <laughs> and you good you good you good you good on enduro oh, thanks, i think i think i think you missed your calling you think you should have went you know I was, I was trying to work in the industry I just you know i was trying to put those hours in understandable skipped we got it we got to pay the bills somehow yeah i get it well i'm in the 40s now so i guess maybe i'll have to look for that vet class <laughs> <laughs> hey i've it, I'm just saying, some of those older guys, though, in the EWS were winning. So True. So yeah, good well, looking up for you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, cool. I know you need to get back to flagging down someone taking the wrong spot. There's so probably a list for me back at the check-in of <laughs> things check that they in. couldn't fix. So I kind of. All right. Yeah, I got to go back. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks for having me. No, thank I'm you. I'm glad I was a great plan B. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were, you were the plan. I wanted longer, so. Um, we'll have to get you back on like a longer podcast if you're down. Yeah, I can pretty much talk about anything in the bike zone. So well, maybe we do it when you're not as busy. Yeah. I mean, this is definitely as busy as I'm going to get. I don't <laughs> want to be more busy than this. That, that works. That's not. Yeah. But, um, All right. shout out to everybody at Sea Otter. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Um, our next guest is here actually, Trevor. Okay. Um, Trevor, you want to hop in? Yeah. Yeah, gotta, I'm always gotta, ready for it. No, there's this one. He can get in this one and knock some things over. Yeah. Come on over, Trevor from Maxima. <laughs> have a good one, Kathy. Thank you. All right, you guys. Uh, we have Trevor from Maxima rolling in. Um, yeah. A little bit of a loose. Oh, he brought some beers, huh? He brought, you brought some freshy beers. Okay. Oh, okay. Are we going? Okay. All right, you guys, I got an SC1. Oh, he's blocking the camera right here. I'll just, there it is, SC1 beer. Um, what, what f- hold on, yeah, get get that on. Hop, hop it on real quick. Get that get that going for me. I need, oh, you got it on backwards. Oh, my, is it? Not? Coming. You're coming, there we go. Okay. All right, I'm in. All right, tell I'm me, in. what what do we flavor here? What do we, it's the shiny brew, the but shiny what, brew. what am I looking at here, though? Carlsbad? Is this yeah. the one place we went and uh, had dinner at, and they had? No, no. So this is this is Ruler Brewing. They're they're in Carlsbad area. Okay. Um, ran by okay. a bunch of cyclists, really. They're okay. like heavy in the gravel scene, and um, really? yeah. So we've kind of got to know those guys over the year, and um, really? we launched this last year here at Sea Otter, and it was big hit. So <laughs> I mean, SC One's a Does it? our number one selling product and we were able to tie in you know a custom beer to that product and uh yeah the high gloss pale ale man it's, it's so they can come by the booth if you are at sea otter you can come by the booth and grab one right yeah yeah we saying? got them at the booth yeah oh really yeah we got a little happy hour going on at three o'clock today so okay cheers right. cheers my man yeah wow okay let me uh let's see where we're at 
Okay. Okay. I'm not a Pale Ale fan, but I'm a I'm an SC1 fan. There you go. <laughs> there you go. SC1 fan. All right, talk to me, Trevor. Uh, what what number otter is this for you? Uh, I think this is. It's not as many as you think. I think this really? is four or five. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. So. No. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's it's. No, it's more than that. No. 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 I, yeah, I think this year's yeah either my fourth or fifth. I think. So. Really. Yeah. I mean. My I mean my background I didn't when I first started with Maxima it was more on on just the power sports side so I wasn't doing bike events and then um, was kind of lucky to just like raise my hand like hey if you guys need somebody else or you know someone else to help out like I'd love to go and then started doing that with you know our previous segment manager for bike and then yeah. over the last couple of years have had a little bit more responsibility in bike up until you know taking over the bicycle segment as well with power sports so um, yeah I've been here yeah I think four or five years but so. you raced in those beginning years too right yeah yeah I've raced cross country here I raced enduro here um, this year I didn't I didn't Nothing. race but just busy. what happened I know I know I'm regretting it now but programs loose programs loose programs Program loose. is loose no but, I mean this is a it's a it's an awesome event like I mean, if you're going to go to one event, this is the event to come to. So yeah. we spend a good bit of time, obviously, planning and, and talking to partners and making sure that we're doing cool things on the activation side. And, you know, and we've done that over the years. So that's, uh, I always enjoy this week, though. Like, this is an event that I'm, I'm never bummed on being at. Yeah, you know? yeah. So. What, uh, what's new for Maxima this year? Dude, we got a lot of stuff going on. And honestly, like... Over the last three years, like everyone, you know, the post-pandemic, everyone yeah. wants to wants to talk about. But we had a lot of stuff that we were working on that, that to be honest, just kind of got shelved because of how quickly business was increasing, everything yeah. that was going on. Just trying to keep, like, the already great products that we have in stock. Um, and so fast forward now, you know, over the last six, eight, 12 months, we've really refocused on a handful of different products that we feel are, are absolutely a necessity for the brand and and we're working on that stuff now which has been cool on on the bike side specifically um, SRAM is is a, a massive partner for Maxima we've been partnered for you know decades at this point and and always been a part of you know their their factory fill level so working directly with the OEM so you know, if you've used a, a SRAM or RockShox product over the last 10 or 15 years, you've experienced the Maxima Fluid on some level in those products. Um, and then, you know, we've we've worked alongside them in, in launching a, a suspension fluid specific line, our plush products, and then most recently was our mineral brake fluid. So SRAM's moved a couple different platforms, yeah. the DB8 first, now the new Maven that everybody's pretty hyped on to, you know, going away from DOT fluid to a mineral fluid. Yeah. And we were on the front end of all that development. So both those systems come with a Maxima mineral fluid um, and then we obviously are the recommended fluid in that owner's manual so we've seen a ton of traction just with yeah. everybody online that's now servicing those brakes or talking about those brakes that SRAM recommends Maxima for that so that's been a cool product for us um, and we're like two three weeks away from launching a seal grease as well so oh, really yeah we've we've had a ton of requests for seal grease and we've been working on it to be honest with you for like four or five years and this is something we can use in power sports and also in bike I um, mean we're finally like we're over the hump on that. So that's <laughs> coming. That's coming. And yes. it's been like massively requested. So it's cool to finally see that product come to fruition. Um, it's going to be called Seal Grease SG920. Seal Grease SG 920. 920. So, All right. Yeah. So that's that's the newest product for bike that's coming out. Oh, okay. So hold on. Back up to the whole. Okay. Explain to me as a total rookie over here. What is so much better about mineral oil? Or is it mineral oil? Yeah. Yeah. What, what for braking? Tell me. <sighs> I'm not the... the the most technical person, I guess, to touch on it, but yeah. from kind of the higher level, um, you know, cost effectiveness is, is one thing that plays into it. Um, I think that there's a like little bit cost more. Explain that. Like, does that mean I uh, bleed them less? No, I think it's more efficient to use a mineral fluid in certain situations, like from a manufacturing perspective. Okay. You know, typical DOT fluids, when you're talking about like a, like a dot 5.1 or even like a, a dot four racing fluid, let's say, yeah. you know, a, a 16 ounce bottle of that could you know is some other brands is is thirty dollars or more right so, yeah yeah um mineral fluid i think that but does it actually <sighs> stop better the as biggest as thing as well there's a lot of different perspectives when we talk about brakes and especially on a mountain bike yeah um, and there's a lot of different preferences too like you have some people that 
want to be able to modulate the little the brake a little bit more. You have people yeah. that really like that on off feel, so they want them to be. I touch the lever and it's it's reacting and it's sick, grabbing. What are you and stopping the brake? For me, I like that on off. Oh, feel. you're a sick fuck. I like that get, on off. Get off, feel, so. get off my podcast. Yeah. Get out of here. Out. I can't. I, I that's like there's like a few things that I'm picky about and brakes are absolutely one of them. Like I have to have that, that feel. Is that why I always see you with Shimano brakes? I've ran Shimano brakes for a long time and I've ridden the Maven brakes now with our fluid Uh-oh. and they Maven have switch. done a really good job. So, okay. um, but so there's a few things that go into it, but, um, you know, I think that there's abilities to find more consistency in the lever yeah. and things like that with a mineral fluid. Um, you know, people talk about boiling points and things like that when, when they're, wanting to ask questions about a brake fluid like i mean how just often are you actually boiling those suckers well that's that's and that's the answer to that that question so it's the assumption is if one brake fluid has a higher boiling point than the other then that's a better brake fluid yeah. right and the reality of that is you should never be reaching that yeah, point sh- there's no way you should be boiling that temperature that sucker. you have some sort of issue or failure that's happening somewhere else yeah. so it's more being able to maintain consistency and feel of that lever and those brakes at typical operating temperatures so you it's it's that consistency and, yeah. and that's why we've spent a lot of time developing and working on that fluid and that's something that we bring to the table and and why we've had the opportunity to partner with a i mean a global brand like shram yeah is being able to really tailor a mineral fluid to the exact specifications of a mineral system you know and that's what we are able to accomplish with that product so, so all great. those come with maxima in it yeah absolutely okay. so okay. at the factory they are filled with oh, what really? is in that green labeled mineral brake fluid oh, really yeah okay yeah all right. so that's something a lot of people don't know about maxima too so that's yeah. that's a cool piece you guys, of you do have this history and like it just seems weird that in the bike industry it's not there like people don't know it good yeah. enough yeah and like What's cool over the last couple of years is we're finally becoming a brand that's recognized as, as a bike brand also. You know, in the beginning, a yeah. lot of it was like, oh, I know you guys from Moto. I didn't know you make bike stuff. Yeah. And so now it's like people are coming specifically for bike products, which is cool. And I mean, like for us, it's a segment that we've worked with. Well, you guys global all ride suppliers. at the office yeah. too. Oh, so yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? We all, like, we, I mean, we spend... I more mean, times more on bike time on bikes than we than do moto anything. now you know yeah. so it's a it's a an industry that everybody's passionate for at maxima so we enjoy that part of it the relationships working with everybody there and then being able to participate and, and bring solutions to this category with our products and and um, you know it takes time and and you know in power sports we've got you know 40 plus years of history there right yeah. and bike we're eight years in let's say so we know it's uh We've got to keep evolving, keep pushing, and the biggest thing we lean on is just those partnerships that, again, a lot of people don't know about. Yeah. I mean, it is it is interesting. Like, I do think Moto when I think Maxima, but you guys, it's because you dominated that segment, right? Yeah. Um, and it, But you guys have, what, 30 years in that? 40? Oh, yeah, since the beginning. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's, yeah. that's what the brand... That's where it all started. Dude, I think that's a spider that was attached to you. It <laughs> no, yeah. it's gone now. It, it keeps down. swinging across it my face, and I'm like, is this right thing there. a bug? What do I got going on? Um. <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's how Maxima was originally founded, was like out of that necessity for a product to solve a problem or fill a void yeah. in the market, you know, and, and that was our Caster 927. So in the late 70s, there was a two-stroke product that like every factory level race team at the time was specking. And yeah. That product was being discontinued, and you know Ronnie Lachine, racer, late seventies, early eighties. His father Dick, he was a, a motorsports guy, drag race, and you know yeah. all those things. And so they had got together with this guy Roland, who was Dick's friend. He was an engineer and bought a dyno and started you know going crazy with two-stroke products and developed Caster 927 as yeah. like, hey, we're gonna fix this problem. We'll fill the void, and that's that's ultimately what what launched Maxima. Yeah. So. That makes sense. I mean, yeah. so, but then what pushed you to bike? Well, I think there was, a, a lot of it was just the passion within the company to participate in bike. Like we wanted to, we wanted to be a part of it, of course. And we felt that there was um, space for Maxima in bike. You know, yeah. we have a couple products that even before we participated in bike, people were buying for bicycles. One of them being SC1, some of our cleaning products, like you know, our bio wash or even more aggressively like cleanup, which is really popular in power sports, but it's awesome on the drivetrain, like in controlled environments when yeah. you use it. Uh, and then the alliance with 
some of these other OEMs and, and you know, Trek came into the picture and, and we started doing products for them. So we were doing all this stuff on the other side behind the scenes. Yeah. And that just kind of translated into, hey, we have, you know, passion for this segment and, and let's see if we can become more involved. And, um, you know, and that's kind of what launched. Biden like how many of you guys were riding at that time? Well, it's so it started probably or did that make you probably ride more? two years like before i actually worked at maxima oh really so um and at, at that time everybody at maxima was was riding bikes yeah. riding on lunch everything and like my background i spent a ton of time on the bicycle too for moto so when i f went to work there full time i'm like oh these guys ride at lunch that's pretty rad so like yeah. i'll bring my road bike in and we can all ride together and like i mean there is four or five of us that are on the bike you know three to five days a week that work at maxima and that's from high level management all the way down to you know guys that are a, a part of our blending or production thing so we have a lot of people within maxima that participate in in all the segments but bike is a you know it's an easy hop on the bike go knock some miles out get some exercise feel good whatever so we have cool camaraderie and and i mean moto ain't what it used to be right like well it's just the shop was probably closer to a moto track back in the day now yeah, it's like, close to all mountain bike trails yeah, absolutely like we had like the el cajon track was yeah. like down the street so yeah. guys would you get off work and they had lights and you could go moto at night and honestly like if that was still open i'd probably moto a little bit more and you just don't have those resources as close as they used to be so yeah. um but yeah i mean we spend spend a lot of time on the bikes yeah so. yeah i've rode with you guys a few times yeah I get it. yeah I get you it. know i get yeah. it yeah, so, like, what, what do you see the future, then? What's <clears throat> for you guys, you know? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, what, what are we thinking? Yeah, well, I think we're still, we're still in that, that growing phase, you know? And for us, it's always going to be about the product first. So that's something that Maxima hasn't lost sight of. There's a lot of other brands in, in all, the, all the categories we compete against, and, and they have aggressive marketing, in-your-face marketing, and, and, and they do a good job in putting eyes on the product but yeah. maybe the experience when you actually use the product isn't isn't what you were expecting so for us it always starts with the product our goal is to continue commercializing products out of one necessity or to fix a problem but also to make sure that that consumer has a good experience with the product so for us it's it's about obviously managing these relationships that we take very serious with some of these global suppliers continuing to grow with them they're going to continue it and evolve componentry i mean the up the, the things that we're seeing now electronic all this stuff i mean we're we're fortunate that we're a part of that so we're we're able to see the progression of where the sport's going yeah and we're going to be there to fill that void you know we want to be a real player in the chemical category and bike and we're going against brands here that have been in it for 40 or 50 years just like how we are in power sports so we know it's a you know it's a continuous battle it's a it's going to be it's going to be a fight. Things are more competitive than ever. There's a lot of products, a lot of brands. Everyone's fighting for that little bit of shelf space. Yeah. So how can we continue to evolve, be a little bit different? And I, I always talk about it. You know, oil's not beautiful. It's not cool. It's not the <laughs> yeah. new helmet. It's not the new goggle, you know. So you got to come up with ways to make people feel like they yeah. need to be a part of that brand, one, for how good the product works, but also because it's a cool brand, it's a core brand, and they can relate to it. So Yeah. But it is – you said it there, like oil isn't sexy. It's right? not, but you need it. Like it is so important. So like I, I have this conversation all the time with people, and it's like because you don't think about it, right? Like yeah. you, you get on a dirt bike and you just and you go, but like the reality is, is that I mean, it starts with oil. You know, it does. It it really does. So, and now I mean, nothing's nothing's getting cheaper. So you go make an investment of you know ten to fifteen thousand dollars for that new dirt bike or even that new bicycle at this point, like it's important to choose a product that's going to ensure that thing's going to last, right? Yeah. Like protecting that investment is, is huge. But so. it's the same way with your drivetrain. Yeah. Keeping abs your brakes going absolutely. on, on a mountain bike. Uh oh, we what got up? Spencer Rathcap uh -oh. showing up for us right now. Oh, here we go. Uh oh. Uh oh. He's here. We He's have here. arrived. He has arrived. Oh, there's got a little too slack long? on that is thing. <laughs> we have arrived. We have arived. How are we doing? We arrived. I know you're in peak physical fitness, but can I offer you a beer? Uh, I'm going to pass on that for oh, now. Oh, Thank that you. was a test. Is it is it too loud? Spencer? That was a test. I have nothing in that. Nothing in, the in that one. Maybe I need to. How about now? 
can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, I have nothing. How about now? I got one ear. One ear. One ear. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's all I can get you right now. Okay. That's that works. If, if you would have seen what I was going through earlier. Okay. I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> it was a uh, mission. That's why, I, you, Trevor, you weren't here earlier, but um, yeah, it was pretty wild. I was <coughs> freaking out. Couldn't get the. Uh, I forgot a mic, and then forgot a headset, and then built the whole system and begging other people hey you got this headset you got this and that and then Spencer was like I don't got it and then what's his name was like I got it and I rode down came back and I'm going back and forth but I ended up settling thank god I brought the big the big truck with a bunch of little things yeah and I had a backup plan it's a little janky around here I'm gonna be honest you can see everything on the desk and that's all right we're here though that's what matters and you're doing it yeah um yeah so look uh Spencer shows up we're here yeah uh have you guys met yeah, yeah. Come on. We, we just we're in the bathroom together, man. Right? Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> but no, you did a stint down in San Diego, too. So did you yeah. guys ever cross paths? Yeah, yeah. Where was yeah. Anderson? Where do we go to that trail there? Yeah, Anderson. Anderson? Uh, we ran into each other on the trail. Yeah. yeah. I've known, it, I've known yeah, you forever. For a long time. Really? Quick yeah. and dirty. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. We always run into each other somewhere. Like so. battling? Quickly? I don't know. Like, through, well, through. I don't have the lakes Stop. to run around Shut with up, this guy. Oh, come on. Right. You're just side trainer guy. At least back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these days, uh, I gotta get back. Stop. I gotta get back. I need like I need I need three months. Three. <laughs> That's all I need. You got a new bike, so you're ready. Three months, and I'll be back. You'll yeah. be back. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm excited for it. We were just talking about like I was getting the differences on mineral oil and and how that's better, I guess, yeah. in, in stopping. I yeah. don't know. Do you notice a difference when you ride with that? Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm not more the just a feel, just uh, rides. Yeah, yeah, I just that's fine. I just run whatever I'm given and and make it work really i i i know the shimano uses mineral oil yep. and now the new sram stuff does as well correct but the difference in in them i couldn't tell you yeah. what, what it was yeah. so <laughs> to be honest nice um yeah so i don't even now i lost a little bit of train of that sorry we were diving in there for a minute um yeah so look you guys crossed pass out on the trail like yep. uh Who's got faster times? Because I've I've seen. Dude, this guy! Come on! Stop! No. Come on! I've seen some of your times. No, this is what I'm saying. Back at least back in the day, I don't know how he is right now, but he's he was he was quick. He was we, we did. I feel like we kind of battled at like uh, what's it called? Um, sagebrush one year. Yeah, maybe. I think I think he might have beat <laughs> me. You right know what? I, I when he had the in, uh, the the enduro. Yeah, 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 exactly. I might have got him there. Yeah, I, I, got him. I think he did. Right. I might have got him. I there. think the Super D no, did. Yeah, right. Super D. Yeah, yeah. 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 Shut that. up. Yeah. Oh, well, see, I had the see, I had I had the home field advantage because that's like that's like my backyard. Oh, really? But I so like it doesn't matter. It got yeah, but see, it was advertised as like an enduro, but it was pretty pedally. So you had guys who <laughs> show up with like pedally. you show up with like a 140, 150 setup. I raced it on a hundred mil bike, like a cross country no, bike. Did. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure I did the same. Yeah. Same bike. For both days, yeah, yeah, for sure. Wow, but it was fun, super fun. Yeah. Victor Sheldon, yeah, put that race on. It's happening in uh, a couple weeks again. Actually, yeah, I had, they, a, had to reschedule it. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, so I think it's Cinco de Mayo weekend. Yeah, right. yeah, I think it's May fifth. But that that okay. area is like some of the funnest riding. Really? In, uh, it's just out there. It's it's really? out there. Yeah. But what's is sketchy? Is like it's it's like off road, so you can moto, you could so like you gotta kind of. <laughs> oh, that's the only thing that's sketchy about it. But okay. like if you're just going on a, a regular day to How go ride, people moto out there. Like what? <sighs> I don't know. You don't know. It's like parking lot pullover and just a bunch of trails and fire roads and stuff like that. Oh, really? So like on a weekend, I'm, I mean, especially with all the rain we've had and stuff, it's a cool area to go ride. So it gets it gets popular. But okay. All right. Well, I mean, yeah. That's that's pretty wild. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like. I mean, Spencer, have you ever ran some Maxima stuff? Like, yeah, you, absolutely. Oh, really? I, I mean, I grown up with Maxima in the garage, man. Oh, Are you shit. kidding me? Okay, yeah, no, I didn't know this. Yeah, my my uh, dad's got a great relationship with the dogger, yeah. and uh, okay. he's always I've always had Maxima stuff on the shelves. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh shit. Okay. Bike wash is some of my favorite. I run the the lube. I like the new caps. Yep. I mean, newer. newer yeah. Newer yeah. Newer Much better. Yeah. In all my right. opinion. The other ones used to get all plugged up. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I've run Maxima. I know you guys have seen it now. I haven't, yeah. I haven't run that, but. Wow. Yeah, well, okay. Front yeah. to back. I mean, we've, that's, we've done a good job and just. The ceiling game is wild. It's right. a tough space. It like, is a tough space. I mean, there's companies that legit just seal it. Well, yeah. the vo- like the volume on it, like in the work we do with 
distribution and talking to distribution i mean it's obviously you have brands that only sell sealant and they're they're massive brands you know yeah but the the challenging part is that you have two or three of those brands that have 85 percent of the market right so <laughs> yeah. and and so that that's what's challenging about it is and again they've first to market with it they've been around a long time and yeah. it's just the the go-to when you talk about a sealant you yeah. know so that that's been challenging in that that category of bike yeah. um our stuff's really good yeah. seals really quick like that's you're trying to focus on little different things you can talk about right like sealant yeah it's fairly generic but what can we do what do you do that? Yeah. right how can we be different you know how can and so you? yeah yeah and so we focused on like abilities to seal extremely quick so like minimal loss when you're talking about psi in that tire yeah. also ability to get the tire to beat up which we've all been there like trying to hand pump the damn thing up and can't get <laughs> <laughs> don't have a compressor like <laughs> it's the worst you know and so that stuff great i mean it, it's it's a it's been good so wow i don't i don't think that this guy knows what that is though that frustration of not getting a <laughs> not tire hey, seated. I get mine seated. Dude, I just put a little SC1 on there. There, there you go. <laughs> like, like a week ago. No, not a week ago. A month ago. A month maybe ago. two. Yeah. yeah. I'm supposed to meet this guy for a ride at noon. And, or one maybe. Whatever. It was a, it was a set time. We're meeting at the parking lot. For me a set time. And, Apparently not you. And I go to blow up my tire, whatever, inflate it. And the thing just like takes a shit on itself and so i'm like okay i got a new tire and i needed to put a new tire on this anyways and dude i spent literally an hour (laughs) trying to get this thing seated i was throwing (laughs) shit i think i rebroke my hand because i was so pissed and then i was an hour late and he's like what what dude you can't see the tire like you're a rookie and i'm like i was like dude this is the worst throw some sc1 on it i told him that like you don't think i tried this Dude, I don't know, man. I don't Sometimes, have SC1 man. SC1 is just... Did it? Did it difficult it. Did it? No, it's a tire. It's, it's a difficult. diff. Yeah, anyways. Yeah. I get I it. I mean, that was, a, that was a moment for sure. You you were fired up. I remember yeah, on the phone. I was pissed. Yeah. Then we got to the trail and I was late. And Dude. he was waiting on me. And then I'm like, all that adrenaline was built up. So I just took off on him. <laughs> he was doing like 1,200 watts up this fucking 15% grade hill. And I'm like, hey, man, you're really going fucking hard right now. Can we chill? And he's like, no, nah, dude, I'm fine. <laughs> Nothing. I'm not. I'm barely even going right now. And I'm like, wow, just make me feel like shit right now. Thanks, dude. I was oh, like, all right. Man. I took the Zwift program and I was like, whoop, threw it right into the track. <laughs> yeah, this, <laughs> this guy <laughs> proceeded to show up. He's like, dude. I'm like, are we riding e-bikes or regular bikes? He's like, regular. I've been doing this Zwift program. I think I'm really fit right no, now. No, I didn't say it like that. Yeah, you're so like, I, I want to see where I I'm at. I wanted to see. I was like, hey, I want to see if the Zwift program works. Apparently, it ain't shit. I just didn't <laughs> quite know that I was against Spencer at his peak fucking physical fitness no, level day. Peak pissed. Yeah, oh. peak pissed. I like that. <laughs> peak That's good. Peak pissed. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> buried me into the fucking ground. Uh, it was uh, painful. That was a painful day. I remember coming back and I was even like, I was like, hey man, I, I think I need to get a different set of bibs, a different seat. Like everything hurt. I was like, what the fuck is going on here, man? I so was sorry. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I was, yeah, I was rethinking life on that ride. Oh yeah. And God. he's like, hey, what do you think about going even deeper or further? And I'm like, no, just take me fucking back. I'm done. Done. Yeah, that was my fault. Yeah, sorry that's what it's that. like fucking riding with you too, Trevor. So that's how I know you fuckers ride hard. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, Trevor says he's making a comeback. He's going to actually ride the sniper for yeah. everything here. Next year. Next year. Yeah, I could pull it off. Yeah. yeah I'll cut the bull on that bike. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I have seen you ride that thing like that. Like my best times on Anderson are on that bike. Shut up. Yeah. Same. Same. Mm-hmm. Well, well, I don't know. What, yeah, what bike are you riding? Epic Evo. That so, yeah. yeah. 130, 120. Yeah, perfect. It's the, it's the move, honestly. <laughs> like my... my Week like day to day bike is a one thirty. I know you. Yeah. I, know. I love that, it. You, Me too. It's like you. a thirty two on it though. Or yeah. are we talk- uh, no, that's that, fine. Yeah. The, fine. The one bike has a thirty four. The other one. Oh, has okay. The so XC bike has a thirty two, but that's like proper XC, like yeah, hundred mil. But now the my day to day bike. I mean, I love that bike. I, I don't. My, like the ideal bike for me is 120, 130 yeah. range, and oh, you found the spider. Dude, that was the sp- get dude, this it thing off was me. getting him a second ago. I think I think so I got it. I don't, God, I, dang, it started dude. running right as I went for it. Just so. what I need, man. I'm sitting here and it's like swinging in front of my face, and I'm like, Fuck. <laughs> it was like on my nose. And I'm, Jesus. Oh my God. It's wild. It's wild out here at the Sea Otter Classic. Yeah. It is wild. If yeah. it ain't the poison oak, it's the spider. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you got me good on that one. Um, cool, man. Uh, 
We are you for some more time. I know your your beer session's about to start, right? No, we're, we're good. Yeah, you're we're good. good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hey, do what? What got uh, Danny to come out? Uh, I, I mean, he's a fan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he rides. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Danny. I mean, he's on. Like when I talk about the guys that are on the bike three to five times a week, he's one of them. Yeah. You know? And so people, and I, for people who are watching or listening right now, Danny is the owner of yeah. Maxima. Yep. And I was surprised. I walked by the booth. I didn't even notice him. I was like, ho- and I, t- I had to do a second look. I was like, holy shit, he's here. Yeah. Because I, I mean, he's. When you when you're running a company like that, that is in all categories, I feel like you guys are in. I don't. I mean, maybe you're not doing tractors for case. Not yet. Ca- not yet. Yeah. But you guys are in all categories. I feel like of oil. A guy like that. I mean, dude, he's going back and forth trying to pick things up. Whatever it is, right? Yeah. And just the fact that he's here at Sea Otter. Did he bring his bike too, or like? Uh, we- they didn't bring bikes. They just came in. He came in for. He's here for two days. But two days. like, I mean, he's you know he. Ha- Maxima General has a lot going on, yeah. and you know Danny is. I, I mean, he's a he he's a great rider. I mean, he's he's a fan of power. I mean, he's a fan and participates in every segment that Maxima is involved in. Totally. So he has passion for it. He enjoys and bike like we all do. Just the oh, vibes. He knows and how on bikes too. How laid sure. back it is, and the you know the 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 casual part of it, and having beers with everybody and stuff like that. So. Um, no, he's and I mean he's he likes to run it run it wide open. I mean he's all over the place all the time. I traveling everywhere. So did he uh, drive up or fly? Just uh, they flew up. Yeah, yep. a little fly. Yeah, yeah. I flew up. Which all that's all that's so sick because I I think that when you have that level of excitement from the top level, uh, it carries over for so much and totally. like it's so important for for the brand ethos to like really live and die and breathe whatever by the product and what yeah. what you guys are doing in the industry that you're in and all that stuff and and yeah i mean i, I feel like you get you get those brands that that start to grow and then they sell to a bigger brand yep. and as yeah. soon as they sell you just instantly notice like oh the the soul the heart and soul totally. of this company is just gone and it's it's unfortunate but yeah. it happens it maxima still firing yeah. on all cylinders from the top down yeah that's why for the I, love of bikes yeah that's why that's why i enjoy you know maxima so much i i mean i've been around the brand a long time and and so of course i'm a fan of the brand but that you know that that passion and coreness of the brand like you 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 don't find that everywhere and it's it's pretty unique to have one sole owner and we don't have private equity involved and out in a factory that's somewhere like so like we do everything in-house still we bottle blend manufacture we do it all right there so we have abilities to be reactive if we need to react or if a race team calls us and they're having an issue with hardware or if they're having an issue with a drivetrain or where or something that they haven't experienced before and they're looking for a solution i mean you're talking about two to three weeks and we have product back in these guys hands that they're testing and 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 working on which you know so and and that's the that's the coolest part about maxima is that it is truly people that participate in the segments and have passion for the segments and can go and and have a beer and hang out and and have a good time and go to work on monday and execute on real business you know what i mean so like there's a lot going on we we operate at a pretty high level down there but it's i enjoy it so that's sick that is sick i i have i have a kind of a semi hard hitting question potentially okay Uh Uh and and uh you don't have to answer it if you don't want to or anything but i've worked with a few suspension brands and stuff and on one of them in particular in their like user guides and stuff they say not to use maxima oils in in their suspension specifically yeah really no yeah way. yeah huh do you know why that would be or what what uh would cause that i don't know specifically why yeah. they would list that the only thing that i mean it's pretty harsh that it's calls out specifically maxima by yep. name yep um my only assumption of that would be is maybe the recommended or the not their recommended viscosity is maybe something that we're not offering okay um which even then uh to be you know jumping from let's say a five to a seven weight or something like that it's it wouldn't be detrimental to the performance of the system maybe it's not the exact weight to where you the feel or something that you could give up but as far as like chemical makeup and things like that yeah i i would i would have to understand more okay Yeah. yeah do they have a fluid that they do recommend um 
I don't know. I just remember reading through the the um, guidelines for these things and yep. seeing that uh, they recommend that you do not use Maxima. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I know we've you know we've done work with the majority of suspension manufacturers in that in that category. Yep. So, you know, we have ties to SR Suntour. We've done stuff with Manitou. Yeah. Obviously, Rock Shocks. We've done tons of testing with Fox. We don't have an official partnership there, but we've personally done testing there so yeah. um and i know there's some other brands in there obviously but yeah it's kind of interesting yeah so this is dvo suspension okay and uh i mean they're partially owned by by well they've, they've got a big investment from sr sun tour so yeah. it's it's made in si- similar same factory but dvo has their own department that that everything is constructed and yeah. developed on their own but but yeah i can i mean i'd be more than happy to try to link you guys up or whatever and see, yeah, I, I, see because it, it's, I mean, it was really interesting to me. Shame on me for not knowing that it says that in the owner's manual, but yeah. uh, I'd be, uh, I got some homework. Yeah, <laughs> and I can help, man. I'll, I'll give you some, some whatever. Cool. Cheat, cheat lists or whatever. Yeah, no, no, I appreciate it. Or no. else you can send him some well, I think he's ready to go. I, I yeah. don't think that we have <laughs> like a, like a negative relationship that I'm aware, like to where it would be like, maybe it was like an old school day thing or something. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. Didn't that's have what, it then, I, right? what I would need to understand. So. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. wild. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. I, that just clicked into my head though, as I'm sitting here thinking about Maxim. I'm like, because Spencer's always just keeping the upkeep on his forks, his suspensions, all of his bikes. Like it's pretty wild how much he upkeeps his bikes. How much? I care about my bikes. Yeah, like I've seen this guy hours putting a tire on. Let's yeah, see. every one of my bikes absolutely hates me. <laughs> absolutely. <Yes. laughs> yeah, but I mean, you're riding it at such a high level. You're like, you okay, know. Well, let's stop. Let's stop. Next <laughs> subject. <here. laughs> Epic Evo's for sale after this event. Look for Spencer on Instagram. He'll be for selling it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a really random question. I'm, po- I'm sorry for doing this mid show, but. How, how, uh, is it cool if I pop in and out of this? Yeah. Okay. Do I, it. I gotta go do a... You gotta go? I gotta go do a thing for Specialized right now, but, uh... Yeah. Yeah, I'll hang out for a couple more minutes, but... Okay, just, yeah. As long as I can just go do that and come back and... Yeah. Maybe well, a few get times. the DVO guy and bring him up yeah, here. We're we gonna can, get I this talk to on him. the show okay. live. We're I gonna, wanna talk to him. That would be him. sick. <laughs> get him on up here. I mean, I'm, gonna, not, I'm not the, the super technical guy, but I'd like to understand what yeah. the... We're gonna get this solved. I, I yeah. yeah. I'll be there. Maybe I may, maybe, I mean, I might go back and relay the message and somebody knows something about it, but I haven't heard any... Personally, haven't heard anything about it, so... Okay. Okay. Wow, yeah. wild yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. They just didn't turn, they put too much SC1 on, you know, and it just was... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know? I mean, the only the only thing, the only issue, I mean, when you talk about, like, hardware and makeup of, like, a fork and shock, right? Like, I don't think that there's... Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, ob- the, maybe the conversation is on, like, materials itself or yeah. types of yeah. seals or things like that where they feel the... the, the 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 makeup of the seal or something that would be the only thing that that comes to mind but yeah. again uh, I don't know what so I into it if in bike segment I'm looking it up right now it's the same way with moto uh, is SC one number one or no uh, in bike yes really yeah really? it's pretty popular really yeah oh yeah I would what? be bio wash or chain lube or something well like right? we have a couple a couple distributors that sell a ton of SC one like so if I if I remove it because it's a little bit skewed because some of the platforms they sell on and things like that you can't like perfectly track the, the end consumer is okay. he a bike guy is he a power like so um but if i talk about bike specific products yes bio wash is really strong chain pro which is our dry lube for the um for the chain there that's our that's our number one selling chain lube um degreaser is another really strong one for us which is like a concentrated which, which chain lube chain pro Chain Pro. Yeah. Chain Pro. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you ruined me when we did that. We did some work <laughs> recently. I'm now actually reading the bottle. I should have read the bottle before, but now I'm like, fuck, maybe I need to try this gold one. Yeah. And I started using the gold one. The when it's muddy, when it's like a muddy, like yeah. not muddy, but yeah. like I'm going to hit some puddles. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and that is the choice, right? Yeah, like, for sure. So, like, yeah, we offer three different ones. We have a wet lube where if it's, like, yeah, if it's going to be muddy, nasty, rainy, absolutely run that. If you're going to experience, like, kind of how California's been, like, there may be some water crossings. It may be dry in some areas. You have a little bit of everything. Um, chain wax is killer. Like, it's the most durable of the three that we offer. It's going to hold up against that puddle that you're going to hit, and it's also going to keep, you know, dirt and dust and everything from 
from getting inside that chain, making noise inside that chain. Um, but you know, if you ran like say wax in super dry, dusty conditions, it's yeah. going to attract some more dirt. It's going to be a little bit dirtier. So that's when we recommend going to Chain Pro. So again, it's really preference and then conditions and what you're looking for in a chain lube. And that's why we offer three different ones. Yeah, you know? I mean, <laughs> blew my mind. I was like, oh, I've just been hitting with the Chain Pro every yeah. time. Hitting with Chain Pro. Now yeah. I'm like. Oh fuck! I think back to some of these mud races. I was like shooting and I'm riding around. I just had chain pro on. I was like putting it on before everything. Like yeah. And now I'm like oh shit! I fucked up. I needed to. Yeah, yeah. I needed. To, I needed to read the read the bottle. Read the fine, read the fine <laughs> print. Read the bottle. It was right on the front, you know. And I just never read the bottle because I was like, dude, the chain pro bottle just looks official you know you're like and maybe because it has pro at the end i'm like this is the one best yeah, everything yeah. <laughs> but yeah you know what i mean do you do you guys get that question i mean or is it like a i don't know you know are people are just smarter than me i'm, I'm gonna no, go with this no I, like i think when you when you talk about like technical products there's so much information gets out that can be skewed or someone's opinion that people take and run with that's not actually the reality of it so like that's the uh that's a challenge when you're a product that is a technical company obviously yeah. it's really difficult to talk to everybody so when we do put out information or we are trying to control the way that we're marketing of course we want to give them the best information possible and also make it in readable terms to where they you understand it at, at, at a very simple level and I think we do a good job at that um, but man there's just you know how it is in, in, I mean there is all heating up wax soaking the chain and letting the chain you know like when it comes to just cha lubing the chain I have heard so many different things and I'm like man I just I throw some chain pro on it and I mean <laughs> things quiet I don't know hold on what is heating up the chain you're supposed to do that no, like, you, when like, you wax a chain yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, really? just, that's just a chain wax yeah you're supposed to heat everything up and let the let the wax cure to the, oh, to the chain so yeah. it, it picks up zero dirt and stuff oh yeah I don't have time for that yeah. <laughs> I ain't got time yeah, for that. Awesome. I mean, what's this whole, like, uh, do it the night before you ride stuff? Uh, I mean, we've done a lot of testing on, like, if you were to... If you I will were be to back. Spencer sorry. will be back. Uh, sorry to put into that. We have Jen from Live Cycles. We'll save that one for later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sit in. Have fun. I'll see you, I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Jen. Uh, oh. <laughs> There we go. There we go. <laughs> Adjust the mic. It's a little. It's on there fragile, so don't don't get too aggressive with it when you when <laughs> when you pull it in. Um, oh, you get a, you know. <laughs> there you go. Is that, you, got, you got sound through the headphones? All yeah, good. It's okay. Well. Awesome. Uh, Trevor Maximal Oils. Hey, Hi. Trevor. Hi. Nice, nice to meet you. Live racing? Would you want to say live? Live cycling. Live cycling. Global market. Yeah, let's go yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> and we have the live racing on right oh, now, yeah. so it's can't like, help but wrap the team. You yeah, know? I get yeah, it. I get yeah. it. Uh, we would honestly just, and you would probably understand this better than me. I feel like I know a lot about bikes, and then every time I talk to someone that's an expert, I'm like, man, I just, I'm dumb. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we, and look, Jen, just so you know, like cussing's allowed. We're free flow here. We're having fun. Right. We have beers. <laughs> we're, we're having a good time. Um, we were talking about chain lube, and I, I oh. had no idea on chain wax that you're supposed to heat the chain up before you put it on. Oh, I, I was not aware. <laughs> no way. Okay. <laughs> and then, no way. Yeah, this is Max Morales, expert, top technician here. Yeah. <laughs> Easy now. Easy now. Easy now. <laughs> um, but no, uh, we were talking, and then the next thing was like putting chain lube on the night before you ride. It's supposed to be better. Yeah. Well, that makes sense, right? And he was explaining that. Okay, right. get into it. I want to learn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, teach us your what ways. What does it do? Why is it different than me <laughs> putting it on right before I go out? I think I think people, it's it it's allowing it to set up for lack of a better term, right? Okay. Like, so like if you use like if you use a wax and say you're not going down this route of like people have even removed the chain and soaked the chain and we'll put the chain back like it's uh, there's a lot of different uh, in the chain uh, pro yes yes what? in a wax so there's a, there's <laughs> I've heard uh, Jen was doing this on all her <laughs> fleet of bikes I've heard now. so <laughs> many different <laughs> approaches to how you do this but so like a wax for instance so it goes on as a liquid but it's going to harden on that chain it's going to get a bit tacky so the goal with a wax is its ability to adhere to the chain right so okay. that's why we talk about it being the most durable when we talk about the three that we're going to offer so it can 
experience water, it can't experience mud and all these things that it's going to counteract it actually removing itself from the chain. Where like a dry lube, if it comes in contact with water, it's just washing that stuff right off. So I with I felt a, like it just said more than that. Yeah. that doesn't <laughs> but so like a wax, if you set if you put it on the night before it has time to cure, let's say, set up and okay. and um, kind of create that layer individual you know in each individual link and things like that where if you were just like right now going to throw it on there take off ride it well it's going to be a bit more in liquid form so like if you just go hit dry dusty stuff right Not now it. it's going to grab some more right it's going to hold on to that stuff that's a little why bit my more. chains are so dirty could get dirty initially <laughs> yeah so I mean, why are you riding dirty I know. Yeah. So, I know. but i you know i'm, <laughs> oh I'm guilty of gosh. like the biggest thing that you're trying to do is obviously lube the individual links, I'm right? Trying so to, to stretch that sucker out and buy a new one is what I'm trying to do. <laughs> like, <laughs> so like the way that I I would typically recommend it, depending on the product that you want to choose, like it's always best to start with a clean surface, right? In anything that you do, right? Any surface work that you want to do, obviously you want to make sure that 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 it's clean. I'm out. So yeah, Over. so you can start with just taking like <laughs> basic <laughs> levels like microfiber and our bio wash, right? And I then run the chain through there, and it'll pull off the excess, the old lube that's on there, any dirt stuff like that. So now you have a clean chain, and you so can I shouldn't start use the over. contact cleaner. I mean, again, I gotta be I gotta be selective in what I recommend because <laughs> all of a sudden that contact cleaner drips on the rim and streaks it, and so you gotta be careful a little bit. So we have specific products that we recommend that are so these safe, products are for sale now that are safe uh, on all services. Yeah. Yeah. So those big gone. Streets, they right ruined. Yeah. ruined. I'm sorry, bikes. I am so sorry. So wow. Okay. That's, so yeah, like and so starting with a clean surface and then lubing that chain. Each, I mean, guys are like very precise. Each individual length, all this stuff. I just consistently will run that chain and know that I got a good bit on there and let it set up. And I'll even wipe the excess from the outside of the links, like, and that's going to give me a clean chain. It's going to make sure the internals and links of that chain are lubed and and it's going to do its job and staying quiet and shifting correctly and. Uh, I mean, we rate our stuff from anywhere from 50 to 100 miles, depending on the type of discipline that you're riding. And oh, that's my problem. I'm doing like 120. I know you're every not. Time. Every no, time. Every time. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, I need an hour meter on there. Yeah. 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 Um, Jen, you know, not not to segment out of it. This is great info. I'm total. Yeah. How do you I've, segue from? Louis? I'm ruined. I'm ruined <laughs> after that. Like honestly, like all bike maintenance I've thought in my head is gone. Like there's, there's no coming back from yeah, a situation just, like I that. I just like scratch the surface on it. I don't. Oh, I, mean, I learn new don't stuff you, every. It's, don't you say oh, that? It's crazy. <laughs> it's don't crazy. you say oh, that man, right I've now? I've heard so many bizarre approaches, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know. <sighs> I'm ruined. Yeah. Um, Jen, you here? Sea otter. We've just yeah. been talking about it. What, what your sea otter is this for you? You know, I honestly there was a. The first sea otter I attended was back in 2013 when I started with Liv. And uh, actually, I just celebrated my 11th anniversary with them uh, on Monday. So this event, um, I've probably been five or six times. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. It's first, not been that many, but, you know, okay. we had the COVID years, and I was okay. on East Coast demo when I first started. So there was a couple years that I missed. But, um, yeah, it's good to be back. I the mean, weather's been amazing. Yeah. Love seeing sure. people. <laughs> It's all the classic sea otter good vibes. I just yeah. feel like when I, I just like, I even me, like I've probably been like five or six years, but I feel like it's been a lot longer than that. Yeah. Doesn't it seem like that? I don't know. I mean, it's like family reunion, you know? So it's almost yeah. like you lose track because you get back into the rhythm. You know, life here at sea otter is pretty much a rinse and repeat every day in a way. <laughs> so especially if you're working at a booth, you yes. know, you're just like reporting for duty and, uh, Nine Shake to five. Hands. Nine yeah. Nine. yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so what, 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 are you, what are you doing at Seattle this year? Because yeah. it's different every year, right? For you? Uh, you know, it, from when I first started, I was slinging bikes. I was setting people up on demos, which was super fun. I always loved doing that. But in my new role, I'm just on chatting with media, actually, talking about uh, two new recent bikes that we launched. And also about other exciting activities we've got going on um, in terms of programming and you know our athlete program you know we've got a lot of athletes out here this weekend too so it's been kind of chatting them up and uh, encouraging you know editors yeah. to kind of go watch the races um, you know see what's what's happening uh, on that field it's okay for the viewers or listeners yeah. exact title 
for you? Oh God. Oh, it's too long. <laughs> Just let, live global marketing. But my focus is on bike product marketing. So I get the awesome privilege of launching our new analog bikes. I say analog because Live also offers e-bikes. Yeah. And I have an amazing colleague in Taiwan who focuses on e-bike. But yeah, I really get to kind of uh, work with the product teams in terms of product development and bringing those products to life you know whether it's imagery videos as you know Austin yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we recently worked on a project I don't know together what you're about. yeah <laughs> um, and also just you know helping to make the product uh, approachable and making sure the consumer uh, you know understands kind of the benefits the features you know what's what's latest and greatest why they should be interested in this product you know that's my focus and helping to support our global sales companies around the world you know including our US sales company that's here out promoting products that are meaningful to their market so, so yeah. and i've and i kind of asked this almost like when uh, we have a, a strong woman in the industry on how much have you seen it grown for women in cycling since you've started i guess oh my gosh it's exciting it's like let's say you know there's been um some really great improvements but here just over the last two days it feels like it's been i've been here a week but the last two days there's been some meaningful conversations that still signals that there's more work to be done um in different respects of of the industry at large you know i mean i think women's racing is really on a rise right now there's more coverage it's super exciting across all disciplines you know everyone's tuning in um yeah. but i would say in terms of staffing within the brands you know if you look around at participation here uh you talk with me Media, you ask them about who's on their staff. It's it's kind of a different picture a little bit. Um, so, uh, yeah, in particular, there's you know some really awesome activations happening. Actually, later on today, I'm heading to the Sierra Nevada tent for a women in the industry kind of meetup. Um, so they're planning on having a panel, Feisty Media, Rebecca Rush. Um, there's an editor, Rook, from US, uh, excuse me, Cycling Weekly. Um, and uh, Swift Active Media is gonna be presenting as well you know, a conversation around kind of the industry at large. What are we doing to help make connections for women who are looking to get into it, you know, um, not just from a cycling perspective, but working in the industry. So I think there's still more work to be done there to retain women in the industry. Um, and it takes all of us to, to play a part in that. So do you think it's just equally as important to keep or to have women in positions working and racing 100% like, yeah. yeah because it's you know I, it's a weird thing when it comes down to a gender conversation and like I've been beating this drum in a way since I started with live you know 11 years ago where it's like we need more women on bikes and I think by encouraging participation of other groups of people not just women but people of color you know it's it's helping to diversify the industry as we know it you know different perspectives are coming in and for the future success of the the cycling world we need more people period you know yeah. so what does it look like to ensure that you know these groups feel seen you know it's always been like you have to see it to be it and if you don't see women in leadership positions would you ever imagine being in that position like when i started with live I, so many of my guy friends that i worked at the bike shop with were going to work as tech reps for you know component companies or demo drivers and i never thought I would get a job like that. And here comes a brand like Live that was intentionally hiring women to be in the field. And that, I mean, I had a degree in elementary ed and here I get a job working at a bike shop, start do doing the demo thing. And because of the Live brand, I got a job in, in marketing. And now I'm on the global marketing team and it's just like opened those doors for me and other my other colleagues, as you know, um, who are doing the same thing and helping to you know work with other women in the industry like Kate Verano, you know, at Zwift to support other activations like the Tour de France Femme of X-Zwift. And, you know, it's really, it takes all of us to help to champion and, and recognize like we need to make a difference otherwise we keep making the same mistake you know or the same decision it's insanity you know like we're going to get the same results so we have to be intentional about bringing more people diverse people into this industry so we can grow it yeah, yeah. i mean i will say like i was maybe a little bit more ignorant to it until i had daughters hmm. and i never really had thought about it as much and i came from the auto industry and it was like well, whatever I have, I have kids, they're just going to be moto kids. Yeah. And there's nothing in moto for women. Mm. You guys have built a actual career path for women in cycling, mm -hmm. which is like my daughters, I will point them in that direction <laughs> 100%. Like, yeah. and that's, 
I don't know. Maybe people don't understand that, but like it's that's kind of. But I mean, like that's okay. I would say career path and 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 a chance to be an athlete that makes equal a pretty good da- a pretty good damn payday, right? Yeah, like yeah, a fair enough payday to live, right? Yeah. There's top women in this, uh, Kate Courtney, for yeah. example, that are making proper money in this sport. There's not that in motocross where I came from. Mm. So for me, it's like. I will push my daughters towards that. And I never really quite understood that, you know, and like the value of having, and, and maybe if it isn't the the whole, the live side of it, but like, let's just like, cause you guys are, I would say you guys are pretty core at making women be better for this, or like uh, a value of it, right? Like, like, but like actually putting more your money where your mouth is, if that kind of makes sense. Like yeah. other brands are just like, hey, we got a pink bike. You know what I mean? Get, right, get your get your wife, your girlfriend a ride. But, like, you guys are doing every value aspect, like you said, hiring to be there, all that type of stuff. Like, yeah. that's a huge deal. I don't, I mean, I, I've seen just the difference from when I've got into the sport and understanding what you guys are doing. And maybe I, I was, like I said, I was ignorant to it. But, like, like I, I'm really happy to see that there is that, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, maybe sometimes there is some far-reaching aspects of it. But, like... You kind of maybe need that to to get to that next level, and you guys have built something. Like yeah, it's like change requires like significant, you know, a significant moment or a significant like driver, you know, a catalyst yeah. or something that helps to set that shift. And I think what we're seeing in the U.S. right now with all the coverage of women's sports, I mean, the WNBA, I mean, yeah. it's, it's unreal. Like all of a sudden it's a topic of conversation on, you know, morning news channels, like mm-hmm. across multiple outlets, both within, you know, the industry and, and even globally. And it's like, why is it that we're, we're just having that conversation now? Why is the WNBA just becoming a topic of conversation? Do you, what, do you, what do you think? What, like, why do you think? I mean, I, I think Not to go is, off where, yeah. but you know what I'm saying, like. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it kind of originates in history in the sense that, like, you know, men have had opportunities in sport before women to a degree. You know, True. it's like yeah. way back in time, you know, there's a lot of limitations. There's even that uh, particular marathon runner. I uh, Forgive me for not knowing her name because I think it's meaningful to recognize her. But where she literally got on the course wearing sweatpants and stuff because women at that time were not allowed to run a marathon. They didn't think that they were capable of doing it. So she jumped on the course, was managing her way through it without anybody noticing. All of a sudden, fellow racers were starting to recognize it was a woman. They were, there's a photo of her where guys are literally trying to pull her off the course. Oh, wow. And I didn't know about this. Wow. Yeah, I know, I it's kind know. of wild, yeah, right? I, yeah. So to some degree, it's kind of just culturally, we've evolved in some ways where men have been the leaders in a lot of sports. And so for women to get into it, there was always this... Uh, um, what they were doing? underestimated. And, and question, right? and yeah, how, yeah, and there was always kind of this perception women aren't as strong or, you know, as if there was some uh, there was value something. associated with that, like where, the, you know, there's watching them compete wasn't as valuable. And so I think men have always had the leg up. If you imagine, like, you know, the illustration of a, a race, if the men are starting, you know, 10 meters ahead, they've got a leg up. They're going to get to the finish line sooner. So I think for women, it's like we've just needed a moment where we're kind of recognized equally uh, as an asset to kind of the greater sports world, you know? Like, don't think of us as a, a different element. Think of us as a contributing element to kind of growth of sports you know overall and that's why I say it's so important to welcome people you know from different backgrounds into the sport of cycling or to the outdoor space in general in order to keep it expanding and growing so um, I really think it's just been a, you know a historical legacy sadly that I think we're finally to disrupt you know yeah. and broadcasting has been a major driver in terms of sponsorships and dollars associated with sports and you know it's it's hard to compete um, you know, and I think with, you know, a podcast like yours and with access that we're giving to, you know, these races, you know, uh, we're finally finding ways to to creatively document um, and promote like Lifetime Grand Prix. You know, they're figuring out strategies so that you can spectate and watch World Cup races, etc. You know, so I think it's like the more opportunities we're giving women uh, the same as men, it's going to start shifting people's opinions, you know, um, and I think that's that's the heart of it um is recognizing like women's racing is just as exceptional women's basketball is just as exceptional so let's just normalize you know not be like oh 
it's women's racing. It's just good racing, you know, and we should be yeah. watching it. Honestly, like maybe the first couple of years I got into watching XC racing, fuck, the women's racing was so much better than the men's for a little bit there. Like, yeah. God, they were some good battles. Like the top three were just warriors. Like, booty, I mean, I'm sorry for my language, beating the shit out of each other to win. And that was like, this <laughs> is way better, better to yeah. watch, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. different kind of field and i think to some degree these women really felt like they had to prove themselves yeah. you know like they were the only ones on their team they may have been the only athlete at the time as a female you know on that roster and so you know i think there was that like even more drive to fight to kind of accelerate um you know their their visibility and their performance and so now i don't know i feel like the community at large too there's something unique about women's racing where there's a lot of camaraderie you yeah. know like they're high five each other even though they're on different teams like they yeah. show up to the start line and they're pumped to see one another because it matters that that woman next to you showed up too and that she's putting in the work because each one of them um is collectively you know at large making a difference together so yeah i mean the the racing out here has been incredible to watch um and you know it's you know just a testament of uh, kind of this, that yeah the shift at large and you know live is doing great things but i also will acknowledge other brands are too you know i think our focus is straight strictly on women because we, you know, saw that opportunity from our, the, you know, point of our brand founder back in uh, 2008 to, you know, to continue that legacy now through the efforts we're making. But there's so many brands that are doing excellent things out there today, too. So it does take all of us, you know, not just, you know, us. But, um, yeah, I love I love seeing other other teams um, really support women and provide coverage to on their channels. Max has an all women's team coming now. Um, <laughs> he's ready. He's ready. <laughs> Chain lead program, everything. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> no, we, I mean, we've had women athletes since the beginning in cycling. Yeah. Like Jill? Jill was, yeah, yeah, I mean, for a long time. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, mm. Kilani, we've done stuff with Kilani oh, yeah. over the years. Awesome, yeah. um, Portia Murdoch. Well, I mean, we've had. Oh, yeah, yeah Portia, too. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. How am I not thinking yeah, of that? So wow. we've, yeah, so, we've yeah, we've been involved on that level for a long time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know why I wasn't even thinking of that. I remember Jill, but yeah, I didn't yeah. even think of other ones. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I know I'm missing some, but yeah, for sure. I know. They're yeah. going to find you after. Yeah, I know. I'm in, <laughs> our, I'm in trouble now. Our six viewers are just going to be hunting <laughs> you down after this. So, oh, wow. You know? Um, My mom's probably one of them. So uh, yeah. Well, we'll take She's it. after you. Yeah. We will take it. Um, you know, for the warning. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> He's at booth now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be posting this number afterwards. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what's. So it's kind of interesting, too. Like, I want to get your perspective on this, like, because it's an almost like the chicken or the egg question. That's where this is kind of going. Is, yeah. is do we need more broadcast, higher winning championship money for women in this, or like these awesome, um, awesome, awesome experience things to get people in as women riding, like right, like a. No, I'm in the women's bike but in all women's learn how to ride a mountain bike camp more yeah. what's what's yeah. more important or like what do you think helps expand more like what i don't you know yeah that's a great question that's hard to answer you know to some degree i think it's it's both i hate to just you know take take the easy route out um by saying both but um i, I think because you need a fan right like exactly. you can have these ones winning yeah but if how do you get a fan on you know like if yeah. Right? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, they are two different initiatives, you know, and two different drivers. Like, I think performance cycling is a really unique one and it helps set a tone for cycling on the world stage in terms of sports in general. Like, if we weren't competing at a high level, it's almost like cycling loses a little bit of its, yeah. you know, I don't know, uh, that, that attention, you know, just like watching football and soccer you know like you get to watch that broadcasting those professional athletes that are aspirational that when you're a kid you know you're hanging a poster up on your wall being like I want to be a soccer player someday maybe you don't but you still love the sport and you get involved in the sport so yeah like they are meaningful those heroes you yeah. know um, but I think the the kind of the smaller development programs are equally as beneficial to just even fostering that that local community and also helping to progress people from maybe beginners you know to intermediates just in the more recreational styles so yeah I think all of them play a role yeah yeah are okay. you seeing that as well on uh, your side what do you see yeah what do you see in terms well, of i think the uh, I, I mean i can if i and you can correct me if i'm wrong but if i if i think on the on the bicycle side of things you know the 
the your goal is to sell to the masses, correct? Like you, yeah. you guys want to be able to reach the maybe the person that doesn't necessarily have any desire to race. Totally. But yeah. just wants to exercise like and now yeah. and, and, yeah. and enjoys yeah. going and so like, you know, the the, the two, three, four percent of this category are the people that really race at a high level and yeah. the people that can attach to that, yes, it's absolutely a market. But how so so how do you how do you have the, the correct people that are at a high level so you talk to that next level of people but then how do you also relate to the person that just wants to walk into a bike shop and buy a bike and has no idea who even races a bike <laughs> right yeah. so you know there's a lot of different yeah. levels to it you yeah know? Right. and that person yeah. doesn't need a top tier kashima coated yeah. shram <laughs> max no, you know what i mean no. like, but so then so then you fun. you know yeah. then you lean on the the experience side of it like anything you go yeah. buy a vehicle whatever it is yeah. you want that experience like if and so if i can walk into a shop and i don't know anything about a mountain bike but the customer service was great the the representative that worked with me i treated me well yeah. they educated me i got something specific out of it i can leave there feeling like there was a, a, a benefit to selecting the bike that i selected that's right and that's i guess ultimately i, I guess if i think on the bike level what you guys want to accomplish right so, 100 yeah. percent. yeah and that's yeah. and and now what things cost and what your investment is you're looking for those little things that make you feel a little bit better about spending that yeah. seven eight nine how, how, how do you guys tackle that situation because it's i would say and maybe correct me if i'm wrong but like so like giant your your brother yeah <laughs> your, <laughs> brother. Bro. your bro <laughs> yeah. yeah my bro Seth. yeah <laughs> yeah shout out to aj yeah. um, <laughs> bro yeah. they're almost they're i don't know if they're kind of like looking at stuff as in any other brand like them specials or whatever it is looking at like how are we getting new people in mm-hmm. and they're like how do we steal that person that's already in like you want to ride our bike yeah. where are you guys at like you because yeah. you i mean it, I don't, i'm just throwing a number you're of all bike sales of 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 anything men or women it, women are how much percent, right? Maybe twenty percent compared to whatever, right? Yeah. But so you guys are almost having to find brand new users. Hundred percent. Yeah. How yeah. do you guys tackle something like that? What y- for you? you know? Yeah. I mean, I think when we've thought about like you know growing the market, we look at adjacent sports. You know, things like running, um, swimming, even you know women. There's a high participation in triathlons. You know, a lot of times triathletes like, especially if they're willing to you know be more of a, a newbie in it you're seeing them kind of come from the running background and all of a sudden now they have to get a bike and so they're discovering it that way so um, I think people who are naturally outdoor you know like orientated they're active uh, they like being outside and cycling offers that you know and I think um, there's uh, you know I think all of us can remember the first time we rode a bike when we were kids, you know, (laughs) like there's, we all likely had that moment of being a child and, you know, taking the training wheels off or whatever it was, or cruising down our hill, like, you know, skinning up our knees or whatever, having that fun moment. And, um, I think there's something about cycling that like all of us can connect to. And if you don't get into it, you know, as an adult, I think it's still something you can relate to like this idea of freedom and fun. So I think it's like tapping into that. Like you said, you know, it's like about the experience and kind of really, um, bringing that to the surface and celebrating that, you know, it's not just about the performance racing side, but it's like, and that can be, you know, type three fun, but, um, you know, it's fun overall. And so just, I think, Um, identifying ways to connect with those communities and even working with other partners, other brands that are, um, you know, doing really cool stuff in in the outdoor space, uh, I think has been a way um, for us to kind of, you know, gain more people into the sport. And, you know, one of the programs that we've uh, heavily invested in um, for now, uh, nearly 10 years, is uh, the Ladies All Ride program. So Lindsay Richter has really kind of developed a meaningful thing, not just within her community in Bend, but across the U.S. where she's hosting mountain bike camps uh, and clinics for women um, even hosting events here at Sea Otter to kind of welcome in beginner riders you know like yeah. it, it can be really intimidating to start whether it's road cycling or mountain biking and even well, that's why I brought that up yeah it's right? super intimidating I mean you got to get the equipment you got to get the helmet the shoes and then you feel like you got to look the part so yeah. I think it's important for us to not you know as a uh, as an industry to isolate kind of the beginners and um, so I think we have to find ways to really like relate to the beginner rider as well so offering them ways that are really 
really um, kind of welcoming bike shops offering maintenance clinics and you know putting on events or community events and you know if I were to say there's one category of cycling that's uh, done that well in the most recent history is, is gravel you know I feel like we're seeing a lot of new people getting into riding because of gravel riding um, and even those gravel events, even though they're races, you're seeing people participate at all different levels. So um, I think there's a way of creating kind of cycling community. I mean, that's really what it's about. Like when you think about what is one of the things that you love about riding, I would say it's riding with people, you know, yeah. riding with your friend. Like those are the memories that, um, yeah, you treasure. So I think it's like connecting those dots for people who aren't in the sport and finding ways to connect them to communities. Yeah. Rough, rough. You got a roll? Yeah, that's cool. Trevor's out. Uh, yep. Peace. Yeah. <laughs> the, the he's got some the chains. I will. Okay. Yeah, he's got some chains to lube. Yeah. 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 Very nice to meet you. Yeah, you too, Trevor. Yeah. Yeah. When, when is the class? You know, when is the, the chain lubing class down at Maxima today? All we're there all day long. All day Come long. On by. All day yeah. long. Yeah. All right. No problem. No Tell me who's problem. that. Just booth, yeah, we're booth yeah. B57. B57. Um, yeah, we've got products to demo we're selling products we got great deals on some products i need some bio wash i got plenty of it okay yeah i got plenty i should have you bring it in the bag cool all right thanks thank you thanks bye Trevor. um you know that that topic's a hot topic with women in cycling i think even women in all sports right now especially with that news i I know we only have you for a little bit more but like that what like how does it feel good to hear about like that about the is it women WMEA they had uh, yeah. larger viewership yeah I believe that's what it was, it was yeah and what I you know I hate to say this but one of the topics of conversation right now is about uh, salaries um, true you know uh, you're seeing it really front and center with the recent um, uh, why can't I think of it um, uh, just uh, the uh, professional um Come on, Austin, help me out. What just happened? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> With signing, um, you know, riders to the, you know, WNBA and like draft pick. There we go. But like, hold Coming on. So, so they really, they discovered that the top pick is only getting like oh 75000 yeah. oh, a year or something. Close to the and numbers, And the, right. the man is getting top pick $10 million. But like, okay, so, okay. And I have a little bit of a. A, a thing with that like and I'm not mm-hmm. trying to pick on it or start a fight but yeah, I, no, I guess what sure. my thing is is like uh, men NBA yeah. have had strong numbers for X amount of years and that's totally. where their salaries are proven at, right? they've yeah. proven it and but, now yeah. the, the women have done the WMA situation right, right? like don't get me I'm not like you guys are going to have it yeah. It's just, it's not going to start today. I and know, but I guess sucks. it begs the it, question of like why yeah. is there such great disparity and even if there's a, a valid reason well, then what are we doing to change that? Yeah. Because still, it, now this woman, it's just like in cycling. Oh, and they and have other, to get another job. Like in other, can you other actually aspects. I'm not saying, like yeah. in sports, I'm not yeah. saying, I'm not trying to say like in, in if we're, let's just say we're both working at Walmart. There shouldn't <laughs> be a difference. Yeah. Right? Like if we're doing the register, I mean, yeah. but if I'm better than you at the register, I don't know, I type the numbers a little bit faster, whatever it is. Don't take it, you know, personal. <laughs> but I'm just saying, fast. I don't, I, I'm, but in sports, it's as viewership numbers and pe- people yeah. want it. Like that's where my thing is on that. I, and totally. I, that's always you know. been the story. That's always been the excuse that I've heard while I've been at live, you know, especially for, you know, growing women's programming. And I get it too. Like we're in that position too, where, you know, live sales, a uh, percentage of that is our marketing budget. If we sold more bikes, our budget would be bigger. We could do more yeah. and we could pay women more. And, you know, we get that challenge sometimes. Like, why don't you have more women on your team? It's like, well, you know, proportionally. Well, right. We can have more, but then there's less pay for the top ones. Yeah, or we need to make more money to give more money totally. to reinvest. And so I get it from a business perspective. Do not get me wrong. I think what's most meaningful is that it is such a disparity and that people are recognizing that. So that can hopefully start to motivate change. It's encouraging conversations so that people are starting to wonder why is that? Yeah. What can we do to accelerate it? How can we make WNBA a, something that women could pursue, even from a, a coaching position? You know, like all the key players that are involved in the WNBA. There's so many roles. It's not just the players on the court, but everybody around it. So, like, what are we doing to help accelerate 
kind of the shift uh, yeah. faster. So it doesn't take 20 years for women to get equal pay. Yeah. I mean, it's, just like we saw in soccer, that's, you know, that's a perfect example. I mean, I know you're running. How much, how much time? Oh, are you? No, what do we have you good. for? We're, okay. It's another like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Well then let's, let's segment our way in. I mean, I think that was great women talk about in <laughs> all aspects yeah. of sports. Um, and that's, Honestly, like, I, I don't know, like having two daughters, it's a personal subject for me. And you know, a challenge is, I, it's been deeper the later and the more I get older and think on stuff. But that being said, uh, I just shot one of your recent bike and I keep seeing it, but the yeah. digital blurple <laughs> and this, and I'm, I'm bringing this around. Yeah. Okay. Is Giant over there stealing your colors after every year or something? Definitely. I feel like you guys have crushed it in yeah. colorways. <laughs> and then, yeah. like, I mean, talk about the colorways and what you guys have done with that. You know, like it. I mean, is it just a women's thing? I don't know. Like, it's, no, it's rad. I can't dog on the giant colors. They actually are doing an exceptional job. And I will say it's because of the leadership of my colleague, Chelsea. Um, she originally was exclusively developing, you know, color and graphics for uh, Live Bikes. Um, and I would say it's been a few years now that she's helped to, um, you know, accelerate her position. And now she's overseeing, you know, both teams. So they're bikes that make people excited, you know, that are dynamic colors or fun. And yeah, so yeah, but I will say the Intrigue X range is yeah pretty spot on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if people haven't seen the digital purple. <laughs> I've Sold in Canada, not in the U.S. Oh, sadly, oh, I know. Man, I forgot about that. Yeah, but we have Mulberry Glitter, uh, not sadly sold in the U.S. But we have Black Raw Carbon, which is gorgeous, and then Short Line. it's been years of you guys awesome. just crushing it with colors. Thanks. Like seriously, yeah. like yeah. yeah. Colors are fun. Uh, I, yeah. I need go to the website. <laughs> go to the <laughs> website. Yeah, the website. Yeah. <laughs> so you know. Yeah, uh, one aspect of I think your job is probably uh, specking bikes, correct? Right, like actually not. not um, but my colleague, really? yeah, never spec bikes. Um, so the kind of the internal structure is that we have what we refer to as category managers, and so um, my colleague, for instance, Ludi, is the one who's uh, developing that specification for, you know all of our off-road and gravel bikes. We have a different category manager for on-road and X-road. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a collaborative effort in terms of like, you know, her vision for truly like the product tip to tail. You know, it's not just about developing the geometry or what are going to be the newest features to the bike, but it's like the whole package comes together when you're adding the wheels and the saddle and the handlebar and the component selection. Um, so for me, I just get to kind of shine it up and get it on the website that's my <laughs> that's my side of it yeah um so there's a, a brand i'm sure you've heard of them um and it's just this is i i fox uh motocross gear yeah and so um and they also now make mountain bike gear so for us from me coming from moto fox moto gear is the sexiest gear <laughs> and the, the best gear like it is the top quality top just every aspect of it and i've always i'm like it, it didn't take me until years later of working with the company and, and learning how that uh, and the, every year these guys had amazing designs, yeah. colors, everything killed it. And, um, and I asked him, I was like, man, like, um, who's designing this stuff? Like I had, to, and, uh, and I don't know if it's still true to today, but they were like, it's honestly all women, uh, graphic design team. No way. It ruined me. It ruined me. Uh, and, and, and uh, <laughs> not ruined me, but like at that, uh, uh, at that age, I was just like, what? No way. You know, in yeah. my mind, I was like, how are these women doing that? And I'm kind of wondering, like, is it the same way? Like you guys, I, I, I your, your bikes and the, the look of them, the cover, every aspect, like it, it is, it is beautiful cockpit, the yeah. just, it, it, good it's good good job on that and and i guess my question is is yeah. like do women just design better stuff like Jeez, you should pull the audience here i don't know i i think i mean i'm biased in the sense that i <laughs> i do agree you know we've got pretty badass women on our team that are yeah obviously coming out with some kick-ass colors and even our you know gear team too you know there's been some really fun stuff there but i think it's just like yeah there's men and women that are doing sick stuff but i think yeah our uh our team is crushing it um yeah yeah, yeah seriously though no it's it's like there's some bike brands like that rhyme with mints and tents <laughs> and you're just like what are you guys doing you know and but yeah i mean not, for, not trying to get you to talk shit but it 
toots to the and it, <laughs> I mean maybe women do just design better looking stuff I don't know or more maybe I'm just to get more women yeah more attracted teams. to women's designs I don't yeah. know what it is but yeah. I just you guys have you guys crushed it in that area for sure cool. and um like the whole aspect of what live stands for and I think a lot of people and I've said this to you guys too is, is like I think from the outside in don't fully understand the the mission statement and um I I mean I compel them to research it more to understanding of like you guys are giving I mean, I mean, a lot of my friends have had daughters. Uh, mm. <laughs> I know we're kind of like, like pulling the heartstrings of the dads, which I love to be honest but with I you. Know. I've had that comp, like I've had that compliment actually. Mm. A gentleman uh, who I've known for the past few years, he he uh, is in bicycling. Literally, literally yesterday, just told me. I got to tell you, I ended up getting my daughter an intrigue, and I'm like that. Like that is honestly the the best compliment to me. You know, even got that back in the day when a dad's like, yeah, I'm buying my daughter a lift bike because of what you guys are doing you know and yeah. i think you know there's so many awesome bike brands out there do not get me wrong but i think you know there is a group of consumers who are maybe also motivated beyond just bike technology you know like what a brand is doing what they're investing in and as we say like when you buy a live bike you are investing in women like as you said people might not fully understand the structure internally they they likely know giant giant's been around for since the 80s in the u.s and beyond that um 50 to celebrated their 50th anniversary uh, a year or so ago and um for us at live it's like we've always been thought of as you know kind of the little sister or oh you're just giant you know it's like no actually we are a standalone brand so we get the benefit of sharing the same technologies um manufacturing and, and you know all those things that are really amazing uh, attributes even components as you'll see like we respect with giant wheel systems that are awesome but when it comes to developing the geometry of our bikes to you know even our team we have you know women engineers that are working on our bikes we have you know Ludi, our category manager you know myself and the rest of my marketing team like our our race team manager you know from all those aspects and you know what's also meaningful to us is getting to work with women editors who are test riding our bikes so we're by nature also encouraging that they get hired for the job it's um, a full circle program yeah i just heard an yeah. editor tell me today that she just went to a launch event she was the only woman out of 30 men I, it's crazy oh, right but how do we like isn't that insane but how do we change that is it the mission maybe maybe it's just like i want it now and i'm, I'm very much of a maybe impatient person yeah. but you guys have done a lot of change women yeah. in general in this in the sport of mountain cycling yeah well okay so cycling it's a passionate thing i would say probably mm, 80 to 90 percent of people who work in the industry do it because they love cycling right yeah so that could also be you know but doesn't it also cross as a little bit of like i feel like some people stumble onto it because they're trying to figure out their fitness but it's also fun yeah right maybe they weren't enjoying the gym or i don't know totally but i think people who work in the industry are likely yeah passionate about cycling that's what you do you don't do it for the money let's be real okay (laughs) (laughs) so um i think overall that really means that like we're finding um that to some degree it's been the same folks you yeah. know it's been hey i know so and so i'm gonna bring him into the role oh he was a sales rep for the last 10 years inside of hiring kind of a green person i'm gonna hire somebody who has experience and i get it but guess what you're it's always gonna look the same yeah unless you're willing to bring in new talent and train them and um i was at an event the sea otter summit where there was a panel um hosted by swift uh, media and they were really talking about retention like what are some ways in which we can keep women on teams and how can we help provide them opportunities and so i think just like cycling you have to see it to be it if you see you know mariana voss or you know kate courtney racing like a little girl is like i could be that yes. and people need to see that leadership in the industry right now i am not seeing many bike organizations that have you know top women executives where are they? Why aren't we seeing them? They live. <laughs> yeah. They live. Yeah. yeah, true. Um, but I think we need to find out. And just like this event I'm about to go to today um, is focused on helping to network 
um, women in the industry, helping to show that there are women who are passionate that want to get into the industry. And that will, I think, ultimately help shift things. We just, we need to get these women, like if you're out there yeah. or you have a friend, like apply to jobs, go to websites, show up to these events, talk to us at the booth. Like I highly encourage that, like reach out to me, hit us up like on LinkedIn, like be aggressive. Like if you love cycling and you want to work in the industry, do not be shy about it because I'll tell you what, so many teams out here are really wanting women, women editors. If you can write and you love bikes and you're technical, hit up these outlets. They're desperate for women who are, are capable of writing reviews. So yeah, you just also, we need to kind of encourage that and advertise that more broadly. Um, we got five minutes with you, I'm guessing. Yeah. Four, three. Yeah. What two, do we got? Two? No. Two, one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> four. Four minutes with you. Uh, yeah, four minutes. Okay. That being said, and we kind of did talk about this a little bit, but I'm bringing it around on like, you guys are having to chase the new customer in a sense. A new, just, I'm going to get a bike completely new, right? Yeah. Um, but that, minus that, is marketing much different on your end than it is from to men to women like does that kind of make sense right like is it because like for us it's like it's the it's the sex appeal of the bike and it's, it's I've, I've explained it right <laughs> we like, like it's too we think bikes are sexy okay yeah, yeah. so then it's, it's, it's much different like do you have to think in a different do you feel like that i mean you know uh, you, you know think? i think there's a lot of commonalities i don't want to like over you know sometimes we we talk about that but i think um it's important like just like you you know you might want something developed from you or for you like through the gaze or lens of a man like there's something of like oh he gets it he gets my experience and I think for women it's kind of similar to a degree and I would say there's a lot of commonalities but one thing that always elevates is like women are collaborative and they love being a part of community um, so I think that's like a heart and soul element. Like women are intimidated to learn things and I don't want to like blanket all men, but there's well, I like, think you know, are intimidated, point. but they're dicks about it. <laughs> right? Like, and I, I'm not, just, I'm not, it, I didn't. Oh, I'm just saying that. I mean, I like, I, maybe I'm just a little bit different and stuff and uh, it's, I, I'm willing to just like, okay, well, why are you mad at me? You know what I mean? Just because you didn't know how to do it. Why are you mad at me? You don't yeah. put it on me. A minute, I would, I just, I, I don't know. I'm Women just, like want to learn, like, you know, like go to a clinic and learn. And guys are like, I'm just, I'm going to figure it out. You know, it's that like, whole, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to ask for directions. directions like, seen in every yeah. Movie. I mean, I hate to say, cause I don't like stereotypes. Cause I feel like it then reinforces that idea and doesn't allow for people to kind of like change. You know, you know? Funny is you like, maybe men should start reading directions. Maybe men should, okay. like, it should I start still don't read directions, but yeah. I, I will <laughs> say that it brings, I don't know. I mean, I think people take it wrong. Maybe they're, whatever but i'm totally cool with like a little bit of the stereotype scene because it opens up the conversation to me like i'm like everyone always talks about like men not reading the directions or whatever and i'm like fuck you're right i gotta read the directions <laughs> but i can see how men take it completely wrong like no nah, i'm not reading the directions that's fucking wrong yeah for sure yeah, yeah yeah so you know i bet there's a lot of similarities but sometimes like i don't know about you but sometimes it's really just fun to ride with like my ladies you know there's something that is different than riding with the guys, but I also love riding with the guys. Like we can have both, um, which is really great. And I think, you know, each brand is doing something. Oh, valuable. you guys definitely get away with it a lot better than us. Like, yeah. 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 So I think it's just like kind of allowing our industry to be diverse. Like if every, you know, and this is what I get challenged with when people say like, you know, why does live make bikes just for women? It's like, well, why not? Like, why aren't you questioning why, other brands exist when they're literally making the same exact thing like it's just like cars right how many suvs are out there how many trail bikes are out there like we're all doing it because to some degree like we're passionate about it we want to create something unique and also it attracts different types of people you know the more diverse of an industry and representation we have we're going to attract other people otherwise if you know, I hate to say it, if we're all vanilla, we're all going to be only vanilla, you know? Yeah. So we got to show different types of people and bring other people in. And it takes different brands, like, to kind of showcase that. So, like, we're all playing a different part yeah. collectively, you know? Yeah. 
we're all we're all needed in this industry to challenge each other. And I think Liv has done that. I think Liv has been a challenger to other brands to like step up to invest in women. You know, yeah, obviously you have. I mean, yeah. the, don't think and yeah. that's not a <laughs> change that we have. Okay. You or you have. I I have it. You have. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, what? It's four o'clock. I don't know. Do you need the run? Yeah. 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 I'm headed off. Do to your thing. Another Dude. meeting. I uh, appreciate all your time. Thank you, honestly. This like, super I, fun. I, I was funny because you did ask me a question. It was like, hey, what are we gonna talk about? And I'm like, I almost just want to say, like, just go. With, that's why I was like, just be yourself. Go with the flow. Because, man, we were gonna talk about bikes, but we talk about bikes in a different way. I don't. That's does right. that make sense? Right? Totally. I don't know. Totally. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, this is fun, Austin. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for your time. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I think my next guest is somewhere around here. Um, is that him over there? He dropped his bike. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> get over here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys and thank you Thanks, um, have a good time yeah. uh, I'll see you around how you doing uh, there's either two either one you want to step into okay. I'll take the one that she warmed up for me. yeah yeah okay that works that works next guest we got Paul Parabinos team specialized e-bike uh, champion I don't know about you that you can throw the headset on oh yeah 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 um I mean, if you guys have our Instagram, you've probably seen the video of him just breathing super hard, taking the helmet off. Oh, did you put me on the gram somewhere? Uh, I put you on the uh, in- inside of MTV gram on the story. Oh, I gotta you? check it out. Yeah, <laughs> I I mean, I've been trying to stay off my phone why? this week. Hey, because this is vacation you, for me. For you? Okay, look. You how? Okay, mountain bikers aren't as serious as you. Have you figured that out? Yeah. 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 Oh, well. <laughs> Dude, <really? laughs> it's hilarious. Um, you are literally like, if, but in Bodo, the intensity and the level and seriousness, it, like, you know, you got your spot, you're in the regular parking, you're set up, you're <coughs> training, you're going. I am. Moto, that would be just total normal. Yeah. Total yeah. normal. Here, the dude probably was like drinking a Coors Light, like, holy fuck, what is this guy doing? Which I, yeah, I don't get it. Like, if we're going to race, I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to do my homework. I'm going to make sure my bike's perfect. I'm going to practice. I'm going to do the best I can do. Otherwise, I don't see the point of doing it. <laughs> oh, dude. And, <laughs> I mean, it's, so I personally, this industry, yeah, I kind of like the fact that it's not as serious, but it yeah. is serious. I don't know how to explain it. But, like, I was just watching you the other day, and, like, dude, you're, you're fucking on it. Like, and, <laughs> and, and but what, but that being said, what attracts you to this, this, this industry? Um, man, I think it was a bunch of things all at the same time. Uh, my son just kind of, be, he's nine, so he's, uh, he's a very, very good football player. I'm learning he's pretty damn good at baseball, too. So, like, I want to be there for him and support him. And yeah, I'm a lifelong motocross racer and motocross takes a lot of time. Like you have to, it's a big day to go riding. It's a lot of work in the garage, changing oil and pressure washing stuff and changing filters. And, and also at the same time, my dad passed and, um, yeah, just me and my wife started prioritizing our health more. And I got a Levo at around all the same, this, you know, all the same timing and, found it so much easier to go and exercise and ride and kind of do something that was pretty damn similar to what I'm used to doing like you know trying to go fast and hit jumps and find better lines and and yeah I I realize I have amazing mountain biking outside my front door (laughs) in in California where I live in Marietta so I ride out of my you know I work from home now um and uh ride out on my lunch hour and I don't know. I uh, it's the first time in 30 years I don't have a dirt bike in my garage. Really? I, I no only have no dirt bike. Not, not since I was four years old. I've always had a motorcycle my whole life. <laughs> so um, yeah, I sold my dirt bikes. Um, got a Levo. Now I got a downhill bike. I'm like researching building a slalom bike next. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. Yeah, I just I, I I you know you know you you mentioned it earlier. I I'm all about racing. It's just what. Yeah. lights me up inside I, 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 I people want to tell me Strava and all these things I don't care because it's not the same condition it's not the pressure of racing Strava is bullshit to me <laughs> like all it is is a metric Love it. all it is is a metric to compare against yourself yes. in my opinion yeah. um, if Let you want to see how good you are show up to the race <laughs> that's how you find out how good you are in my opinion so um, you're yeah, old school I, you're old school I guess so um, old school but new school in this sport right yeah so I don't know I've, di- I've dove in and uh, it's also um, obviously I work at Renthal and I'm the global off-road manager at Renthal so I deal with all the motocross supercross teams and marketing and products and stuff like that on that side 
Uh, so I have a colleague that does the same job as me, but for cycling. So I'm kind of close to it at a very, very cool brand that's very involved in mountain bike racing, right? We sponsor all yeah. the top DH guys. And and um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's just a natural fit. I love my job. I love riding bikes now. And, and you know what, honestly, the coolest part about mountain biking is for me? Yeah is I'm getting to go to new places I've never been before, and they're beautiful. They're pretty. <laughs> Dude, it's crazy, right? This place is amazing. Unreal. And I mean, I, I went to Italy last year just because I wanted to try a, 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 an enduro at the highest level, and it was the prettiest place I've been to in my life. Like, I'm tired of going to Redbud and Unadilla and all these places I've been to for 25 years. It's yeah. not, you know, it's not what I want to spend my free time at, I guess. Um, so, I mean, I still obviously go for work and I'm very connected to the off-road side, um, because of work, but I took vacation to come here this week and this is my bike vacation. Did do you, okay. I was having the issue back when I was doing moto stuff. Did your ears ring and like have headaches afterwards after like all um, those long, because we get there at like 6am. Yeah. It's always a long day. All day. I, I guess I haven't noticed that, but again, I've been, I was on a motorcycle at four years old racing at four raced my whole life turned professional at 16 tried that for a while started becoming a mechanic already at like 24 and then was a mechanic for <clears throat> almost 10 years and then so i have been around racing and motorcycles and gas and i have no sense of smell anymore <laughs> um, because i've been breathing race fuel my whole life so uh yeah I don't, I don't know i didn't notice the ear thing but i do you know what I, I another thing i love is when i bring my wife and my son to one of these races it's peaceful for them and it's yes. something for them to enjoy it's not just sitting in the back of the truck roasting because you want to park <laughs> far away from the track so you yeah, actually get some peace this, and quiet yeah, you can get a tree it's, yeah you know motos typically a flat parking lot uh, yeah all stuffed in as close as you can absolutely right you, even walking across the parking lot a pit bike rider just mow you down yeah. you know like and this is a hot topic i'm learning too <laughs> is i think mountain bikes are cheaper oh it is, but it isn't. I don't it know. It is, but it isn't. It it's isn't, very isn't. expensive to get started. I, you know, obviously, if you want a good bike, you're going to spend some money. But as far as upkeep, parts are nothing. Yeah. Compared to motorcycles. And you don't have to wash it every day. That's so huge. <laughs> I haven't got my pressure washer out in months, and it's amazing. <laughs> Hold on, you hit the bike with a pressure washer? Oh yeah, I mean that one's right there. It's too muddy. I'm going to pressure wash. Are you that. taking these things apart? And yes. Like, you're full mechanic on it. Yeah, because there's so much to learn. Like, obviously, in my past, I was a professional motocross, supercross mechanic, so I know everything about a motorcycle, but I knew nothing about a bicycle. And I needed different tools. I needed all kinds of things. So there's still so much for me to learn. And and uh, honestly, at 40 years old, that's part of the draw, too, is I wasn't getting any better on my dirt bike, um, where I feel like I'm getting better still on my mountain bike and getting fitter and learning more about how to set my bike up. And it's just a whole nother realm that i am enjoying learning <laughs> <laughs> okay so the aspect differences for you like the bolts smaller things are smaller like better or worse where, where are you at um i think it's it's been an easy transition for me because i'm kind of a perfectionist type Mo uh, mechanic you know I'm not like it's easier for me to go this way where I think some mechanics it's easier for them to go into heavy equipment or something right? yeah so I'm, I'm, I've always been sort of delicate uh, you know growing up my very first job I worked at my dad's machine shop and my dad made um, uh, he ran a CNC his own CNC mach uh, machine shop he had you know f four four machines two Mazex, two fidels you know some lathes and mills and that was my first job as i was running a machine in his shop and he he produced parts for the aerospace industry um so very very fine tolerances to the thousands and i i grew up under the eye of a perfectionist essentially so um yeah i don't know it's just uh i've always been kind of mechanical i guess because of my dad and and um yeah but i I would say right now, as of today, bikes are harder for me because <laughs> really? I don't know yet. Really? I'm still learning, so. I mean, how, how deep are you? Like, are you, cha I mean, I guess you're an e-bike, but I mean, are you doing full drivetrains? Are you doing, like, are you? I could do a drivetrain. You could do a drivetrain? I could do a drivetrain. I need some better tools to do brakes and stuff, but I'm just still learning. Like, like bleeding, like, you're talking, right? Yeah, 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 because I keep changing brakes to figure, like, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm experimenting. I finally got these SRAM Mavens, okay. and I'm like, holy crap, finally a brake that works. And you're like, okay, so for me, I'm like, and this is the, this is a hot topic for these mountain bikers. Okay. I, the Shimano stops, don't get me wrong, but I fucking, I don't, I love the SRAM, even though they blow out, but like, just, I'm, it's like that moto, you can drag your brake into sections, like, yes. where I, 
Is that where we're at? Right? Yeah, like I, I love that break because finally, you know, I hear people say, oh, I heard it's too powerful. I'm like, how do you have too powerful of a break? <laughs> Don't squeeze it so hard. <laughs> like uh, that, that's beyond me. So I, 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 yeah, I love that break because the lever's very stiff. The pull is firm. You can make it short, you can adjust pad tension, and I can just breathe that thing and feel the front wheel. I don't want to have to mash my lever to where I'm dealing with lever flex. Yeah. Because that makes it hard for me to feel the front wheel, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's very different how this industry is, too. How, like, basically there's frame builders, and you're just you're just finding components to put on your bike. It's after wild. That. And, and in moto, it's like everyone develops their own product top to bottom. Yeah. So it's there's so much different crossover here. So like you know, for instance, in motocross, I would never let somebody use an ODI grip with a Renthal bar. It doesn't <laughs> Dude, happen. Never. Doesn't never. happen. It's not allowed. If you <laughs> want to be supported by Renthal and motocross, you have to use Dead. that grip. There's no no negotiation. Where happens all over the place in in it's mountain crazy. bike. It's just yeah, it's very. Or the saturated. TLD helmet with a fox gear. But yeah. it matches. But we're just like, no, don't do don't it. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. 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 And some of the words mountain bikers use are a <laughs> bit much for me sometimes. <laughs> hero dirt and like. Oh, uh, hero dirt's the word, dude. Like, come what are you on, talking bro. about? No, it's, it's good. It's, it's tacky. There's traction. No. It's not hero, dirt. hero It's hero dirt. If you're a hero, you, you won a race or something. Then you're, you're a hero. You're not fully converted yet. <laughs> I'm not. You're not. <laughs> I'm not. You're not. I'm not. You're not. You're going to be there. I, a few I might. years, you're so deep in it man I, I, the, the, the problem a, a, anyone who knows me knows that anything i do i, I go all the way like <laughs> i have to otherwise i won't mess with it so <laughs> otherwise I, I don't know it's just how i've always been i i, I want to try to anything i do i want to do my best at it right dude so. and you're seriously you're deep right now like you're <laughs> you're you're on the deep end of the of the like I've watched your progression over the years of where yeah. for this mountain bike thing. Yeah. And like, when I seen the video that you were in fucking Italy, yeah. I was like, "Holy fuck, he went deep." Yeah, I was like, I was like, how gnarly are those guys? <laughs> like, how gnarly is the the highest end enduro? And I I gotta find out. So that was like my. 40th birthday present to myself last oh, year. Oh, really? Yeah, like I had Sky Miles. I booked a really cheap hotel. Just went by myself. Took vacation and just went. And why not? Tried. Like I'm just never. I'm never afraid to try something. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I got smoked because there's a lot of local knowledge in mountain biking, which I'm yeah. learning is huge, right? Like you just have to know. I mean, look, Red Sea Otter. How many times has the course been the same? So yeah. these dudes could ride it blind. Exactly right. So yeah. like my first year here, I struggled on the downhill track. Where now I got it dialed because i've been down it 15 20 times by now yeah so um yeah that's different and the and the other hard part is you can't really it's hard to f to watch and know what to do on a motocross track you can kind of see the whole track you can <laughs> go watch the pros or something see what they're doing not here and like oh they're hopping over that jump and then doing this where i can't like i go pro it myself or i try to stop on the course to watch somebody but I, it's hard to find what to do so i like that a little bit too um you like where it's 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 kind of you who has to do it right yes. like in moto it's like you go to supercross track you got the suspension tech the moto the motor tech you got yep. fuck i don't even know a bolt tech for fuck's sakes and they're <laughs> and their chassis guy and then yeah electronics and, guys yeah. trainers and, and yeah here, and I'll throw that all out the window it's off of what i got on the gopro on practice day. yeah it's pretty it's it's cool like that i like it's how wild. independent it is and it's like I think that's another aspect I like too. Is it's it's an adventure. Like in, enduro racing is kind of an adventure to me. Like you're you're oh you have to survive. Yeah, 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 and maintain your equipment kind of, and be smart and not be stupid in the spots where you can have a DNF or a failure. Or do they use DNF in mountain biking? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Her mechanical yeah. or something. So it's not um, as talked about. It's just like ah, whatever. You didn't finish. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's. I mean, because and I think it's because of the aspect of like it's not in this arena that you're watching. Yeah, if that makes sense, right? And you really know it. Like, really, in an enduro situation, the dude just may never come back for three or four hours. Yeah, you don't know what happened. You know yeah, what and then you find out the next day, oh, he blew a wheel up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Walked it out, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Like, it, And so that leads me to the next thing is like, all right, so you've tasted, uh, what we've, we've tasted uh, enduro, downhill. Yeah. You didn't do slalom, but no. you're thinking about it. Yeah, and I, I and I tried the kind of like the XC race. Oh, you here. tried the XC? Yeah, yeah. I've learned that's not for me. <laughs> But is that because you don't, you're not epic? You don't have you know. Like, I mean, I did the I did the e bike XC race and I still got smoked. Oh, there's an e bike XC. Yeah, race? it's coming up here in a bit. Actually, I want to go watch a friend of mine. That but, is um, fucked up. But dude, they're over the assist the whole time, yeah. and and you know how those things are. As soon as you get yeah. over the assist, it's like dragging a boat anchor. Yes, and, it is. It is a boat. And I think I'm built more to be like a. 
it's the same way in motocross like my whole career in motocross i could do 20 minutes as fast as my my pace but to do that last that last 10 minutes of a national like a pro national to get to that 30 minutes that was always super hard for me so i think enduro and downhill is it fits me well like i can give a full effort for five to ten minutes but it's very hard to give a full effort for two or three hours for me like i just i'm not not i I guess Yeah. yeah i guess i'm I'm better at the short stuff than I am at the long stuff. Yeah. So I bet. All right. Like, what's what's left on the list? Are we talking? Are you are you gonna try like cross? Are you gonna tr- you know what cross is? No. You don't know cross yet. What's cross? All right. Well, I'm actually pretty <laughs> good at cross too. So okay. like, I did I I did the TV broadcast for cross <laughs> last year, and um, the national championship. Cross is like their super cross of cycling. Really. And they go downtown to places, and the course is like. It's the ones where they're running off the bike, throwing it up the stairs, hopping back on, clipping oh, it, clipping yeah. the rut. Like, yeah, that ain't me. That's uh, like a, that's like a road bike, gravel bike race. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like very condensed. Yeah, I yeah. still don't think that's no. my, my jam. I want things that are more bi- bike skill. Okay. Not so Downhill much and leg legs, yeah. right? Yeah. Like so, yeah. I, I those guys are gnarly. Those they their legs are gnarly. Yeah. But my skill is, I think I can jump stuff. I can find good lines. I could rip through a rock section. Like, I but dude, have you? No- I mean, I don't know if you've <laughs> noticed. Like, okay, when I got over here, like the moto train of thought of riding a section is different than the way that they do it. I, that kind of makes sense. Like, for me. Uh, you know how you set up for a corner, yeah. and you're like, oh, it's very different, very different, very different. Very different. You know what? Like, you know what? The best comparison is it's like riding a 125 or yeah. a rental car through mud, or <laughs> right? Yeah. It's all momentum, it's all and momentum. and so in the beginning, I'm diving to the inside because you're used to racing people on a track, and if oh that guy left the door open, I'm sticking it in yes. there. Mountain biking, there's no really racing with each other. No. At least the ones the, the disciplines that I do. Even in the XC though, they don't do that. Really? Cross, they'll do it. Okay. Yeah, they'll get aggressive and cross. See, that's the part I, I, I still miss and love. You miss that? Oh yeah. I, I don't at all. I love, I love the first lap of motocross race. What? What's I, wrong with you? I don't know. I just, I love it. Like I want to retire, battle for that every inch. People, are, people yeah. retires people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just like it. I like being aggressive on the opening You're lap and crazy. and racecraft and outsmarting people. Like I like racing with people for that respect, just because it's like a chess match. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Noted. So, which I would imagine XC is very much like that too, with your fitness and planning your moves and your st- yeah. strategy. But I've never been at the top end of an XC race to really know what, you know, if there's anything happening at the end of the race. So. <laughs> oh, hey. Um, <laughs> at the end of the race, <laughs> if your eyeballs are blowing out oh, your yeah. head, right? I'm like struggling. <laughs> like I'm giving it all I got, and I'm, my tongue's in the spokes. Yeah, blacking out. So like, are, are we thinking? any other analog bikes at this moment no just a slalom bike just slalom okay so you're liking this gravity fed situation i think so i think that's what i'm into yeah um okay then what is okay so i know previously we were talking like a couple bmes what are we yeah looking now i think now well there's the new southwest downhill series in california and i just got a downhill bike so i'm going to try to do all four of those um, I even got like Airbnbs booked for a couple of them and I can bring my wife and kids. So we're excited for that. I'm going to go do the, uh, New Jersey round of the pro downhill series. Oh, so that's a trip. Yeah. But dude, the flights were super cheap out of LAX. I had some sky miles and I had a credit. So I'm going to bring my wife and son. I'm going to get to take her to New York city. I'm going to take my son to a Mets Dodgers game in New York. And he's a huge Dodgers fan and the, the mountain, which oh, is it Mount Vernon? that that track or something whatever it's called but they have a water park they have all kinds of things so like they could do stuff while we're there so we'll fly in we got a cabin we'll stay at the race for three days i'll get the race we'll go to new york we'll go to a baseball game it's a great family trip and oh shit yeah so that's kind of the next one that's next month so i like to always have something on the schedule because honestly that's what keeps me getting up in the morning and doing sit-ups and (laughs) eating right right at this age you pack on the pounds quick so (laughs) Um, Got to stay active. Okay. Uh, your challenger with Pulp. Uh, who was e-biking first? You or him? Oh, uh, Steve probably started e-biking first. And honestly, it's helped Steve Lee lose 30, 40, 50 pounds maybe. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the guy is way thinner. And, you know, he just rides. He lives in Vegas, so his trails are pretty boring to me. Yeah. They're just kind of XC trails. But he pedals, I would say, four days a week at least. And, really? And, dude, the guy's lost so much weight. So 
I think that's one of the best parts about e-bikes is you can get so many more people together and and riding bikes and you know riding with each other different skills different fitness levels oh my god what's up rob's here more moto guys yeah we got rob salcedo oh sorry my mic is a little hot right now but uh, uh we got rob salcedo hopping on uh liet now but moto side but look at him with, look at him with his with his uh team solitaire hat dude it's gotta, gotta represent i bet yes. you I, I might be the only yes. person that knows what that hat is here <laughs> maybe that's maybe. right i was walking around and everybody's like looking at like what the heck yeah hey but. so how about this you new mountain biker both moto guys but he's old mountain biker he is. like and we're talking about just the traveling and the shit salcedo is part of the reason why i'm into mountain biking really like this boy took he got shifted over to the mountain biking side at bell and was like yo we need a guy <laughs> and i was like all right well i mean i'll get a mountain bike start doing <laughs> shit he's taking me to other countries we're going to all this Love shit it. and i'm like it fucking was crazy like but I, I mean talk about it rob like where did your you were mountain biking before moto yeah absolutely so you know obviously a long time fox guy from 94 to 14 and and i started riding mountain bikes in high school so that would be the late 80s to some of you younger <laughs> folks oh so the bikes are uh, about the same <laughs> <laughs> which of course yeah the, the bikes have definitely come a long way but you know back then um you had to really it, love it then, I feel like. Yeah, it was, well, I mean, it, you didn't know any better, right? Had, like a good bike was a... three-by or two-by in the front? Like. Oh, three-by, hardtail, <laughs> with, with, with the, you know, four-inch travel fork. What's a three-by mean? <laughs> what's that mean? <laughs> he doesn't know this? I, what's a, what's no a three-by? That's, <laughs> that's how fresh he's into this sport. So Super front fresh. derailleur, three chain rings. Oh, yeah, so you're shifting yes. like a road bike. Yes, but like three chain rings. Okay. So there was a tiny chain ring. Yeah. So your cassette was was like a medium size, okay. and then it was a small, medium, and big chain ring. Okay. So front derailleur, three by system, which is very old, of course. Yeah, like it, it, <laughs> nobody uses it anything no. even a two by <laughs> anymore. If you showed up with that on the yeah. local trail, they'd be yeah. like, "What? What the fuck?" Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, downhill at the time, you know, this was like during the Norbert uh, Race Series days in, in the U.S., which was the biggest, you know, series in the U.S. at the time. Um, we got a lot of global guys come over and stuff. But, you know, back then it was, you know, I was at Fox. So when I came onto Fox, I was working, you know, kind of my way up through 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 Fox. And I was always a mountain biker. And um, Todd Hicks, who, you, yeah. you know, Todd, he was, you know, a longtime race team manager for, yeah. for Fox. Um, he was handling bike back then so he i was going to the races just to go race of course expert level just i was going on my own dime to go race and uh, i had just got into uh the sales department at fox and on the bike side and i was racing just the the west coast stuff so the, there was a, a race at uh, big bear and at mammoth those are the two big norbert west coast yeah. ones so i would just go there and race the expert class and and of course I, I met all the guys that we sponsored at the time, Brian Lopes and like all, all those guys. And, and uh, so I knew him. And then Todd literally just started like giving me gear. Hey, take, take, you know, you're going to the race, t take gear. And so it just kind of like evolved into at the time when I came on to shift later yeah. as a team manager, he was really kind of the guy that got me into that role because he was like, yeah, you could do this. You, no problem. It's moto. Yeah. But I, I'd been with the company for a long time already. So, you know, and, and so he didn't knew I had like, the relationship skills and all that stuff to kind of build the team and stuff and and yeah it was it was awesome so, but like all right you guys have known each other for a while um, yeah, i think that's when i met rob was he at, when he was at shift that shift okay yeah. so then they were doing you okay where did you know when they were doing like all the ri oc riding you're on not, you're not oc you guys i'm on, on the other side of the mountain so i'm always, in uh always well been. i'm born and raised in florida so okay. I'm, i moved to california for a job at pro circuit in october 2008 I've rented in Irvine for a bit. I've lived in Riverside for a bit, but now we're so how, Marietta is where homeless. How were you not on the? Because okay, they were getting me on these group rides, the Fox group rides, and you're riding Laguna. How, I've heard about not, these. Okay, no, 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 no I don't know. I was uh, I would only do whatever I needed to do to be better on my motorcycle. So I was a road bike guy, and I uh, didn't enjoy they it. They were even doing that. Were you part of some of no, those? No, because I didn't live around them by then. Like yeah, I didn't. I didn't. No. 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 Wow. Okay. And yeah. for a while, like I mean, I went to. Out of high school, I took a year off and tried the pro thing for a bit and saw that I was like, I'm okay. I can make all the races, but I ain't going to be able to buy a house the way I'm finishing. <laughs> so I was like, I need to do something different. <laughs> so, yeah, I started working on bikes, and I got good at that, and that was what I was into. And, yeah, I don't know. 
it kind of all went to the wayside for a while because I had to, I went to college. I just yeah, I just uh, I I wasn't and I mean I grew up in Florida. There's no mountain biking. There's no mountain Florida. biking. I had one and I went for a little bit to like train for motocross. But I was like, this sucks. It's I called like, cross country. It's yes, <laughs> it is. It's just flat. I was <laughs> like, this sucks. Country. I'll just ride my road bike. Yeah, it's called fucking gravel. <laughs> out there. of the I'll ride oh. my road bike out of the house instead drive an hour to ride on this flat dirt with a route every once in a while. It wasn't any fun for <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. So wow, I'm 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 kind of amazed that if you had that connection and known I, I kind of figured you knew each other but i didn't know you know right but like the fact that you guys didn't do the yeah the we, OC haven't rides. we haven't rode together i, I just live separate. together no and he's he's lived up north for a while yeah, and, so and um but we've talked about it before we're like we gotta get together and ride and i just met one of rob's best friends praxin downhill today that started <laughs> with him in the warehouse at fox he said Shut and now up. he's your neighbor yeah. And I hit it off with the guy. Like, we've been doing laps oh, on downhill that, together. Yeah. <laughs> We're ta- is that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So, so that, so Leo, who, who you met, okay. is um, back during that time, during the Norba series, was one of the guys that rode for Fox. Okay. And he was like a regional pro r- really fast. And, and like, he he won the Sea Otter uh, back in the day, like, you know, years and years ago. And, and yeah. And so I've knew, known him since then, and then he moved away. I don't even know what year it was. It was a long time ago, and he's lived in, in Sacramento area for probably 20 years now. And, and just randomly, I uh, last year, I think, was uh, in – I live in El Dorado Hills, and uh, I was down in Folsom, w- walked into a Whole Foods, and I, I came walking out. <laughs> And he was walking in, and he like looked at me, and, I, and he was like, "Rob," I'm like, "Hey, what?" And it turns out he lives one exit from me, like yeah. six minutes away. No way. So yeah, so we've been riding. His his son uh, rides moto, so I sponsor him, you know, with Liat uh, on the moto side, and he's a ripper mountain biker as well. So um, yeah, it's 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 <laughs> cool. Now you know, I, I come from from here from NorCal, and and I've had the privilege of riding in Santa Cruz, you know, pretty much my whole life. Yeah. And um, so when I hold on, have you been to Santa Cruz? No, or? no, I've already heard that. Your buddy told me he's like, you haven't been to Santa Cruz. I was like, no. Do I need to go? <laughs> well, do you, do. you definitely <laughs> need to go. It, it's oh. it's um, been to Italy, but it hasn't been to Santa Cruz. <laughs> it's 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 really good. It's it's just sure. one of the spots. It's like a World Cup or a, a world class level riding location yeah, globally. You know, it's like everyone's bike has been tested there. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's your bike probably, probably had some yeah. development down and that's where Santa Cruz is from where Specialized is from right yeah, yeah Specialized I mean, from Morgan Hill but yeah. you, a lot of yeah. the guys live there and, and, de- and er, tested there for a long time and um, it's just the, the trails are real real good cool yeah. and there's kind of two little different zones in Santa Cruz and uh, if you're from there you kind of know where those are and, and, <laughs> and so you gotta really kind of you know look at this guy it's Corey hard over I, here he's, I need a, he's not gonna tell you on the on the show <laughs> someone's maybe watching this oh show. okay we can't tell no 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 this we, is a we, locals we, only it's situation here you know don't don't be fucking with the trails can't find them on trail force no no no, no. no. <laughs> it's it's uh you know it's the, the trails are not, not really the trail legal, force so. you got yeah <laughs> <laughs> So, like that, yeah. you know, uh, just, just recently, like uh, two and a half years ago, we ended up moving up, you know, outside of Hangtown there in El Dorado Hills. And um, I had uh, known a couple guys that I'd sponsored through Bell, some like local kids that are from there, you know, regional pro guys that are r- real fast. And, and uh, they were like, oh, there's good stuff up here, you know. And so when I moved up there, they kind of showed me the stuff that they had built throughout the years. And, and I was like, okay, like this is... This is solid. I mean, one thing for me, I get poison oak real bad. Uh (laughs) So riding in Santa Cruz in the spring is not good. In summer is it's just everywhere. So I I mean, I've gotten it my whole life, and and so up there in where I live in El Dorado Hills, you still get the oak, but just the next level up, like going up into the Sierras, where there's a couple zones and really good trail systems. Um, it's above the the elevation that poison oak grows. Okay. So (laughs) it's like, yeah. So I, I love it. Great. Yeah. Your buddy was telling me too. He's like, y- our trails are pristine. Like the berms are perfect. Like yeah. They're Coming from so. SoCal and what you ride. I even dude, you haven't even came up by me. I You're haven't. fucking up, dude. I know. I dude. know. I need to. It's like all I do is work, and then when there's no time for work, I have a trip planned, and I have you know. So it's like it's hard to. I need to maybe prioritize it more, but you know how it is. You know, yeah, how it is. Like, uh, it's easier to get to Ontario Port and fly out to Italy than it is to honestly <laughs> drive across. To it honestly yeah. is. Yeah. It, it is. Just go. It's not that far. People think Europe's so far. It's really not. <laughs> this guy. Yeah. It's not that far. This guy. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what is far. South Africa. 
Yeah. <laughs> have you been there? I have, yes. Have. Yes, many what times. Is that and, and, you know, obviously now that's where Liat yeah. yeah. is, is based. So um, so I go there quite a bit, and, and I'm actually going in here in July. Um, and then again later in the year, November. So I'm, it's like so I'll go pretty much like two to three times a year. Wow. So uh, it's it's a beautiful spot. It's it's killer, but it is a very, very long flight. I bet. Like Jeez. going to Europe is, is long. Like you go yeah. 10-hour flight, you're like, oh, I'm over it. Well, the, yeah. Europe is halfway. I know. Then you <laughs> got to go another 10 or is 11 hours. Is it direct? Or is uh, direct? Actually, I, I found a direct from Atlanta, and that's what I've been doing lately is really? I go to so Atlanta and then 15 hours to Cape Town, mm-hmm. uh, it, which is 15 hours is... Yeah, a long flight. That's yeah. a long one. I've been to Australia yeah. a couple times, 19, and that's right? a that's 20. a long yeah. one. Yeah, South yeah. Africa. Whew. When you fall asleep twice and you still got like <laughs> five hours left, and you're yeah. like, "What the heck?" <laughs> I've watched like, twelve <laughs> movies already. <laughs> Where? Oh, how we're yeah. not there yet? Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. No, no, it's it's cool. Though. I, I I dig it. You know, this the new thing is is rad, and and kind of you know I was when I left Bell, um, I was kind of you know stay at home dad for a couple of years. So, uh, hey, what's up, man? What's up? And. Uh, you know, kind of missing Moto, watching Supercross on the couch yeah. like a normal person. And, and so when this opportunity came about, it was cool to kind of, you know, get back to the races and, and stuff. So it's been awesome. Very cool. And it's so good to ride quite a bit. So, yeah. I mean, all right. So you're an enduro guy. You're an enduro guy. But downhill originally? Yeah. yeah. I tried. I tried. Now it's enduro. I mean, like, but tell him, or I mean, we can even talk about it. Like, you're getting into enduro at the right fucking time. I am? Oh yeah, yeah. Like it's had a kind of a bit of re- resurgence. Well, dude, they huh? used to have to use fucking Allen tools to drop the seat post when they got to the top. <laughs> oh, you have, you have no idea, bro. You have no idea. <laughs> Tell them just you know, like you got in at the right time. Maybe so, that's why I'm into it. It's put, uh, the only thing I will say to kind of really put it in perspective is, you can take an enduro, like a specialized enduro, or I- any company's 170 travel bike. If you could take that back in time mm-hmm. to the Norba race days, like, the, <laughs> yeah. you, dude, twenty nine inch wheels, long travel, the right geo, like you could probably win races on those bikes. <laughs> like, and there was a at that time there was a big separation. There was a downhill bike, and there was no like trail category, right? right y- it right. was like not until later when they started coming out like four inch travel bikes and stuff. But it was like, you know, even when enduro like really started to come around and the travel and the geo started to come around, the tires weren't there yet, so there wasn't like trail casings and stuff it was like right. downhill or cross country casing yeah. tires yeah and it was like ghetto tubeless systems back in the day you know like but not like legit like it is now yeah and so it, it's I, I agree with his statement that you it, you came at the <laughs> at the right time <laughs> that what we have right now in in across the whole industry as far as like just offerings of bikes and geos and and the, like different travels like you can get literally anything, anything. yeah and it's it's really good. So, what in, what industry do you like better then? Oh man, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, obviously, I'm I'm a mountain biker, so the answer to the question is definitely bike. Yeah. But I've been doing moto for so long that it's like that's I'm like, you know. You have a love uh, for that as well. Yeah, problem, absolutely. Obviously. You know, yeah. I, you know, obviously, spend a lot of time at the races, <laughs> um, pro and amateur all, all across. You know, just like you guys, and, and um, so that that is. For me, where I'm at right now, especially here at Liat, it's like, uh, actually, came, when I came on, I, I, I was doing moto and bike for the you first year. You get a year. nice mix where you're at, right? Yeah, it was crazy, right? Because the two schedules and, yeah. and being on top of each other as on my calendar was crazy. So between all the bike events and all the, like, Supercross and am- Amateur Nationals and all that stuff was, was crazy. But um, we just hired a bike guy, so I'm back now doing moto. Mm-hmm. Um, I... I would have chosen bike if I had the choice because selfishly because I'm, I'm a mountain biker, but I think you know for me and our brand, uh, moto needs you like the most help, yeah. right? It means yeah. and like bike for our brand is very established as a brand within that and, and moto, um, we we got yeah. you got some work to do so uh, very established as a protection brand all that stuff, but you know we have a lot of stuff we make helmets, goggles, boots, gear, all that stuff. So there's a lot of opportunity which is what I saw to help and so that I I chose the moto side. Yeah. So yeah. I love that crossover that I have at my job now with Renthal. So like previously I was at Pro Taper, which is a big mess, obviously with private equity, and all kinds of things. But Renthal is is family owned and like our meetings aren't about like spreadsheets. It's it's about. Yeah, like we we bought the brand back from 
from private equity and I want to say it was 2017, 18 or something. It was right after Tucker Rocky went through that bankruptcy, um, which I learned a ton about through all that. And uh, yeah, it's just it's just so nice being at a place where we talk about the rate we talk about racing and things like that where where i was before it was private equity and it was analysis paralysis and i had a new boss it seemed like every four or five months i had a new director and then you're explaining your job and what you do and like over and over and then doing it his way now for a while and it's like we're not getting anywhere yeah i was like i give me enough rope to hang myself is what i want i was <laughs> yeah. like let me try to hang myself i promise you i won't and but you know that's just the ebbs and flows of the industry and yeah i don't know but i'm super thankful to be at rental it's a great brand and i like working with our mountain bike guy and he's educated me a lot on the industry a little bit too because i'm so damn green so um yeah it's good fit. you know it, the way i look at it like to s second answer to a question is you know th the reason i myself would choose bike is because I've been to every Supercross. I've been to every outdoor. I've been to every amateur national. What did I say? I, uh, and, and, you know, when I look at, and, and it's great. I love doing it. It's, it's awesome, especially I love going to the amateur races and stuff, dealing with the families and the kids and, like, all the, you know, mm -hmm. the growth, their growth through their path through their, their careers and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I love but that. Let's be real. But you, I'd rather spend seven days at Whistler than seven days at Loretta. Exactly. Right. So <laughs> that's that was my exact that's point. You, you, when you look at that, and then you look at what even you do on the bike side. Even if it's the same weather. Yeah. That's, this is weather. what we, yeah. you and I said. Yeah. It, it's, yes. it's locations and yeah. places that are pretty and yeah. nice. Yeah. And like I said, I, I, I don't want to go to Unadilla anymore and Bread Bud yeah. and, and yeah. sit in a field. And, and I've seen and it. I've done it. Like, it doesn't... I don't know if you've talked to many people inside this industry in cycling. They literally are like, no, I want to go to that. And I'm like, you're fucking nuts <laughs> because they've never been <laughs> they've never yeah, been yeah. and i'm like you're gonna go and you're not gonna want to come like cycling has the most in it i don't know but to me it's like i can do the downhill get back drink a beer yes while watching it go down and they go back out yeah yeah, yeah it's so different i mean i th they probably want to get it is I mean, we all take it for granted but like when you get up close to the action of supercross or motocross like those those guys are the some of the gnarliest athletes on this planet Absolutely. no one could tell me different yeah i know for sure they are and and um like the top top level is very very impressive but we're we're jaded we've done it a lot and seen it a lot so yeah to me the mountain bike side is it's just pretty it's an adventure it's different and i i appreciate it i mean i took this guy on a trip i don't know a couple of years ago and uh we went to leger france okay. for what like a week and a half a week yeah and yeah. uh we you know rode every day and it, we were. I was at a. We went to a media thing for, for a launch of a new helmet, on the bike side when it was when I was at Bell. And then we stayed for Crankworks, which was there. And we just literally just rode. It was so awesome. Like it. And, and like we were talking about that while we were there. We're like we. It doesn't motor, happen like, on a moto trip, no. right? Oh. Or like a moto no, trade no. show. No, no one. No one starts cracking beers at a moto trade no. show at four o'clock like yeah. they do here. No. Or like the everyone will shut their booth down oh, and go to fire them. You'd be fired. Yeah, you would. You'd be fired. You would. Mm -hmm. Where it's like it's different in that respect yeah. like yeah. They, you know it's weird to see, is it kind of weird okay to you guys like to me and i've always tried to explain it cycling is bigger it's yeah. way bigger and yeah. there's more money in it but like it's also more core is that maybe it like because like they're cracking beers they're hanging out i don't know i'm maybe not the word i'm looking for this weird I, word I, right? honestly you know i think I'm it's saying? the style of racing because like Except There's for you showing up maybe. full fucking ready to go. Well, show up, buddy. If you want to race, like I'm gonna try. I don't, I don't know. What, I don't know. What people, you don't want me to not try. Looking at this table <laughs> right now, the the total opposite here, Spencer is. Uh, I just he just throws the bike and goes. Yeah. You over here? No, I can't do that. I can't jump on somebody else's bike. Like I gotta have my <laughs> levers. And all, I, I can't do that. I've never no. been able to do that. No, it's 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 Spencer's complete opposite. Yeah. See, he's a pure athlete oh, I, I'm pure. A, and a, a wannabe yes. athlete I need to have everything oh, this is ironed out James Stewart talent level on a yeah bike he is very yeah, talented I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far <laughs> no. <laughs> don't mind me I've just kind of walked up and I'm sitting in just absorbing all of this I haven't <laughs> had much to say yet. but it's interesting hearing all of this as, as a whole because I, Austin and I were having the same conversation earlier today actually was it earlier today about this the state of the sport and what the comparisons and the contrasting moments of, of the two sports are and and a mountain biking definitely is has a special place in in the world but then also i'm grew up in the moto world and have gone to most of the races i haven't sure. spent 10 days at loretta's but there's still something so special about the moto world that i 
hold so close to my heart. And, I, and there's something that I wish we could take from the moto world and put it into a little bit of the mountain bike world because it's it's so core. There is no there is no like real fan base from a mountain bike perspective that can come in with their wife and their kids sit at a stadium or something and and have fun sure they can set up these camps and and let the whole family run loose but there's no way to really spectate the sport in a good way and i think that that is something that sure cyclocross might or or even like a a downhill world cup with full tv coverage kind of tries to band-aid that but it's it's just super interesting and it's interesting hearing your guys' perspectives because yeah you're living in both worlds all of us are for the most part and we we bounce back and forth but yeah it's just curious and I guess that's what makes Supercross so popular exactly. right because we can we can Definitely. see it all that's and it's I'm in saying. big venues yeah and it feels like this big extravagant thing when you're selling out football stadiums yep. that's like that's a big deal yeah and you so, you, can, you can hoax the girlfriend into coming because it's clean or whatever yeah she can wear her heels all day you yeah. say that but like how many people are here this week. Yeah, but this place is packed. Yeah, this 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 is absolutely packed. But ninety nine percent of these people are are participating in some way. Yeah, for working, themselves, or... which I think is a good thing, and it's a great thing that they're here to do their own race and yeah. then also walk around and see all the shiny things. But also, but also, um, there isn't any like other than dual slalom. Nobody's going and watching the pro XC race really, or going and watching the pro downhill race. They're just here to camp and have a friend, have fun with their with their family. That's what I've tried to say. Good and like bad. Get a discount bad. on some products. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> some free shit. Yeah. Swag. Well, is it yeah. maybe because like we and Moto, uh, there's just this grind of a series. We you got to load it up, pack it up, go. Got load it up, pack it up, go. And this there kind of isn't. There is and there isn't. I don't know. Like I mean, World Cups kind of have that a little Tour, bit. Road bikes, Tour de France. Okay. For sure. Tour de France yeah. does. Even okay. Crazier. Yeah. But I mean, I guess we're not we're not fucking with that. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I do love the family aspect of motocross, and that's what I'll always remember. Like, my dad would shut his company down in the summer every two weeks because we'd go to Ponca and Loretta's. That was our family vacation, and I went to Loretta's twelve years in a row so, growing up from so '95 to whatever. Two, uh, it's it's a lot of a lot of years. I've spent a lot of years there. But honestly, that was some of the best years of my life, hanging out with my mom and my dad and. Yeah. And going racing so i don't know if it's that it feels like mountain biking is more independent i don't know if that's correct but it feels that way so that's one thing i really loved about i love about our sport is how it's you're a family core trying to take on the world essentially yeah <clears throat> yeah that makes sense i will say yeah. there's nothing like supercross <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, it, it, that's what it's I'm saying. Hard. It that's is saying. very very going to supercross i mean yeah we, we go but as like even if just as a regular fan like going like we get to go to every round, right? Yeah. So like, you know, it's it's different than someone just get to go into their one round that they get in their region, whether it's NorCal, SoCal, wherever it ends up being. Well, SoCal gets three, yeah. but <laughs> you know what I mean? Like more a, than that back east, year, right? whatever, yeah. St. Louis yeah. or whatever round it is, they get one round yeah. and they go and, and, and it is it is rad. But you know, it's funny because I got, I got a lot of friends that hit me up all the time and they're just like, man, I want to go on the track. I'm like, no, you don't. No, you don't. I mean, you can't see, sh- can't see shit. Yeah. <laughs> Like you, you literally can't see anything. Yeah. Like oh, they like go you by sit down low. Now, yeah. Now, you're, now there. you're essentially at a downhill mountain bike race. You <laughs> see what's <laughs> yeah. in front of you. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. yeah you, you watch them go by, then you turn around, you look at the big screen, and you see what's happening. <laughs> yeah. I, I do love though how yeah. they have these uh, track walks now, though, and gives yeah. the normie people a chance to go down and walk the track because that puts it in perspective. Yeah. Like when you see guys blitz whoops from the stands, you're like, oh, that's easy. But then you go walk through them, and you see they're four foot deep with ruts and edges Cupped and out cups, and, oh, and, yeah. oh, and you're yeah. like, how the hell oh, yeah. are they going through this? Or like just going through rhythm sections with yeah. like. With gnarly with landing and ruts and, ruts and like oh, people yeah. have no idea how gnarly that is. No. Well, I'll tell you who does know now who for the first time: <laughs> the fans of Daytona Supercross. <laughs> 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 because so the track. Uh, that's a shame. <laughs> Cutting off Anderson. <laughs> now, now their fans aren't going to be loud on the apron anymore <laughs> no, because of never. that. Like yeah. ugh, that was dangerous. I know. Yeah. Anderson almost ran a chick over. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Let it happen. (laughs) Let it happen. So, Spencer, this guy tells me you're racing four events on one bike. Yes, sir. How do we have we done so far? Uh, so we are about three eighths of the way in, I would say. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Does that mean we got eight events? No, that I'm just thinking in percentage. Okay. Percentage uh, Percentage of effort. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. But we raced the enduro yesterday. Got six. We're we're 
mind you, this is the Epic Evo, so it's 130 up front, 120 rear. It's kind of the do-it-all bike in my daily driver. Yeah. Um, I, in my opinion, the mid-travel bikes like that are the most fun to ride. Um, so we did enduro, got sixth, which is okay. My goal was top five. I missed that by 0.4 seconds, which, Damn it. whatever. I mean, it is what it is. Got a, we got more races ahead of us, mm -hmm. but then we qualified. We did uh, dual slalom qualification, and and mind you, I don't think we can see this, the track, but they we've been getting a lot of moisture up Dude, here obviously yeah. and i was talking to kyle Strait, the guy who's in charge of building the course the last few years <laughs> he said they got a tractor stuck in the mud up on the hill and they just said screw it i'm sorry you're gonna have to work with this to <laughs> handed it to Seattle unfinished sick and it is <laughs> it is so <laughs> unfinished tight it is yeah we went through like there it. on the enduro and i was like yeah they didn't mow it at least Dude. no yeah exactly like, what about that rock garden that was muddy with weeds up to this side so that's not in the dual slalom course thank the lord <laughs> but that was a disaster right yeah, i was like was... i am crawling through yeah. here but luckily it's a it it's a, a short crazy. stage so i was like i can't lose much but isn't it like a berm where you don't even go through the whole berm you like go halfway through and have to jump three, over the berm or something exactly the the one part of the f track that they finished <laughs> three quarters through the berm you have to peel out and go left and it's gnarly and it's <laughs> So so the goal was all along was, all right, we're going to just try to put her in the show. If we can get in the top 32, I'm happy. The bike's not really set up for it. I haven't changed anything. No tire changes. I, I increased the tire pressure because I was rolling the tires in the hard corners but uh, and then pumped up the fork and shock. But I made it. I qualified 25th. Atta boy. So that's <laughs> tomorrow night, 4.30, tomorrow evening to afternoon, whatever, and then Cross country is Sunday morning at eight o'clock. Oh, but don't you have downhill on Sunday also? Downhill starts at nine forty-five a.m. Oh, this is a bit of a so I have an issue. hour and forty-five minutes to complete the XC course and get to the start hut for downhill. <laughs> You're gonna be tired. I, 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 I'm one. I'm gonna be shot. Yeah. And two. I'm probably gonna still be in my lycra with the weight weenie <laughs> visorless helmet. I don't know. I might sh I might just throw a full face on and just run go, it like yeah, that. Just, there you just go. Just go full face and go old school, bro. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know. I'm all about the full face. I yeah. sometimes get made fun of, but yeah. I've knocked my teeth out already once, oh. so I full face it every yeah. time. Right and dude, so. I was out here practicing stages three and four for the enduro, and I smoked the guy head on. No way. He was. I was practicing the stage, and it's a multi-directional chair rail, and he didn't look, yeah. I guess. Dude, I... I'm so lucky I'm not hurt more, but wow. oh. fucking head on into this guy. Destroyed, no a, destroyed a brand new helmet, visor gone, like pretty gnarly. Got Holy very lucky. Smoke. Was he okay? Yeah. I don't know. Like I went right. He went right. I destroyed his fork, but my bike was okay. My body was okay. I got wow. very lucky. Wow. Dang. So what about you? Are you you doing anything else? I have uh, a downhill on Sunday. How did Enduro go? I won the Enduro. Okay. Yeah, Sick. So that right was on. cool. There we go. We got a winner up here. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah, sick. so downhill, I, I, that was my goal coming here is, like, I want to try to win both my classes. I have no idea if I'm even going to be close in downhill. Yeah. Never really, never raced here in downhill. Well, you saw the course. But yeah, I feel like I go down board. it pretty good. I'm doing all the jumps. Yeah. I'm 40, so I, I don't know if there's a bunch of other 40-year-olds doing yeah. them. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> no, I, I know. I, I watch. I raced at Vail Lake the other oh, yeah, week yeah. or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uploaded to Strava, and there's Paul Paravinos right at the top of the list almost. <laughs> really? Yeah, dude. I'm like, nice. damn, all that's right. That's my local spot. I, yeah. love, I love Vail. Hey, yeah. man, whatever. You're, you're, you're going good. So that's, Thank you. that's sick. That's awesome. What about you, Rob? I, I'm sorry. You guys have probably been here for a bit. I wasn't a part of this conversation. No, I'm all right. I'm going to check out, actually. I want to go watch uh, my buddy race this E mountain bike, E or XC thing or whatever. So yeah. it was nice chatting yes. with you boys. Yep. Thanks for the time, Austin. Right on. Spencer. We'll see you around. Cheers, guys. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, bud. No, no yeah. racing for me, dude. No. I'm, I uh, actually just came here last minute. I was going to I was going to Nashville, and, and uh, I have a photo shoot next week for on the uh, moto side. So yeah. I decided to, to just come here, pull a tear off on the on the Tennessee trip, and and come here and um, spend the day just kind of seeing everybody. And, and got uh, Suns baseball game tomorrow, so Sick. just headed back. So right I've on. just been cruising around. I actually got to stop at my old stomping grounds here at santa cruz yesterday yeah. and get How some laps in oh man real good you miss that at all very much so <laughs> yeah. yeah it was uh um i mean couldn't the dirt couldn't have been better they got some rain you know over the weekend last week so it was it was pretty prime time i, oh. I everybody was here already so i kind of did some laps by myself but luckily i know the place and and uh got in got in some good stuff and i had built the trail just before i i left 
before I moved away, so um, got some laps on it. It was it was real good. Okay, sick. And are you going to TDS next weekend? Uh, I might go on Saturday. Yeah, cool. I think uh, it's been a while. I mean, you know, come, obviously it's been a while since I've been here and not have had to manage a booth. Yeah. So today was was pretty cool. Like just cruising around, kind of on my own schedule and stuff. And yeah. I stayed here with Austin last night, so. Uh, it was cool, but and same with TDS. You usually go as a sponsor and stuff, and, and throughout the years. And so, if I go, I'll just go on Saturday and cruise around and cool. and get to see everybody. So, Sick. yeah, right on. I'm I'm unfortunately having to miss that, and I'm super super oh, pumped about that. I, I'm doing some. So I got a working on getting a stunt job right now for oh, okay. at Universal Studios. So. I'm uh yeah I gotta be gotta be down there unfortunately and I told the Sanchez I'm like hey I'm super sorry this this hurts my soul telling you this but I'm not gonna be able to come but it's a bummer it's the best event Man, of the year but, that is uh, I mean honestly like hands down that's one of the best events yep. I've ever been to it's I it's, know. it's that area is amazing the trail system is top notch you know obviously the family is super awesome like they're just a great great family just um the whole zone the whole vibe the whole event everything about it is is awesome so uh definitely bummed i'm not gonna be there for the whole weekend yeah whatever you'll get a you'll get a little taste of it and i'll be i'll be jealous of that but yeah it's the best i was talking to crank brothers guys earlier today and they were like so what's what's if we were to go to an event what would we do and i'm like tds i don't even care don't worry about setting a booth up or anything just go yeah hang out be in the vibe because 9.8 out of the 10 people that go there i guarantee you will tell you tds is the best event ever and it's it's sick it, it really is it really is the best yeah man I, I i do miss going i mean i used to go there just kind of for the event but i've also been there just kind of doing some photo shoots and stuff throughout the years and yep. and uh and riding and, and yeah so now i actually live not far from there yep um and you know casey moved away yeah. so he, you know it's like um i i would try to go a couple times and i just couldn't couldn't make it and then they ended up moving so um yeah we'll see but you know it's not it's not too far yeah so. un- unfortunately he's not even showing up to tds this year he's moving again and he's got oh, really? family moving so yeah he's not even gonna make it but but it's good it's still gonna be great so i'm, That's right. I'm jealous. austin's come he's been out there he did some stuff out there at the TDS, yeah. yeah. Oh, dude. Okay, I kind of have a story for that. Okay. They, uh, I got like the first day in, and I don't know who has been to TDS, who hasn't been to TDS, but the uh, Poison Oak. Yeah, yeah. And oh, I it's, didn't, it's real. Qu- <laughs> didn't quite understand. There's a whole trail called Oak Shaft, and they're telling me about <laughs> oh, it. Oh yeah. And it ruined. Oh yeah. What's up, man? How's um, it? Yeah. Oh, normal mountain bikers here. Uh, heads, headphones. Oh for my man. All fancy. Here, um. Man. But yeah, so I'm talking about TDS here, and my my experience there is, uh, and and it ruined me. Like the poison oak was brutal, uh, totally. And I, I had a chick come out and like visit me for it and stay the night Ooh. or whatever. And I, and she like didn't understand. I was like, no, like we gotta we gotta take a shower after spending all day out here. Like this is <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, everything like that. But besides that whole joke. Uh, the next day, like after they had told me the stories, everyone is just grinding on trees and shorts, getting all through it, deep in it, and I'm like, "Oh, they're fucked." Oh they yeah. Are fucked. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the same. I'm tiptoeing around. I would go to the, uh, uh, what's the, what's the waterfall section called? Uh, vigilante. The, yeah, vigilante. vigilante. I, I go to vigilante right there where everyone stands on the gully, yeah, and yeah. I'm like tiptoeing around the rocks, and you're right, people are on the trees climbing around. I'm just like looking like, oh man. You're just yeah. along for the ride. Oh, yeah. Some no, people you, don't get it. Oh. Yeah. I never did until like a year ago. Now all of a sudden I get poison oak like crazy. It, once you get it once, it, yeah. it fucks you up. So, and then you're just like stuck with it for years. Yeah, supposedly your immunity goes away slowly. I but. can't. It's coming back for me. Really? Uh, yeah. No, seriously. Like it's that fuck because of Rob. It ruined me on the this R dog shoot. I didn't even know what <laughs> I didn't even know what oak, <laughs> poison oak was. And then it just wrecked me wrecked me yeah yeah it, you know it's funny because if you Rob's don't live fault. on the east coast and have poison ivy or on the west coast has poison oak like you, you kind of don't know right yeah. <laughs> but it's it is i mean obviously any outdoor sport but obviously mountain biking you just it's one of the things that you just got to deal with i yeah. mean you're, you're in the woods riding through the you know the oak is hanging over the trails and you're getting it on your arms or whatever your legs and or even on your bike and i'm oh man it is it is definitely 
for not not for me. I'm, I'm yeah. highly against it. Yeah. Well, we got Sebastian here now, aka the normal mountain biker. Sebastian, do you so, know? He's in the booth. This Rob. is Rob Stelzio. Yeah, no, no, no. Good to meet you, Rob. How's it? Good to meet you, man. Uh, nice. Liet, Bell, Fox, oh, Shiv. Dang. All right. What, all right. What's, I mean, like pure all the good companies. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> there we go. And I'm sure you've seen Sebastian <laughs> yeah. all all over the good Instagram and interweb and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. I feel like of you guys kind of have, yeah. lived near each other for a second there, yeah. right? You were in Bay Area. Yeah, I was. Was I was in the North Bay. Where were you, Bouts? Uh, I lived in in the South Bay. I worked in in uh, Scotts Valley there, so right, Santa Cruz nice. zone. Nice. I lived in San Jose, but now I live up outside of Sacramento. Oh, cool. On yeah. like the the Auburn side, or are you on the uh, other side? I live in uh, El Dorado Hills. Gotcha, so. gotcha. Very cool. Yeah. That's the beauty. Oh, the foothills are just fat, fantastic. Yeah. I mean, anyone who hasn't been there, like, I mean, you guys, I'm sure, have been there before. It's like, uh, you know, especially I mean, this oh, time of yeah. year. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Right now, it's probably all green and beautiful. Oh, and it's, it's like a fairy tale out there right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we were we were talking TDS. And you went for your first time last year? Uh, so I, second the, time? the first time racing it oh, yeah, was okay. last oh, year, so you've right? you've been there before. I've yeah. been there plenty of times, yeah. Oh, really? yeah. Plenty so, of times? Oh, I didn't know yeah, we, times. So, well, I wouldn't say plenty. I mean, a good handful of times, okay. right? Because, uh, you know, it, uh, a lot of the, the, the good friends of the, of the Sanchez family are like yeah. people like Mark Weir, yep. you know, Mark Osborne, those guys. And I actually grew up with those guys in Marin County. So I already knew them, and there was always kind of a thing where, you know, we knew about TDS 10 years ago, you know, back when it was first starting off, when it was still really, really small. But I didn't actually get a chance to come out until, like, th four years ago, maybe, five years ago. I can't remember exactly when it was. But since then, we've just been going so many times. You know, to go dig, you know, we're so close, right? You know, they have a dig day, we go out. They have a ride day, we go out, you know. And it's been cool getting getting to know the, the Sanchez family and everybody who's been really, really close, you know, within that tight-knit community. And just the trails that they have out there and, like, the, like, like what they've been able to pull off is just insane. You know? what's, what's cool about it, too, is, is you, know, you think about it, if you've never been there, you, you kind of see the videos and stuff and it, and it really looks like you know it's kind of like a private mountain bike park yep. but yeah, it really is the cool thing about it is they have a bunch of neighbors that are all like that go into their properties and stuff yep. it's all and, they, and they're into it they like allow it and, and like yeah. the whole thing so yeah. that that is super cool because that doesn't like that doesn't happen very often yep. no definitely not and no. and uh and yeah I, I mean just the trails are one thing but just when everyone is up there in that camp yeah during the race weekend mm -hmm. like yeah. they have a fire pit that's probably as big as this half this motorhome right here yeah and they, they uh, burn anything it, in that thing too it is <laughs> so awesome. anything you stand yeah. near that thing you're getting some kind of lung disease you oh, know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. oh yeah no it's it's, special. it's a great 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 spot to say the least yeah but, uh, yeah. yeah are you guys racing it are you racing it this year spencer i just oh, was telling rob i at the last minute right i there. cannot go i'm not able oh, to go so i'll be missing no. it. Are you? <laughs> yes i am all right i am indeed go. and all this right. year my goal last year I got my only goal last year was to not die <laughs> and this year <laughs> and, I, and I succeeded and I succeeded I, got, I, I finished the race I did every stage I didn't have any crashes everything was smooth sailing yep. except for the last stage like literally coming around the last corner I nailed my foot on the ground on this rock that was sticking up and I damn near almost hospitalized myself because I, I got <laughs> oh. jolted forward. My back tire came up, like fully bombed out the fork in the process, like completely. I've never seen cranks and pedals that bent in my life before. No way. Like they were no com completely mangled. Whoa. And so I finished the last like 30 feet of the race, like on my front wheel, essentially. No <laughs> like, way. Like sliding. I didn't know that. Was, this? Yeah. was this the last vigilante? One, uh, it, I don't think. Was I don't the, party, the party stage? It was. No, it was it was after that because the party one was the second to last one I believe. Oh, I might be completely wrong about it, so don't quote me on this. Yeah. I just remember it was coming around the last corner, like in that through the creek where you drop in at the bottom. Yeah. And then like literally the finish line was like right there. I <laughs> nailed my Wait. foot on the rock right there. Like oh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not joking. I was coming through the finish line on my front wheel. No way. Yeah. Yeah, hey, I will yeah. say that place has got has Everyone. taken some victims. Yeah. Really? yeah. Seriously. Oh my god. Yeah. It got me last year. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I broke my hand first run in practice last year. Oh, dude, I forgot about Ridiculous. that. Ridiculous. Oh, it's right. gotten Mitch. Oh, yeah. It's gotten uh, Cam Zink. Uh, Cam Zink. Oh, dude. Oh, Cam Zink. Remember that? What oh, happened to Cam? Smokes, dude. Dude. Oh. <laughs> oh. ride. In the, the, in the what, what's that tr the section called? The big rock, I think? rock section? And, and he just got they smoked. They got video of it? Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. He oh, yeah. filleted his knee open like gnarly, oh. dude. It looked like a and shark bit his shin. You could see his it bone. What? It was gnarly, dude. Gnarly. Went right through the yeah. TLD pass. Yeah, he, he was all good, but he 
he uh, he got smoked. I did. Uh, I I won't mention any names, <laughs> but I got s- someone got uh, I know got in, got him into the race, and he went. And uh, same thing. First practice, first trail, goes out and just smokes himself. No. And he, <laughs> dude, he, oh. he was, yeah, just fucked his hand up. He was all messed up. And uh, he, he was like, I, he, it was before I got there, so I show up, and he was like, I'm done. I'm like, what? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I'm not racing. His hand was all messed up. He's like, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm out. And then, like, a couple hours later, like, someone got was took video, so he sent me some screenshots. Of, literally, it was, like, it was the first trail, first run, done. Oh, wow. and I, I think that's happened a lot at that place. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Marco, it, a lot of people have gotten hurt or like wadded themselves there. I, did, it, I had it, no It's idea. proper, dude. Like it's, yeah. it is proper. Yeah. Specialized well, tests some bikes out there, right? Oh, so s- speaking of that, I was gonna, if you're racing this year, <laughs> have you seen that stuff that they built out there? This stuff. Oh, yeah. I've oh, ridden it. Stuff. I've ridden it, dude. It's Well, sick. I attempted to. <laughs> I didn't no actually ride way. it. No, no it's yeah. gnarly, man. Like, it's... it's Downhill it's, track. Yeah, it's a downhill yeah. track. They were... I don't, I'm not exactly sure what the purpose was it f- like for to build it, but I know they did some filming out there because they built that thing uh, in, like... I think it was like four or five days, like yeah, a whole cool. new track. Really? Um, I was talking to Curtis Robinson about that up in up in Canada. He actually was brought down with a crew of people, um, and like I was mind blown. He was kind of giving me some details about it, but the the track is insane, man. Like it's it's something well beyond my ability of riding. I mean, you're 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 coming into some of these corners are like absolute insane g outs. You've got some like road gap type features where you don't even see the ledge it's just all of a sudden you're at such fast speed then you're in the air like soaring 40 <laughs> feet through the air and you're just like <laughs> like it's crazy stuff man what? and yeah and then there's like it's you know a lot of the terrain if you guys you know it's out of tds a lot of it's it's either really rocky yeah. or it's like really nice clay you know like yeah. that foothills clay yeah. right yeah. and uh and they actually had to bring in rocks in some sections to stick them down to make the, t- the track even more gnarly not like it needed to be gnarly but you <laughs> know. What, did, what did they build it for? They built it for something for the World Cup guys, right? Yeah, I'm like pretty sure came. it was like a test something. A test yeah. Track that they wanted because they specialized moved their mountain bike office to Auburn, so they're closer to so the, they're all those right. trails and stuff like that. Yeah. And then yeah, I think they were trying to build something gnarly for when Loic and Finn came out, and then they have something to test on. And then I think they filmed something on it. I don't think we've seen the video no, yet, no. but. Yeah, Which TDS I, is an interesting place, or that the ranch is an interesting place to try to shoot because of the tree cover and it gets so blotchy and stuff. Yeah, it's um, definitely pretty tough out there for sure. Yeah. I know. That, oh no, we're good. We're, I'm good. Thanks, man. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, and that that red dirt is like, yeah, to your point. Yeah. That red clay is is it gets good this time of year. Yeah. It's, oh, know. dude. Yeah. <laughs> this is killing Sorry, me. Now. Spencer, Sorry, Spencer. No, it's all good. <laughs> 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 what was it? Tech- Tech new uh, sponsor, like I think that's hilarious. Stuff. That's sending so stuff. funny. Yeah, no? yeah <laughs> I think they do send stuff. They yeah. do, right? Yeah. yeah. You know what's what's interesting is like you got Tech new, which works fantastic. I'm not trying to say anything here, <laughs> but another option they that's got a little here. Don, do they really? Okay, yeah, maybe I shouldn't say anything, but they I was do, just gonna give a, a budget alternative to Tech new because that stuff is yes, yeah, yeah you know the tricks, Don so but you have to get it like right away. Like if you're out and about, How the fuck yeah. Do, you do that then. Oh no. Yeah. I mean, what I, are you saying? Like, what's the right away? No, I literally will go. will go on rides or be digging in the hills out by me, and I know I'm in Poison Oak. I'll come home and shower with Don soap. Nothing but. I have a blue bottle sitting in my shower for that reason. Not yeah. I'm kidding. Shower with Don, and you know, they you see the commercials of them rubbing the ducks and get all the yeah. oil out of it. That's mm-hmm. what it's doing. It's pulling the oils off your skin, and it works. Oh, yeah. have, have you guys ever heard of uh, Zanfil? Yeah, yeah. Have you Zanfil. Oh, dude, no. When you, you since we're on the oak topic, yeah. that is, I, I, I've been getting oak my entire life, really bad. <laughs> And that's the only thing Techno who does not work for really? me. I, I mean, wow. ju- just personally, uh, I've tried it and used it many times. Uh, Zanful, if if I get it real bad, I go straight. I always have some Zanful bottles. I actually have one in my car right now. <laughs> um, and uh, it is the best thing. I'll have to show you. It, it's like a gritty oak uh Oak oil removal thing. Really? It's, it's pretty dope. Yeah, no it's, it is real good. It sounds like a boner pill or something. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> if you gotta go to the pills, then <laughs> yeah. take your daily dose of Xanfil. <laughs> your wife will love you. <laughs> that's that's the oak shaft. <laughs> that that is the oak shaft. There we go. <laughs> Seriously. Oh my gosh. Now, I mean, the only thing that works for me is the fucking steroids. Wow, yeah. that's hardcore. Yeah, I've I been can't. there. I've yeah. been there, bro. No, you have to get the steroid. 
Get on a trend, dude. The cream or the, <laughs> or the pill? Yeah, the cream. Yeah. Yeah, I've never done the. Oh, no, I've done the pill and the cream. Yeah, what is it, prednisone, I think? Mm-hmm. Nope, can't. I'm allergic to it. Really? Oh, I have no to way. have something else, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm totally fucked. It's, it's yeah, it's, I try to stay away from it. I layer up layers. That's insane. I, I had a, a high school coach. I used to race uh, cross country in high school. And uh, the, one of the coaches told us a story about he used to be a logger. Um, so they would do like logging in, on private, you know, residential properties. Like they, they cut down trees and stuff like that. And he said there was this one job they did where they didn't know about poison oak at the time, Breathing and they were in. they were burning they were yeah. burning all oh. the vegetation. It went into their lungs. And it, went, oh. it literally got airborne, got in their lungs. One of the dudes that was on the site went into a coma for like a month. Yeah. Like, what? Because he yeah. literally they had him close up, up the machines. Up your airway. Yeah. It can, it gets in your inside your lungs and your bloodstream, and it causes all kinds of havoc. I, I've so, heard about. That. That, yeah, but I didn't Holy know it was that bad. It gets bad, man. People bad. die from it. Yeah, <laughs> if you're not smart, you know, if you're not careful about it, and you're smart about how you how you handle it, like, you know, you can end up in the hospital. I, so I, I <laughs> That's mean, sketchy. Because the, they were telling us at uh, what uh, TDS, they were like, "No, nah, dude, some of the dudes we know eat it." Oh, and that's no. how you start. Oh out wait, young. I did. I did yeah, hear about you that. Eat actually. it when you're young, and that's like the way to get your immunity. It seems fucking risky. That's hell, really hardcore. Yeah, no, like, that's wow. like really risky. I, you're like, you know, you're a five-year-old kid here. Why don't you try some of this in your, <laughs> in your fucking oats in the morning and milk? And, here's uh, a salad. Yeah, here's a salad. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do to my kid these days. I'm not going to do no, that now. No way. No way. Drive to Survive, new episode right there. Jeez. <laughs> it's like Bear grills. Yeah. I'm oh, going to eat the, the, the poison oak today. <laughs> like, that's that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. No, wow. I, so what's up, Sebastian? You're out here at Sea Otter Classic. You've been doing some stuff. What's, yeah, what's yeah. going on? I did, did a little something with you today. We did have a little interesting time this morning, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. How, oh, how, many, how many did you win? No, Dude, like, no, 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 like one. Did you get one? One? There was two. Oh, there was won. two. I won. Yeah, yeah, shoot, I, win. Yeah. I, was, I was so nervous, dude. I lost all. I was blacked out. Dude, you did really <laughs> good, man. <laughs> you did really good. Like seriously, dude, you were on point, <laughs> man. Okay. It was perfect. Yeah. Right, so, so explain to our viewers like what the game was. What was? Well, it, uh, let yeah. Smash oh well, okay. Well, well, essentially, what it was is a specialized likes to throw. You know, some games here and there. You know, they have you know the athletes come in. You know, ambassadors, whatever, and. Our lucky spot this year was Friday at like 11.30 in the morning, which is one of the busier times. It's kind of crazy at that time. And they decided, hey, let's do a Are You Smarter Than an Influencer game. <laughs> and sure enough, I'm the one who is, is in the seat competing against the people that I are from the so. crowd. And, and so essentially, we just basically like had people from the audience come in, you know, hang out with us, you know, answer questions, and whoever won the most amount of questions, the most amount of points there got a, uh, a pair of specialized pants, which was pretty cool. Yeah, but like the questions weren't they were, like, very, they were like, challenging. Yeah, yeah, they were. They were really challenging. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many hearts an octopus has? Uh, three. Because you listened to the uh, thing. No, huh? no, no. I knew that shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> no <laughs> shot, dude. Yeah. The kid said eight, and I'm like, damn, yeah, they got eight legs. Eight, I was like, what? <laughs> that kid's crazy. No, I actually knew three. That was strange. No, no you I, were I not. Oh, God, I knew three, and then the Rhode Island one, I was pretty disappointed. Yeah, I know. That was bad, well, Yeah, dude. Delaware? I, I thought it was Delaware. Yeah, I don't know. Rhode Island's tiny. I thought anyway. it was Delaware. Anyways, it was good. He This guy, so Sebastian here, sent me a text like a week ago, and he's like, hey, like, I got a favor for you or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, whatever you need. What's up? And he's like, <laughs> you said yes before I even asked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, he, and I, he's like, hey, I'm doing this thing at Specialized. Will you MC it? I'm like, yeah, but dude, we got a problem here. And he's like, I could tell the, just the way you respond. You're like, okay, what's the problem? You got a race or something? And I'm like, ah, dude, I'm not. I, This isn't really my setting. I can try, but I'm not funny. And he's like, oh, you'll be fine. So I was on the mic out there. I've been on the mic a lot lately, but. MCing for this and I was nervous dude I'm not even gonna lie I was no, more nervous to do that than I'm to race a bike I swear I was like what's up what do you need for me <laughs> <laughs> but we did it we did it and uh yeah, pressure, okay. I, mean, I mean dude the CEO of Specialized was standing like oh, 10 yeah. feet away from yeah, us you know all the big wigs are all there you know pressure's on man yeah that was nervous. <laughs> no pressure at it is pretty gnarly <laughs> yeah in yeah, front of the yeah. crowd I will say it went well but I wish there were more people that stuck around because we it was we were yeah. having a bit of a hard time. I mean, we had a steady stream. Yeah. But I feel like it was hard to capture the people that were just walking by. Like we mm-hmm. were trying to yeah. interact with them. But 
Well, the thing yeah. is, one of the th interesting th things about Sea Otter, for anyone who's ever been here, is like you're you're const you're stimulated from every angle. Yeah, for like sure. every company's got bright colors. Everybody's out there doing something that has is creating noise, you know, and and everyone's doing some kind of game of some kind. So it's like I don't I don't I don't I don't uh, you know it's I don't doubt it at all that people were just like oh okay well I'll go off, I'll go off the next thing you know. Oh, absolutely. But, yeah, that, that's sure. the that's the culture of this place. It really is, and and people. Yeah. You know, come up to your booth and like, what do you got for free? Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, and you're like, oh, here's a hat. And they're like, you got stickers? You got a t-shirt? Yeah. No, okay. Yeah. And they just walk off. Yeah, yeah. It is. You got anything better? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> better. <laughs> and it's so messed up. It's so. It's true. What it is though. They're like, oh, I don't need a sticker. I don't need a hat. Like, <laughs> yeah. you got a bike or yeah. something? Or can I get a full kit? But we. How much in product do you guys think is given away at Sea Otter? Like all everyone together. Oh, that's good. Uh, oh, that's a lot. Like in dollar amount or yeah, let's just, yeah, just yeah. So not yeah, retail. Uh, what do you think? How many bikes? Well, so I just so we were just doing a specialized. Had another thing that they asked me to help with, which was a track stand challenge for kids, and they gave away a kids bike right there, and they're doing that once a day. Which yeah, it's kind of cool. This little kid. That's what's, cool. What's the yeah, age the, limit? Can I sign up? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> this little kid. It was so funny. This little kid's out there on his on his bike, and he's. You're supposed to stand still when you do a track stand, but he was like slowly inching forward and he's yelling <laughs> at people, "Get out of the way!" This little <laughs> kid, dude, he's like, he's nine. I forget his name. He won, and he won the bike, and he's yeah, fist pumping, dude. It was pretty, it was <laughs> pretty awesome. hilarious, yeah. But yeah. I don't know. Hey, did you not tell money. them you had a very important podcast to be at? <laughs> yeah. That's what I had to leave for. I was here, and then I left, I and I came back. <laughs> yeah, I've seen some pretty gnarly product tosses in my day. Yeah, like people. Smoking you, people for sort of like a pair of goggles. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And you're just thinking oh, yeah. the value of that goggle. And the yeah, you're like, going to the hospital for yeah. more. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Man. So, I mean, what do you guys think? What do you think? Value. Number? What do you have to put on it? 10 grand? 100 grand? What, per per day? day? More than oh, that. oh, I think like, like uh, you're talking about like yeah. every company combined. Yes. Oh, it's, oh, 10 grand is like, that's like a per, maybe 10, uh, every 10 okay. minutes, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I, I was thinking a couple hundred grand. A couple hundred grand? And they could put dollars in free product. I don't know about a million. That might be a strong thing. thousand? 250 I don't know yeah is that high? Is that that's a high? tough one but just look at if you look down and see how many brands are there and yeah. you know majority of them are giving away something hey hey you ran yeah. a booth here a few year, a few multiple years in a row what you how what was What's like your promo budget like, what was promo budget uh it, it, for an event like this you, you kind of want to go smaller because <laughs> you have a volume right yeah. so like you can't go high, like a big like a t-shirt it's not like that's you know it's a big expense sometimes you could do it or you just do it till you like run out and then you switch to hats so but you know in my experience it's like you kind of look at if you have a bunch of uh, promo product that you get specifically as promo product or you have like leftover inventory or something you pull it you know just kind of it, it really depends but the brands I've been at you know I worked at helmet brands we're not giving away throwing out helmets you know what I mean yeah. Um, but um, yeah we just t just hats and, and stickers and stuff usually you know yeah yeah, yeah but I, I know I mean we handed out what 10 pairs of pants I'd say today yeah from specialized for sure. I mean those are aren't super expensive but they're a little more expensive I know Fox is giving away yeah uh, forks DVO is also giving away suspension pit vipers giving away a limo not that that's the nice. No wow. way. Yeah, they're giving away that that limo. Oh no way! Really? <laughs> yeah, the really? painted limo. Yeah, they well, gave away you, some. We are giving away hats and goggles. So that's right. Yeah. Nice. You head over to the buy, go to the app booth, and, and not good enough. I'm gonna need more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need more. You know what's shocking me this year? Room. Like about Sea Otter in particular, is the amount of like Chinese slash Taiwanese companies. Really? Or some people consider those the same place, but yeah. for the for the sake of the conversation, let's There's just assume they're two different places. That's not the yep. any way to talk about most of the bike brands. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, that's where most of the bikes are from. No, I know, and that's where they're from. But I mean, like in the sense of like, symbol. like no. I, I, mean, <laughs> I know what you're saying. I know. Because I remember when I when I would come as a little a little kid, right? You know, it, it was it was the the foxes. You know, the the Liats were there. You know, everyone these these very you know like American companies were there, right? Now it's like all these random companies that I've never heard of in my life before yeah. but they're apparently pushing product like no one else and you're just like yeah. looking at I was like where did you come from yeah. like they're super nice people I'm like oh these guys are awesome like, but it's like every year it's getting more and more and more I'm like oh a lot of, lot it's of, changing a lot of e-bike companies like that like yeah. just yeah. pop up little e-bike companies and yeah. yeah trying to make a dent yeah. in the pie yeah, yeah. So you need a little yeah. sliver of it yeah. yeah it's interesting it's weird have you seen anything groundbreaking or anything here that's caught your eye dude 
Uh, yes, I will. We there was a new Liat helmet that I saw down there that I yeah. think they launched last year at Whistler. It was pretty pretty sick. It's pretty uh, good. Yeah. Okay. What's the deal? Give us the give us the stick. Well, um, Force you know we 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 <laughs> have a new helmet that we launched at Whistler last year. It was the the Gravity 6.0 kind of fill the gap between like a, a trail full face helmet or an enduro f- full face helmet and a full on DH helmet um, yeah just re- it's like 380 bucks price point and stuff so yeah, good price point yeah, yeah pr- good price point and it's good coverage and it's got like a moto uh, liner and a D-ring so it's more like That's a nice. DH helmet yeah. compared to like a, a clip and and a super vented kind of padding system yeah um, but yeah I mean there's lots of bikes down there I mean I mean I saw something that Austin was working on this morning that, uh, won't, won't mention anything, but that, that thing was pretty cool. Yeah, I've, I've, heard, about, <laughs> I've heard about that as well, too, but does the, uh, the, the new helmet have the rotational system in it or any, any? Yeah, so all of our helmets have, um, have the same, uh, energy management system. It's called, uh, 360 Turbine. Yeah, Turbine. Um, so it's, it's across all of our product lines, so, you know, from the BMX half shell helmet all through our trail helmets all through the DH helmets and our moto helmets as well cool. um, so yeah it's, it's it's pretty legit really lightweight and uh, when we launched it at Whistler we had all the media guys come and and we you know they all got helmets and got to ride all week and end of the week there was a lot of got a lot of good comments from the guys you know about uh, just the weight and the, the the ventilation and all that stuff yeah sick so That's very cool yeah, didn't Swap Moto like test the thing fully for you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> swapped out. He made a video of it, eh? Yeah, yeah. He uh, he's alive. Yes, that, that was a funny one. He came and and uh, yeah, he was telling me. Was, me and you were <laughs> here, here, here. yeah. He's like, hey, dude, I got to do what is it, crab apple or what was he was? I don't uh, know. I'm gonna do all the jumps on crab apple, and I was like, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Why? He did him. I th- I think the last he, he did him. Well, he, did did him. <laughs> he didn't do the last one. No, it was uh, it wasn't crab apple. It was uh. What's the one with the hip jump? The big oh, it's dirt st- merchant. Yeah, dirt merchant. Oh, yeah. Dirt merchant. Yeah. yeah, he came over and grabbed some gear, and, and uh, I brought a bunch of gear for him. So he was all like, "Oh, this killer!" And he went out and like four hours later sent me. I got a text and it was a video of yeah, the of GoPro, his, right? <laughs> just, just crashing. Yeah, and then he comes by and he's all his gear is all ripped up and, and uh, <laughs> no way. So yeah, clearly just not too but, protected. But that place is gnarly, man. Like oh, you go yeah. there and, hey. and <laughs> all right, talk about Whistler. Where do you think, like, where, if you ever had to choose to ever first start your mountain biking, ever first time riding, where would you choose? It would not be Whistler. <laughs> Bike oh. Park. I what? You know what? Tell him. Tell him. Let's my, my first time ever really mountain biking was at Whistler. I, in, I'm at park? At, literally at the bike park, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Insane, right? Yeah. I mean, I, obviously, up until that point, Insane. I had ridden Chucked a bike on dirt, park. but, like, my first time mountain biking was at Whistler. And wow. it, was, it was a well, super random family trip, you know, to Canada in the RV. And we just, we went to Whistler because it was like, I guess the Olympic town or whatever, right? Yeah. And, uh. You and never mountain bike before? Never had done it before. No, no. Way. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, done like BMX and stuff, but I didn't yeah, know what yeah. mountain biking was, right? And, and, uh, and so we, we pull up to the Whistler Village, we're rolling around, you know, doing touristy things. Come up, and you're like, where are all these guys on bikes? Yeah, yeah. Well, like I started noticing. I'm like, oh, something's cool here, you know. And then you pull up to right in the square, you know, oh, yeah. right at the With bottom the of the trails, trails. Yeah. And you see the jumps, and you see everything. And I saw it, and I instantly like, I was like, mom, dad, I got to do that. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I'm like, imagine like a little like ten year old me, you know, eight year old me or whatever, you know. So yeah. Well, that's. I mean, that obviously it's like one of the best bike parks in the world, right? It's, it's been around a long time, and, and it's very established. So it's got like kind of every level. You yeah. get like all the different things. Um, but it's, it's even like, you know, I've had some experience with some people that are pretty good riders that even on, on like sea line, I got, dude got smoked. I know on yeah. broke both his arms on, on like, Oh yeah. On talk, sea talk line. About, oh yeah. yeah. You want me to, you tell a story. <laughs> you got to tell the story. Dude. Uh, so we went, it's just, I don't even know what year, 2018 maybe we did, a uh, um, a launch. This is obviously when I was at Bell. So we launched, let's go, go get some laps. And my wife had showed up. So we. I was like, let's go to top of the world. Just no bikes. Let's just nice. me and you go up there, go top of the world. Beautiful. So up there. they take off. They go in the lift line for the bikes. We go to top of the world. The time it took me to get to top of the world, my buddy, uh, one of the guys that was with him, texted me and was like, "Hey, I won't say the name. So and so just got broke his arms." And I was oh, like, right. and I and I get to the top of the lift. I'm like, what the heck? 
and I was like, is he okay? And then like, he didn't respond for a while. So we're like, we're walking around up there at top of the world. And uh, then he's like, yeah, we're at the medical center and sends me a picture. And he's like, snap, no. snap, broke both his arms. Oh. Dude, yeah. And I was like, I, I looked at my wife, I'm like, I gotta go. <laughs> she was like, what? Oh. I'm like, so we turned around, went back and went to the village and he had come, obviously we were on a work trip, yep. you know? So we were, he, he was, both his arms were broke and yeah, he was, I guess he, they were just going down sea line like, you know. Which sea line is is what is that a is that a blue square trail? Yeah, it's a blue. Inter, but the, I mean, the jumps, <coughs> they're, yeah. they're big tables, right? And yeah. the landings are real deep and stuff. Yep. And they're they're really mellow. But yep. you know, he just yeah, he just they were they were training wrong. going down, and and what happened was he was the last one, and he just got bucked and just went all the way to the bottom, and he was fully KO'd, both arms broken, and, and <laughs> the guys wow. in front of him didn't know, and so they they were like down at the bottom waiting for him, and the next guys, the next group came down, and and luckily they didn't run him over or anything but another guy came down later and they were like hey did you see a guy up there and they're like yeah there's a guy who broke his arms they're like what was he wearing a blue shirt or whatever and they're like yep and they're like oh man so like they go up and anyways he just spent uh I don't know, a week almost in, in oh, Vancouver. Remember, like, he didn't have, he lost his passport. He went through a rough moment. Yeah, he it did. It was rough. He did. I, it was, uh, yeah. he, we got through it, but he, it was, he was on his own, and we, I was there, I had a, we had a booth there, so I, I, like, I drove down to Vancouver one day, and he, like, was just getting surgery, and, like, no he was on his own. Yeah, dude. That's Two broken rough. arms is bad enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you're, like, in a different country, <laughs> it's like, that so. sounds brutal. Man. Healthcare yeah. is not free there, like they say. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah had oh no! What's funny is the right. in the in the medical tent there or the medical center at Whistler, uh, they were literally like, "We need a credit card." Whoa. Yeah, and, and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> They're like, and so I was like, "Well, or insurance or something." And so I was like trying to call his wife, and his wife was like freaking out. Of course, she's like, "Is he okay?" And I'm like, she "Yeah, he didn't he's have good. He's good." Passport, right? Is that what it was? It no, was he had his weird. She didn't. So oh she yeah, didn't so come. she couldn't come up exactly. Yeah. So he literally went on his own because we were all there. Yeah. Three-hour ambulance ride down. Drove by himself to, to Whistler or to Vancouver and had to go into surgery the next day. Driving to the or something? No, no, no. The in ambulance. They took oh, him. They yeah. Did. Okay, you, okay, that okay, road gotcha, is gotcha. not straight. No, no it's not no. a fast road. Not straight. No, he was he was feeling good. He was ivy up and he was he was not enough. He was on the morphine, but he was it was it was a rough one. He's uh. He turned out okay and everything, but it was, I mean, that was sea line, dude. Like, can you, I mean, we yeah. ride, you know, you guys have ridden all the, the good stuff there, you know? Oh, that yeah. place can bite you. Yeah, yeah. seriously. That can bite you. Um, Rob, thanks for your time. Yes. Crush no it problem. for us. You're getting the Pop boot. On the mic. Getting I the gotta boot. go. No worries. Got, I gotta go anyways. We got, uh, hey, good, good, good to meet you. Vernon coming yep. in. Thanks, man. We're hopping Vernon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> someone had to pick him up somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Vernon's over there asking who wiped the ass on that one. Um, apparently, that's what the car- credit card was for. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the credit card they needed. Yeah, that was the credit card they needed. And you got to pay someone for that. You, you know? got to pay someone for that. <laughs> that don't cost. That don't come free shit. I wouldn't wipe no one's butt with that thing. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Vernon, uh, Canyon Bicycles. Um, you know Spencer? It's been a while. Spencer. Indeed. Indeed. How are you? Okay. Good to see you. Okay. Uh, do you know Sebastian, normal uh, mountain Vernon, Good to meet you. Uh, indeed. Vernon. Uh, so I don't, you know, I know Vernon from Specialized indeed. now indeed. on to Canyon, but this guy is a apparent legend that I didn't know about. <laughs> I don't even know on, that either. Shit. <laughs> uh, Pink Bike. This guy is a journalist. And much more than a journalist in recent years, I would say. Uh, like, uh, he's I, not what? a journalist anymore. Yeah, not anymore, yeah. Marketing, <laughs> like, you, I think they call that a hack. A marketing <laughs> No, <laughs> stop <laughs> it. Stop just, it. I don't know. I mean, I mean, who likes a marketing? But you've person? had a lot of unique, not unique positions, but you've yeah. been in the industry. And in I don't know, how, how do you, how do you, what would be the best way to explain? Well, to make people hate me more, uh... <laughs> My background Stop. is politics, uh, public <laughs> policy, right? So yeah. I worked for the governor of California. I uh, was a speechwriter. I worked for the mayor of San Francisco. I worked in Capitol Hill in D.C. Uh, but, you know, bike trail is my passion. I just never believed you could actually make a life of it, right? And how lucky are we that we actually get to do something cool, something that brings, you know, I mean, I want to get all Walt Disney, but shit. It, it, being on a bike, making people happy, it's a great thing. So I was lucky enough to just... Uh, Stop. You no. did more than just... I mean, like, you've influenced... I mean, because... Come on, man. 
influence the do marketing? Do I get other people to be bald? Uh, yeah. Like, how do, how do I influence people? I don't know about that, man. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, look, Verdon, mm-hmm. uh, me and you have great conversations on this industry and this just whole aspect of everything. I'm... Uh, and we make fun of me for not knowing what's below GX <laughs> or SRAM. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is the man who thinks it stops at XX1 and Kashima code. It, right? it, it, <laughs> does, it, it does in my, oh my. In my inventory, it does. Do they um, make something that's not Kashima code? Yes. I've, I've never even seen such a thing. Um, <laughs> sorry for having some class around oh, here. Oh, damn. Um, <laughs> Shots fired. Dude, I got to say, your, your voice is amazing. And oh, man. You wow. should see his writing. Oh, man. Dude. Come on now. Come on, man. Stop. No, no, no. Have you ever done any kind of voice voice acting before? <laughs> no, I, no, no, we That's didn't. That's the next career. We were Dude. actually going to use his voice for a uh, Canyon video, remember? Oh, yeah. And then yeah. They, yeah. they heard it. They 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 heard it. Oh, yeah. stop it. This <laughs> can't be real, man. That's that's your this actual voice. Real. So you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that is amazing. So now you understand wow. why when he called me for my first work with him, you know, just silver tongued me into whatever oh, he needed. You know, <laughs> uh, every time it's like, well, Austin, uh, what are you doing today on this fine morning? You know, it's, it feels like it's but not British, but British. I don't know what oh, it man. is. Like, okay, so okay. Gets it in. There's I, a whole bunch. There's a whole island of people who just got offended, right? Like, uh, <laughs> stop. Like, oh you, no, we speak English. Don't not you that live guy. on an island, anyways? I'm yeah. I, I do. I live he on does. the Olympic Peninsula. Yeah. yeah. This guy's got an F-250 and drives it around like a true F-250 should be wow. driven. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where yeah. are you from originally? Uh, I'm from around here. My people are from New Orleans, but my, my dad came out here in the, in the 40s uh, for around World War II time. And yeah, I, I'm the last of many. My dad... My dad took his time to get married, um, so uh, yeah, I, I grew up. But I grew up around here, and uh, you know, I'm, now of course everything is all Brie and, and, and Priuses and mess and all that. But there was a point in time. There was a point in time when this area was proper redneck. Right, ah. and this is the whole grapes of wrath, right? That's the whole. I mean, yep, that's yep. the whole. That's well, the whole. I feel like I'm talking to a politician over here, and he's going to sell me here in a second. <laughs> no, there's nothing to do next. I was <laughs> start. But no, yeah. So when I, you know, I mean, uh, everyone I grew up around was basically descended someone from Oklahoma or Texas, right? So I mean, you know, people have that idea that California's all what's up, bro, man, you know, and, and that whole surf thing. <laughs> no, that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you get, you get, you know, you get 40 miles out from the coast, and it's a whole other California. <laughs> It's true. Uh, yeah. yeah, I I will I will interrupt this story by by, by making it interesting by <laughs> telling you <laughs> telling you how true this is. Yeah, right. I, so I've been up here for a couple days now. I was shooting with Thule, uh, a new bike rack that just came out with them, and we've been shooting photos of Shameless it up blood. up. Uh, <laughs> Whatever. That's what I'm here it's to do. Okay. Um, <laughs> He's got the shirt on. We were so we were shooting in. Um, we were, our Airbnb was in Union City. Mm-hmm. And we were shooting uh, east of that even, and we went land. Everything is absolutely stunning. I mean, it's just like this, but mountains are a little little taller, I would say. And uh, the photographer and producer went out scouting the day before and decided to drive up a driveway. Met this fine gentleman named Bob that owns 1,500 acres. Damn. Beautiful ranch. And they paid him 500 bucks to for us to come shoot on his piece on his piece of property, and uh, everything was great. I didn't know that we paid him. I didn't know any of that. I showed up, parked, met Bob, comes down in his uh, UTV shotgun on the front of the nice. UTV. I'm like, this you is sure sick. Sure, it wasn't Vernon. Nope, <laughs> it might have been. <laughs> he had hair though, so it couldn't be. <laughs> I do come with a gun. That is true. Yeah. He does come with a gun. <laughs> so, anyway, so I'm like, dude, this is sick. I I feel great here. This is awesome. This is gonna be a great shoot. He's like, okay, go up the road. You you guys saw it. It's yours. 1,500 acres. Have fun. And we're like, great go through a couple cattle gates, you know how it is, open the gate, close it behind you, so on and so forth. We kept going, we see the top of the mountain, we're like, there's one tree, one beautiful oak tree up there, let's go up there. And we're shooting up there, crew of about eight of us, um, we're shooting the shit, having a great time, and all of a sudden here comes Bob, absolutely pinned in his UTV, Doesn't he, he comes up, skids down, and we're like, what's up Bob? He's like, how the fuck did you get here? And we're like, I don't, we got here. Should we be up there or something? He's like, how, how, how can you fuck up so bad? Just yelling, absolutely oh. livid. And we're sitting there like, oh no, like what, 
what do we do? We felt like kids that got in trouble and we're getting reamed by our parents and we don't really know why we got in trouble. And he's like, he's like, I forget exactly what he said. The photographer was named UC, UC Oxana, a gentleman from Finland. And he's like, I try to be nice for some guy named Juice. And this is what I get. Like, <laughs> just full, full from the sticks, the shotguns riding. I swear it was, I heard that thing click. And he's like, get the fuck off my property. Take your shit and go. And we're like, whoa. And he pinned it away. He's like sitting there. This is what happens. You could hear him. This is what happens when you try to be nice. And anyways... We like packed our stuff and went down. Where we parked at his house, we never saw him. He never came down, but we were all like, "Dang, we're we're in the sticks now." We're <laughs> but how many versions of Bob wow. are there, right? That sounds like he's got five men inside himself, this was right? Crazy. There's the happy Bob. He was so Bob. nice. Did you guys ever figure out how you effed that up? Well, we no. never had the opportunity to. We <laughs> no, never no, no. got to. He's talk seen to. the car backing out and had a one-up rack on it, and that's. Oh, it <laughs> oh <laughs> no, dude! <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. No, but no. I they, we honestly, were all like you. Honestly, made a story that I feel like I've heard from Vernon multiple of times from his neighborhood and his hood where he lives. I do have to let people yeah. know if, there, if I have to let my neighbor know if people come to visit, because otherwise he will absolutely fire a shot over your car. Yeah, that's exactly, and that's yeah. why. Wow. Mm. I didn't realize it was so, I don't know, country, I guess you could say. We, we drove, found another location to shoot the sunset, and there were some kids, I don't know, 18 years old, bumping country music in the old, this old Ford pickup, dirt bike in the back, and we were like, started talking to them, and they, full on, what's up, brother? Like, full on. Yeah. We're like, dude, we're in California. <laughs> that, but that is California. Too, yeah, right? that is. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, long story short. We're glad to have you up here. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're, we're glad to have you here, Billy. Ass up you on the show. Well, I thank you. <laughs> yeah, you look familiar. Like, they seen you on the shoot. That was good. Yeah. Were you Bob? Yeah, you I'm Bob. one of the Bobs. Uh, Bob, yeah. <laughs> tell me, Vernon, I actually have never asked you this question. How the fuck did you get into this damn mountain biking shit? Well, I mean, you know, like, oh, well, you mean all, 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 all the way to, as a rider, you mean? I mean, whatever. I mean, what did you do before mountain biking? You well, I mean, I, I was, you know, I got a degree uh, in public policy, which is just uh, and they're problems. they're free mountain bikes or what? I'm well, I mean, I, I started mountain biking in 85, right? You know, and... Uh, yeah, I'm I'm old as, as dirt, you know. So uh, I wasn't born. I don't think anyone at this point. Yeah, time yeah. Born, Everyone's no. like, God no. damn, how old is he? Oh, I just moisturized. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I got started riding at '85, and uh, I got my first bike about then. Yeah, uh, my my family didn't have a whole lot of money, but my dad got a good job and uh, a better job with benefits, and what have you. And so I got my first bike, and I just fell in love with it, man. I never thought I would. I was just a little, you know, a little dirt rat running around. and uh, With an Allen wrench to drop your shoe? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, 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 the crazy thing is, if everyone's seen, like, Monty Python and, and the Holy Grail, and they're running around pretending to be on horses, that was me as a kid. <laughs> I would chase everybody on their BMX bikes, and I just thought that was normal, right? Because everyone had a bike, and I just ran. But I didn't think it was running. If I, I was running, I thought, but I thought I was just keeping up. And then I got a bike, <laughs> you know, I got a bike when everyone else is like finding girls and what have you. And I, and I just fell in love and I, I did fall in love with the girls too, but I fell in love with riding a bike and it was this very key. amazing, beautiful thing. And suddenly I'm wearing, because there was only one way to do it back then was, you know, uh, plum smugglers every day. Everything was just Lycra and toe clips and all that mess. But being in the dirt, you know, I started out road riding and then I got onto the dirt. In dirt, no one, uh, no one's throwing beer cans at you and uh, screaming uh, epithets at you. And that seemed like a good thing. And I'm seeing coyotes and wild turkey. And, and it's everything I loved about the outdoors, right? And, uh, and I loved it. And I, but I never thought I could make a life of it. So I went into public policy because I wanted to solve environmental problems, save the world, what have you, right? Oh, that exactly. didn't exactly work out for me. Oh, and you landed at Pink Bike. And well, I, 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 I landed at Mountain Biker first over on okay. Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles, where the same building is Hot Rod and Guns yeah. and Ammo yeah. and Team okay. Magazine. So you get on the elevator, and again, you're wearing your your body condom like because now it's 1997. <laughs> And uh, you're in there with all the guns and ammo guys like, God damn, what the hell wrong with this boy? And then you got, you got the girl from Sassy Magazine in the corner. I'm like, oh my God. You know, and it's just like, and it was the craziest, craziest damn thing, right? I like, felt at home. I felt totally at home. It was like, there's even like Knife Fighter and Magazine. It was a no. bizarre, 64 totally different magazine in one crazy building wow. across from the wow. La Brea Tar Pits. And, uh, and then I went to Bike Magazine. I was there for 18 years. Uh, at bike, I was the editor in chief and a bunch of other, you know, the head janitor and, and dishwasher and what have you. And then, 
I did uh, three years of pink bike, and uh, then specialized called. And so I became the global mountain bike marketing manager, which is I met your fine self, sir. And, uh, and but, got, so at Pink Bike, I yeah. just want to back up and mm-hmm. right, obviously mm-hmm. you're at Canyon now, but like at Pink Bike, so what I've been told, I, I, I don't take it wrong, I haven't seen these videos, but you like started the video revolution. Oh of, man, go for that. Of Pink Bike in a sense, like, yeah. hey, these people, we need to make some Pink Bike Bible reviews. I don't know. You know, it's not that bike magazine. I just realized that no one liked to read the shit we were writing, right? I mean, people would tell you that, but they wouldn't tell you. Because there was a time when no one admitted they didn't read, right? Yeah. Reading is <laughs> fundamental riff. is a program for kids, right? And everyone's like, oh, I'll read, but no one did it, right? It's like no one admitted to masturbation, yes. right? Yeah. And so no one admits that they didn't read. <laughs> but they would say things like, oh, I love bike. The pictures are great. And you're like, well, God, man, I didn't make Definitely the Definitely right there. <laughs> I never read anything. <laughs> that was everybody, right? You'd be like, you know. And, and, and so then you, at some point, you just realize, you know, I think it's like, you know, you make horseshoes in a world of Teslas and Ferraris, right? Like, people want pictures. They want things that move. They want the, and there's nothing wrong with that. So all we did is just rip off Top Gun. Uh, myself and Dan Barham, who's this British uh, gentleman, you met him uh, on a shoot up here a few years back. Yeah, and know. Seb Kemp, who's now over at Santa Cruz Bicycles. Yep. We just ripped off Top, top Gear, frankly. And I'd just be 100% honest. We weren't, uh, no one, none of us were brilliant. We just sat down and said, you know, the cool thing that you never saw that, that, was, that made the magazine interesting is all the arguing. It's not like the editors all agree about yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. But, you know, all that just gets you, you got 200 words and you lose. That's all you have to, to print the story. And so you lose all that nuance and the interesting stuff. And you lose the insults and the shit talking. And that's what's, I mean, look what we're doing, right? Yeah. That's what's interesting. <laughs> yes, it troops. That's so why. That's why is. podcasts are it's fucking such a thing. So true. Yeah. But also, yeah. I will. Yeah. I will yeah. give you your flowers in the sense that you had to be brilliant to realize that people aren't reading your shit. Uh, you, and you, you, and not everyone. There's Vernon's still a magazines bit ahead of his time. There's, sometimes there's and, still publications out there that drive the the articles and yeah. and sure it still can be relevant and people do like reading numbers a little bit but at the end of the day if they can hear it and watch it and be engaged i don't know there's nothing wrong with that right exactly i so, mean it, it's like the print, the printed word made sense because we didn't have video right if the monks in in europe in, in you know 900 uh, AD could have made video, they would have, right? Instead, all they had is chisels and, and, and paint and shit, and so that's what they did. They made books. They were doing but, the same thing. you know, video is nothing wrong. If we can connect to people and get them engaged and make them laugh, you know, that's great. I mean, look, the magazine, all I did was make bowel movements easier. You know, let's be, I love the saving the world, man. I know where my Just literature is over here. I mean, do you understand the silver tongue when he calls me to do a photo shoot yeah. or something now? You know, he just works it right out in. Sure, whatever you need. He just, yeah, whatever you need, dude. Sure, yeah, keep talking. What was that again? That's all right. Amazing. Sebastian did the same to me. Just about I, a week ago. I, I just, it was like two texts, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it was a text. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't want to read. I wanted to hear you or, or see it. So it just it's was low. processed. Uh, Vernon, now look. All right, so you're at Canyon, mm-hmm. uh, which is basically where all the specialized employees go. That is about true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is not wrong. That is all not right, wrong. Hot take. Yeah, hot take, hot take. Yeah. But like, you we're know. Still, we're still specialized. Yeah, I'm still yeah, specialized. Still specialized. Right. You're not employees. <laughs> not not wrong. Specialized is a great company. I know. Give it to Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, you've you've been through you've been through a lot of uh, you've been in. How do you say? How do I don't want to put this like wrong because it's given you a good uh, tongue voice. Uh, you've seen a lot in this industry, right? Because you've been touched some interesting aspects of it. Um, what do, what do you like? I guess what I'm saying is, is now you're landed at Canyon and and you got these. You know, you're writing these great. You're building, I, not just writing. You have these great websites and these greatness of this. Ever like, um, it's all come together of that years of education. Riding in 1985, getting chased by people on mountain bikes, uh, while riding your cyclists and everything like that. Like, how does it feel? Like, um, you know, like we're the young ones now. I don't know how to explain it. Like, you've seen this industry. You're just saying he's old, basically, right mm-hmm. now. No, yeah. 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 And you've seen this. this I, you, you know. I'm not the glory skin. I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 But, you know, you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, look, you've seen the, the, uh, the, 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 the word cycling and what it's done. Just ask um, the question. All right, yeah. You've seen cycling, where it's come from, like, and, like, where it's at. Like, what do you think about it? Like, is that a broad question? That's loaded. 
Man. Loaded question. It's a loaded question. Wow, what is the meaning? Are of you life? happy with it? I mean, since 1985, are you okay with where it's going? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's fucking gravel racing. It's, you know, it's always different and it's always the same, right? Like at some level, like when mountain bikes came out, bike shops didn't even want to carry them. It wasn't cycling, right? It wasn't road bikes. Yeah. You know, what are these hippies doing in Marin County? You know, because original, you know. Joe Breeze and, and Charlie Cunningham and Scott Nickel and Ibis, all these guys, you know, they were, they were, all they wanted to do was shuttle, right? They had yeah. these Schwinn Excelsior newspaper bikes and they just threw a couple of gears on them, Gary Fisher and these cats, and they just went to the top of Repack and they wanted to shuttle. And people were like, that's not riding a bike, what the hell is that? It was gravity riding for what they could do in Marin County, right? <laughs> and, and that, and bike shops that want to carry the mountain bike, and it's just, you know, I mean, it, no one wanted to talk to Mike Sidney to specialize when he, you know, he commercialized the first, you know, mass-produced bike, the Stump Jumper, I think, 83. And, uh, and it, it, that's the constant cycle, right? Which is the same for, we talk about music, whether it's classical to jazz to, you know, to, you know, punk rock, rock and roll, like did every generation tries to kill their father, right? Every generation tries to make something that is cool their own. And that's what we have in cycling too, right? I mean, people go, you know, what, think about when Enduro popped up and people are like, well, that's just because you can't, you're not a DH racer anymore. It's, it's the retirement league for DH. And that's bullshit, <laughs> right? That's good. You know, that, that's <laughs> gravel now, right? <laughs> there they go, well, gravel is just a retirement league for road, right? But every generation but is, is trying to go and make, you know, we're painting, right? It's our own palette. We're trying to create our own world. Every generation has to make something cool and unique in their own. And I think that's badass. And if it's on two wheels, I mean, the great thing about the bike industry is, look, this isn't, we're not selling some health insurance that ain't really going to help you. We're not selling Viagra. We're not selling, you know, well, there's, I guess the Viagra has a purpose, but, but let me think of something that doesn't have a purpose. Not for me, there's nothing wrong with you. Hey, if all you out there, that's great. Little blue pill. But my point is. You wish you could just sell that, though. I right? Mean, it? Yeah, little yeah. Blue pill, and now you're this much better. Yeah, wouldn't that be great? I mean, you know, it's but we're, bike. at the end of the day, we sell something that makes people happy. And that gets people out there. And I know that sounds all hippy drippy, but bikes are badass. And every time, I guess, you know, at the end of the day, Austin, every day I get off like a long day of work. You know, I get up at, you know, five in the morning, talk to people in Germany, talk to the Americans in the middle of the day, talk to the people in Taiwan. Because, you know, obviously I'm involved with product spec and a little bit of bike design with uh, my colleagues in Koblenz. And, uh, and I'm like, damn, it's been a long day. I've looked at a lot of Excel. <laughs> this is some shit I did not sign up for, right? And then I get on the bike. And I'm like, and I finished that ride and I go, Jesus, that is so much better than I remember. I just did it the day before and I forgot how badass it is. And every time I get done, I mean, I'm in the middle of nowhere like a goddamn fool. Get off the ground, woo, right, <laughs> by myself. What else in the world does that for you? There are some things that we can't talk about on the podcast without me losing my job. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That is cool. The fact that we do this for a living Man, how lucky are we? Uh, so yeah. that's what I think. Which is, man, how many fucking bikes have you sold with that? Damn, holy <laughs> shit! Good. That was yeah, that amazing. Was uh, but but it's all 100% accurate. And it and is. I mean, I think the four of us or three other people sitting here all believe the same thing and understand the same thing. We're yeah. so lucky. Yeah, we are. And bikes, look where we are. It's beautiful. <laughs> Sun's amazing out. View. We're riding bikes with. I don't know how many people, 60,000, whatever the number is, other yeah. people riding their freaking bicycles. Crazy. And how and many grumpy people did you see out there? Not a damn one. Exactly. How cool is that? Exactly. Where else do you see that not in this bad. world? There could be. Those well, the security guards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The well, that's because you're not riding bikes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I want to take a step back. Yeah. I, for the viewers that don't know who you are, I want to mm -hmm. give you a second to just introduce yourself a little bit because I feel like we kind of skipped that. What are yeah, you doing sorry. now? Okay, okay. What? Um, what well, Where are you? Yeah, so, we know. you know, uh, like I said, I did the journalism thing. Um, and, you know, after that, I did a little bit of uh, marketing for a couple of brands. I did uh, a little work for Juliana and for Pivot and for Evil uh, and then Specialized Called. And, I mean, I think at the end of the day, you know, my belief, uh, so I got into marketing, but, you know, when you say marketing, people think you're just snake oil and selling, you know, bullshit. And, you know, it's faster. It's going to make you sexier. It's stiffer, lighter, <laughs> blah, 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 all that bullshit. It does. Right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, I think that the best marketing is just actually finding out, and this is where I think my background in journalism helped. Just find out what the real story is, man. Every time a bike comes out, there's a bunch of nameless engineers who had, and this is going to sound crazy, but they had a dream. They had some idea of how to make that bike that they loved before even better. And all you got to do is ask them, what the hell were you trying to do? 
what makes this thing kick ass? It doesn't have to be perfect for everybody, just because all design is a give and take, right? Everything is, you know, uh, you know, everything is, you sacrifice one thing, you gain something else. So mm. just tell that truth, and then tell the public the truth, and the public's smart enough to know what the hell they want, right? And, yep. and I think, you know, we were, we were able to do that at Specialized, and I think the guys at Canyon saw that, and we're like, okay, I mean, I think it's real simple. Right? It's, not, it, it's not about rocket you know it's not about the catchy tagline and all that shit it's just about telling the truth so uh most brands and most people in life are just afraid to be their authentic selves right yep all over and that's true for brands because brands are just made up of a bunch of people so my job is to just tell people basically you know it's okay man just uh, imagine everyone's out there in the underwear and uh, be <laughs> yourselves and 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 that's what i do so canyon uh, i do a bit of marketing for canyon obviously uh i do Primarily, uh, a lot of the product spec, particularly the stuff for the U.S. And this is gonna get real boring. This is where everyone dropped out. I'm sorry, people. In, in, in Radio Land. Uh, they but, don't know. You know, uh, we determine. I do all that, all that crazy quantitative stuff that I did in politics. Suddenly, made actually <laughs> was of use, right? So analyzing market trends, seeing what's you know what's selling, um, and bringing my bike nerd self in. And you know, my job is to be able to say like, I want this Grupo because it kicks ass, and this is what I put on my bike. And the cool thing about my job, you know, I think we've all thought, how cool, I can make a better bike than this. Why did they do that? My job is, I'm so fortunate to be able to say like, no, let's just do it this way because this would be the best badass bike at this price. It's like, man, it's like every day is like Christmas. I get to work with a bunch of, uh, you know, my colleagues in Germany and just build bikes that we're passionate about and, uh, and then bring them here and sell to people. And we're a direct to consumer brand. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to just plug the Kenya thing, but what I found engaging about that was we didn't work in Specialized, and, you know, Austin, you helped a lot with that. You know, you, you try stuff out there, and you have no idea whether it's working. Do people understand what you're talking about? You have to wait a couple years. But as a direct-to-consumer brand, you're like, I got this great idea, and you put it on the website, and everyone's like, nah, it's not a great idea, and they don't buy shit. You're like, oh, that didn't work. And so then you go and just turn it around, and you try something new, and it works, and you're like, oh, shit, I'm better at my job. So that was engaging. Man, I bored people. God damn it. No. 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 <laughs> no. I, I don't think it is boring. No. It might dude, be because, seriously. You're, because you're so involved in that world, and, and you're so in it. But to most people, it is, it's very interesting to hear somebody at a high level talk about these, these sort of things because it's not something you hear too often. Mm. If you go walk around Sea Otter, you see all the marketing mumbo-jumbo, and, and you aren't necessarily seeing the full truth always so it's always nice to have the truth and and what you guys are doing and what is going through your heads as you're doing it and it's pretty inspiring and i think pretty cool to say the least to yeah. just hear that hey you're just trying to make a bike better in the way that you see it it might not be always the best but if you find out that it's not you're going to try to change things to make it better in the future look at the end of the day if you sell people on this pie dream of a bike right or whatever it is that you're selling and it's not everything you said it is. They're going to figure that out. Yeah. People are not stupid. And they're like, yeah. well, I'm never buying a thing from you again. So even if you didn't want to, look, tell you the truth, the other good part of this is you don't go to bed feeling like a douchebag. You can look your yeah. kid in the eye yeah. and you didn't lie. Because we all tell, if you have kids, you all tell your kid, don't be a liar. So how yeah. can you go up in the world as an adult and just turn around and be that person that you tell your kid not to be? Yeah. So the other part, without getting all preachy, which I guess I already did, uh, <laughs> the other part of it is, you know, it's the right thing to do, but the right thing to do is also the profitable thing to do. Because at the end of the day, if you, if you tell people the truth and they really, they buy the bike because you gave them the information to get the product that made sense for them, the bike that made sense for them, then they're like, shit, I can trust you. And they'll buy it again. It's profitable to tell the truth. And I think there are brands like Santa Cruz, I think Transition does a good job, I think Ibis does a good job. There are some, like Transition, those guys are never gonna say, this is the fastest bike. What do they say? This bike is designed by People Ride. We do crazy ass shit on the bike. If you can't do it, it ain't the bike's fault. You gotta get better. That's ballsy. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Kyle and Kevin, and Transition yeah. props to those guys. They yeah. do it, and I, you know, like, that's the truth. And I think, at the end of the day, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Anyway. That's awesome. That's sick. I yeah. love that. That's great to hear. Honestly. Seriously. I think you're the first politician ever to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was not labeled as politician. Uh, I, I didn't even say it. You uh, never uh, said it. I tried to let you go. I said I had a background, you know. <laughs> I, gave up my, I gave up my union card, you know. Look at <laughs> the funny thing is when I got to the bike industry, I was still dressing like I was in politics. They told me real quick, they're like, man, you got to stop wearing those khakis and things. Because <laughs> yeah, you're freaking out the advertisers, right? You know, the guys, 
And uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's the other part. Look, I got a job. I just came off the trail. Uh, I did change my chamois. But outside of that, you know, I'm funky. I'm dirty. This is the way I roll. And how cool is that, that we also have a job that we don't have to walk around in plastic pants and toupees mm-hmm. and all that mess. Which, uh, which you know, of uh, the places you worked at, which one do you think you learned the most at? Oh, man. Oh, uh, I'd have to say this one for sure, Canyon. And, you know, um, because at the end of the day, look, I actually get to speak German again. Which is cool. Hadn't been able to do so that again. 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 Yeah. Well, you know, I have a Deutsch in Hochschule gelernt. You know, I learned German in, in high school and spent okay. a little time there. And he says you suck. I went. I went Spanish route, not German. <laughs> well, that was a smart thing. Of course, I came out here. You know, to go to. I, I'm a banana slug. Go to UC Santa Cruz. Uh, and he couldn't even get a job because I didn't speak Spanish, right? <laughs> How the hell do you live in California and not learn Spanish? That was me, uh, <laughs> smartest dumb man in the world. But uh, so I got to actually use. Uh, German again. I actually got to use all the statistics and all that stuff that had kind of just gone dormant. I love writing. That's the best thing at the end of the day. If I won the lottery, it's what I do. You know, messing around with nouns and verbs and all that mess. But uh, you know, I never thought I was going to be like working with the supply chain and yeah. and actually, you know, demand planning and all that mess. Uh, so I'm learning a lot. And at, you know, if you're if you're standing still, you get comfortable with any one thing. Uh, you're just dead. And, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, not bad things are going to happen to you, but that's the end of life. That was the cool thing about getting into video. Cool. <laughs> this is, this is dope, right? Like, if you can constantly evolve as a person, that makes life interesting. The people who say the life is boring, what the hell is wrong with those people? Yeah, that's a They're weird just, one. Yeah. Brain's not living. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, there's so many cool damn things to do. I'd like to learn to surf. I'd like to be a better photographer. I'd like to, I don't know, a whole lot of things. There's so much room to, to just get better. I mean, life is exciting. I can't believe that people get bored. That doesn't make any sense to me. So, of all the aspects of the different jobs and the different positions, what has probably been your more favorite or more enjoyable or, I don't know, any of those levels of that, right? Well, storytelling, to be sure, man. You know, like, which is to say, um, yeah, I, I would say I like... I like telling the stories of people, you know, feature writing, writing that kind of stuff. Now, granted, only like 5% of the world wants to read it. Um, or better yet, making that with video, right? Like yeah. we did a lot of stuff around, you know, wilderness, uh, the wilderness issue and the lack of bike access. And I could write an article all day long about that. No one's going to read it. But actually taking that into video, in this case, you know, we went up to when they were, uh, we lost a lot of access to great trails in Idaho and Montana. Um, and being able to make video about that and to create, to shoot the B-roll, to talk to people, to bring out the story, you know, that kind of stuff I find, I find fascinating. And I, yeah, storytelling and getting people, getting people engaged, right? There's so many things that seem too complicated and people are like, I don't, that's politics or that's, they don't think it's important. But if you tell the story in a way that makes it real and you cut out all the big silly words that, you know, $20 yeah. words that don't matter and you get people to understand that a lot of things are at stake in this world uh, and you can change, you can actually move the needle, that's pretty damn cool. So I like that, the storytelling, reaching people, right? Getting people to give a damn about something. And hopefully making them laugh because shit, the world's too fucking serious, right? <laughs> 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 that's, yeah, that's where Sebastian comes into play. I see Maybe that. sometimes. Uh, I don't know. You, you're much more entertaining than I am. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> and every one of those podcasts is listening would disagree. I'm oh, literally sitting here just mesmerizing everything that's coming I out know, of your mouth. I've like, never seen you just, <laughs> just uh, like, whoa, oh, dude. Shit. Dude, you silver tongued him, too. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, you've got your own very white thing going on, too. Your voice is fantastic. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, there you go. I love I'll give, it. I'll give my mom credit to that. She's got a good voice. So. <laughs> oh, man. Shit, Vernon. So, how does it. <laughs> it, okay, so m- no, not many people kind of know this about you, and I do. Just you live a different life of most cyclists, maybe mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Maybe I don't know how to explain it. So, like, well, I'll just set the scene. Vernon lives in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. He drives an F two fifty. He cuts trees down. <laughs> he he he's uh, lives off Starlink. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where where at? So I live on the Olympic Peninsula. Uh, the town I live in is, well, it isn't a town. It's a, it's a general store that it's been there since, like, I think, the 1880s. Where's the Olympic Peninsula? Okay, so the Olympic Peninsula is as far north and west as you can get outside of, aside from Alaska. So if you think of Seattle, Seattle's about three hours away from me and kind of and significantly south. 
I'm going to sound a bit, uh, I'm not besmirching the woman. I'm going to sound a bit like Sarah Palin here, but I can see <laughs> Canada from my house. And that's true. <laughs> so I can see Vancouver Island, Victoria, all that. It's just across the Strait of Juan de Fuca, you know, uh, so I, it's a big ass chunk of largely, you know, uh, undeveloped forest and mountains. And so I'm lucky, you know, I got mountain lions and bobcats and bear and, and on my property and they're not like mine. They just cruise through, right? <laughs> mine. Wow. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I, got I like trails out there. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we have a uh, dry hill where it actually specializes a lot of, it did a lot of their development on the demo, for example, up there out of Port Angeles. And of course, uh, you know, you got the fluid cup right there as well. So there are, there's a ton of trails and I know this is about mountain bikes, but a lot of really good gravel riding as well. Cool. Yeah. So it's what's, good. What's the closest major city you have to you? Well, I mean, Seattle's about a three hour drive. Cool. You know, Bellingham is, it takes about three hours, which is where I moved to first. Uh, when I left it, I, I kind of lived in a whole lot of places and when I came back to California from the, I lived up in Buffalo, New York. I did some time there. I was in a prison, uh, <laughs> but my wife was doing residency. Everyone in Buffalo, sorry, great people in Buffalo, fantastic, but it is Buffalo. Uh, yeah. We moved up to Humboldt County because that was more my speed. Because this area of California is beautiful, but it has gotten a lot more populated. It has gotten mm. a lot more expensive, and uh, I wanted to, to be in a small town again. So I lived in Humboldt, but uh, I didn't grow pot at the time, or still don't. Uh, <laughs> no, it's legal. I can't even. Get, I still can't grasp that, right? Um, not that it's anything wrong. It's just I'm always looking over my shoulder about that thing. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> you know, if you weren't growing pot in Humboldt, you pretty much didn't have a job. So I'd heard. I had some friends. I had done some work for IMBA, the International Mountain Bike Association. I wrote their guide to bu building trails, and asked some friends at IMBA who were on the trail care crews, who were like, you know, they traveled. The back in the day, they travel from town to town in America, build, teaching people how to build trail kind of like Kane and Kung Fu and uh but with mountain bikes uh and I said where would you guys live if you could be anywhere they've been to 48 states and they said Bellingham and I was like Bellingham where the hell is Bellingham and then there's a chance to move it I was like those cats said that Bellingham had the best mountain biking let's just move there mm. and my wife our ex-wife was cool enough to go yeah so we moved up there and it was fantastic it still is great place to mountain bike my my for my money the best place to mountain bike in the United States yeah, for real. I would agree. Yeah, and yeah. especially when you start to go out towards Baker, you know that totally. oh, it just get you start to get the glaciers and you start to get that amazing P and W views from yeah. any anywhere you are. I mean, it's, uh, it's it, there's very few places that are like that that are that are easily accessible for us, yeah. you know, on the West Coast. A hundred percent. Very very jealous and, of that part and, of the world. Yeah, I mean they've done so much good stuff. Even the public trails. I mean they got so much. Galbraith has so much to offer for every skill level yeah and it's 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 really special i think i wish i wish more cities around the united states could kind of just take note of that i mean bentonville's trying their stuff yeah. which yeah. bentonville's doing a great job with what they have but uh more cities need to realize hey we can start bringing people tourism money in mm -hmm. by putting these in and we 100%. start building this culture that is in the city and it's great. It's insane. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you're bringing that up. There's that whole movement right now. It's funny because in the in the mountain bike world, we're in this in this very much like a bubble. But you look on social media, and so much. Oh, thank you. So much of like the the trending cycling in the world right now is the the wheelies. Like you know those kids doing wheelies. Yeah. They're like in Bronx or something, or like in Baltimore. Right. They got gangs of like a hundred dudes just all wheeling and doing crazy tricks on it. Uh, like in my neighborhood where I grew up, you know, my, where my parents live, you know, you see all the neighborhood kids are all on their, you know, like five hundred dollar, you know, like hard rock or something, you know, and they're out there just like doing these crazy tricks, spinning their bars in the air. I'm like, wow, this is a whole new world. It's like, what's that going to evolve to? Because those are all the kids that I, that was us, you know, right. growing yeah, up. You know, sure. what, what are they going to be in ten years? You know, what's what's the new where cycling going you know is, oh, is are people going to care more about like the street style riding it's hey, who knows maybe <laughs> right but that's the thing they're making it their own how cool is that right yeah. they can use a bike to express themselves and do it in a whole different way yeah that's awesome and it's not like they have you know you know uh like a line sitting right there you know it's exactly like they, they got, got they a got, stair set they got a stair set yeah they got a stair maybe if they're lucky they have a skate park it's you know probably not the safest place for them to be you know if you're in like bronx or something right but you know it's like you got a flat you know paved road and you've basically made the absolute best case scenario out of it you possibly could and how cool is that i think that's like when you look at you know the birth of skateboard you know it's, yeah. it's the same thing yeah. right not everyone had access to surfing you get a little bit of better you know technology, your thing, is something people bring in, you know, surf 
to the streets, right? And how did skateboarding change the world? Changed so many people's yeah. lives, for, you know, for yeah. better. And they made something themselves, and I think that's awesome, right? Yeah. It is. It really is, man. That, that's. I'm getting all jazzed up. I'm excited. I'm inspired, <laughs> dude. I want to. I want to see what the next, what the future has. Did you guys ever play those, uh, the Tony Hawk games? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, those were the games that originally got me into into the whole like biking scene. Because it's like, I feel like you evolve. It's like skating is where it all started for most kids. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, like Dave Mira, like that that whole yep. generation, RIP. And, uh, and then it's like, oh, the MX Unleashed, you know, those, <laughs> those yeah. games. And they're like, oh, you can ride, like, these two-wheeled things on dirt? That's pretty cool. And the next thing you know, it's like you have all those, uh, you know, Sam Hill pops up, you know, and, and Aaron Gwynn and all these guys. And you're like, oh, this yeah. is pretty cool. You know? It is super cool. Yeah. I think all that, that bleed over, too. Like, how many great mountain bike pros, or Jesus, even road riders, right? Yeah. Peter Sagan, BMX guy. Yeah. You know, Vanderpool does everything, right? Like, yep. I know over, you know, I mean, people you know, do just one Perry Roubaix and all that. Now, when he got signed to Canyon, the first thing he wanted was a center downhill bike. Yeah. Right? It's just like, <laughs> seriously, yeah, the dude's got the skills. That's where he came up from, right? Yeah. Start out with BMX, into moto, into anything with two wheels. That's the cool thing. There's so many. I'm always blown away that people get the panties in a wad. There's some people like, oh, this style of riding isn't cool. It's not legit. It's like, it's all awesome, man. Mm -hmm. Anything that makes you happy. I mean, I do have a bit of a grudge against the Rubicon, but guys, but it just it just seems completely <laughs> mechanically doesn't make sense. But you know what? They're out there doing it, so give them, you know, give them credit. Yeah, we, we had, this, it's funny funny you say that and how, how this conversation is developing, but we had Christopher Blevins on a couple weeks ago. Yeah, man, and, talented dude. Jesus. And one, one thing that inspired me the most of our conversation was, was the way that he talked about the sport and... and the sport meaning everything that bicycles encompass and he he was stayed stating how beautiful it is that you can do you can ride a bike and express yourself in so many different ways where sure you might be able to do something a little different but there's only one way to shoot a basketball and that's to mm -hmm. get it through the through the hoop and he right. i thought that was super cool that there's so many avenues so many ways to ride a bike experience joy or whatever have it whatever it is and and yeah, the, the options are limitless. Whether it's wheeling in the Bronx or racing downhill or riding road, it's 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 special. Something that cycling has that other sports definitely don't. This yeah, conversation is like an advertisement for biking. <laughs> <laughs> <Just here>. like, <laughs> Side note, uh, you got a fan, Vernon, actually on our YouTube, which is kind of wild. Uh, JTV. Is my mom? TV? Mom? 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 <laughs> mom? Mom, yep. He says Vernon's the man. Pacific Northwest fam. Ah, man. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Yeah, crazy. Nice. I didn't know we had just stalkers out here for you, you know? Just amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's nice brought I mean, not stalker. That's the wrong yeah. way to put it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'll go say it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, he just clicked off. Like, no, no, yeah, like, no, I meant it, and I'm, 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 I'm just... Verdon over here bringing us to the most fans on our uh, YouTube page. You know, like I thought it was going to be normal mountain biker, but apparently oh, it's Verdon right now. <laughs> We're so I got a question yeah, about where you live. Mm -hmm. So, so you're up in the Olympic Peninsula, right? Yes, sir. That's where the what's that uh, the vampire show oh, man. <laughs> was filmed. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Tell you didn't. So that's, he's like, Twilight. <laughs> yeah. That's right. We did. He, he, are you Team Edward or Team? Oh, I don't even know. What's the other guy's name? I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I really don't even know. know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. But but well, yeah, is it like? Name. I know that there's some towns they get a lot of tourism for it. Have yeah, you ever had a problem with it, Forks? Yeah. Is that where the, that that's, is? That's where people, you know, it's funny because the people come out to, to go to Forks because, you know, the movie made Forks all look like it's this happy place. I mean, it's <laughs> foggy, but like everyone's happy and they're all getting along. I mean, look, I don't, I'm not bagging up Forks, but Forks isn't exactly like that, right? You know, like it's like, you know, Forks <laughs> and Aberdeen are, they're sort of like bloody knuckled former logging towns, right? Yeah. Like people mm -hmm. doing their best to get by. Man, it gets like 110 inches of rain. Damn. Wow. That's wow. like three times more than Seattle. Man, it takes a lot to live up there. So the people, you see them because, you know, they've got tans and things and they got fancy cars and they're driving out. You're like, man, them folks going to Forks. Mm -hmm. They're going to be surprised. <laughs> That's hilarious. And then they're just like walking around, stumbling around the streets, kind of disillusioned, looking for vampires and things. So, <laughs> yeah, you see, you see them coming. Uh, but, you know, 
if it brings people out and you know builds up the economy, yeah, that, that's good for them. But yeah, actually, the sad truth is most of that thing was filmed over in Hood River, Oregon, because they're like, okay, we're gonna say it's in Forks, but don't want to <laughs> show <in> Forks. You know? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's Hood better River for you. Is, is that where uh, they, there's some good mountain bike trails? There is. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think yeah, I've been tons there. Tons of good Riverside, ton. Post Canyon. Yeah, yeah. particular. Yeah, Fantastic. Okay, so I've been there. Yeah, okay. Good, that, good that's stuff. why that movie does look. Yeah, it's right. It's all yeah, because it got some light. It's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I love my neck of the woods, but yeah, Hood River's great too. Huh? Wow. A lot of great places to ride your bike. Yeah. yeah Look okay. what happens. You bring Twilight in. <laughs> yeah, okay. And so we're all bonded over it. <laughs> well, I've got a part two to that. I got a part two. Bigfoot. Have you yeah. seen Bigfoot out there? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. You're so off so crazy. No, no, no. I'm open-hearted. No, I'm open-minded. <laughs> like, I, 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 hate to, I hate to break it to you, Vernon, but you already did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, man. No, no. no this no, is gold. No, I, mean, I figure you're spending a lot of time in the woods. Mm-hmm. You know, you live pretty deep. You know, you're you're in the sticks, as we would say, around these parts. Oh, and uh, I, I'm just curious because I, I, I I'll preface it by saying that I, I have other friends who have, you know, who live in, in very similar to yours. Mm-hmm. Who them. have experiences with weird things in the forest? Okay, so okay. I'm curious. I'm curious to hear what you know. Have. If you spend enough time in the woods, you find you, you, you're going to have a weird experience, yes. right? So yeah. logically, like if we're sitting here and you ask me if Bigfoot exists, I say, oh, of course not, man. Come on, right? Every incident you find out to hoax some guy with you know big silly feet and stuff. However, however, <laughs> there's one time when I'm living. <laughs> this is why I'm in Humboldt <laughs> County. Be a one time. Yeah, there's one time. <laughs> it's gonna so be a in one Humboldt time. County, and there was no drugs <laughs> uh, involved, <laughs> but. You know, Humboldt, uh, you know, all the redwoods where Return of the Jedi was filmed and all that mess. Beautiful place. And uh, I lived up on the mountain above town. And uh, it was pouring rain because, you know, in Humboldt, it only rains about a third as much as frequently as it does on the peninsula. But it gets just as much rain. So it just comes down like God is angry. He's trying to drown everybody out, right? You need to build an ark and all that shit. Get some giraffes. That's the kind of rain. That's the kind of rain that they have up there. Anyway, this is back in, oh, Lord have mercy. It's probably like back in 2003 or something. So I got this mongoose pinner or something. This free ride bike. It weighed like, you know, no offense. It was a mongoose. It weighed like 60 pounds. And it probably had like a crayon for a rear shock. It was bad, you know. I was testing for bike. So I had this. I throw on this full face helmet and you know it's, it's early days so everything's just heavy and goofy do this like eight mile super steep road climb to get up to this trail uh, I can't name it because it's this private trail up there it's really good and I drop down and there have been all these storms right so I'm hitting the, I'm going down the single track it's great all of a sudden there's all these trees like a series of trees big you know like redwoods and cedars down across the trail I'm like damn alright so I go to pick up this bike and I, I'm getting it over the first log and there's a bunch of like uh, salmonberry bushes to the left of me, and just, but like just as, as close to me as you are right now, mm-hmm. just just really super close. And I hear this wow. in the bush. Now I'm wearing a full face helmet. There's rain coming down, but I could hear this thing. It's like inside my helmet. This growl, I could practically feel the vibration. Wow. Right? I mean, man, no. If you ask me, five seconds before that, did I believe in Bigfoot? Hell no, right? <laughs> At that moment, did I? Oh, God, yes, right? So I'm hearing this thing. The bush is shaking the whole nine yards, right? So I'm just like, get this bike, you know, lift it up over this tree. The tree's like, it's almost chest high, right? Get on the other side. I, you know, clamber over it. I'm wearing like early free ride, like roach free ride pants. And they're soggy. They're a little big. And they're soaked away. So they're like, looks like I'm in prison. They're like down around my ass. I'm barely getting over the log. I got like six more logs. This thing is following me. Oh. This isn't a moment in time. This lasted like 45 seconds, okay? No, no, like, glances over to see what no. it was? Hell no, I'm terrified, man. Really? I knew it was full of those. I but I think... Well, I, I couldn't see anything in the bushes, and they were moving, Whoa. and it was growling, and I hold was, on, I mean, hold I've on, hold on. never been so scared in my life. Now, when I got past oh. it, I am not, I am, I am not a skilled rider. Lord, I, you know, I look like a monkey screwing a football on my bike, right? <laughs> I am not you, man. I am not you, man. And I see you. No, that's, that's the best it's, analogy I've ever heard. It is, it, is, it is not a beautiful thing. Austin can test. He's like, ooh, ooh, you're hurting my eyes, you know? Stop. It's, you know, it's true. No. I, mean, I, I, you know, I get by, no. but it's not pretty. I get by this But it, it's not pretty. And, and But when I got past that last log, dude, I was like, ah, on the gas. I've never been so fast. I've never been because I was like, whatever is there is going to absolutely eat my ass. And I'm in the middle of nowhere. This is no public trail. There's no public trail. This is I'm if I'm gone, no one's ever going to find my they're going to find my bones 80 years later. Now, 
logically it was probably a female black bear maybe there were some cubs around there right whatever we had a bunch of bears up there but i'll tell you at that moment i was a believer now logically today do i believe in bigfoot no but you know if you talk to enough people who live in the woods they've got some kind of experience like that where yep. you're like what could it be i don't know you look you find what you're looking for my mm-hmm. my shirt this <laughs> find you yep. well, yeah exactly wow you find what you're looking for that's like what the last thing like the man at the gas station says before you head off the <laughs> Are you asking this dick for real? And it's fucking furred <laughs> looking for, boy. And it's fucking furred with that story. <laughs> I wish you the That's best. awesome. That, well, I hope you never encounter a real Bigfoot one of these days. I kind of do. That's, so I you can write do. about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. And Tell the truth. What do you do with this writing skill, you know? Uh, yeah. well, I wish Bigfoot was real. I don't know. I've never seen a Bigfoot. <laughs> but, like, it's one of those things where how cool would it be if there was just this colony of, like, eight, like ape people living in the forest? Bigfoot. That, that'd be sick. Big feet? <laughs> what do they call them? Bigfoot or big feet? Sasquatch, technically. Sasquatch. Sasquatch, yeah. Sasquatch. It sounds cool, but then yeah. you think with the okay, we kind of had that. If you shrink them down, they're chimpanzees, and they seem cool, but they're fucking terrifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, they are. You're like, no, Michael Jackson had it. it was cool. Yeah, he had one like three months old. <laughs> they get past like a year, and they realize they have the strength of five men, and then they do things. Man, they are they do rough. <laughs> they are <laughs> rough. rough. Are you talking from experience? Well, no, they, 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 everything you've ever seen in a commercial or Hollywood, it's a basically it's like a baby or a juvenile they hit adulthood and they're like oh hell no I'm breaking out I own you right they're like <laughs> oh, 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 they trade you fun. for a pack of cigarettes it's rough I mean, it's, oh, no no for real they scoop out your eyes all that stuff Jane Goodall went into oh, Jane Goodall went out into the wild was like I'm gonna see that chimpanzees are like humans in their pristine state they're gentle you know, human, they're oh. gentle, pure spirits. And, you know, no, there's cannibalism and adultery. <laughs> it is. Oh, it's I can't LA. even say it's it. LA. Oh, it is worse than that. It's bad. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's Oakland. LA. It's too Oakland. Soon? Oh, <laughs> once you get to like, Canceled. <laughs> once they get to like two, man, there, once that they is. get to like two years old, care. they have to take them to retirement homes. I'm serious. There's like retirement homes for every chimp. Cheetah was alive. And they lived to like 80. It's rough. So they like, use them for two years in a movie and then they like, basically take them to retirement home they're just smoking methyl cigarettes and are angry wow. <laughs> until they're like 80 years old it is gnarly Vernon the wealth of knowledge you're bringing to this fucking <laughs> podcast is just unreal astonishing I'm very good I'm stoked I gotta say R.I.P. Harambe though R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> Harambe man we got our boy <laughs> you got someone's boy first oh fuck <laughs> Oh, fuck, man. Wow. Oh, man. Well, Did you say you wanted to break the boundaries a little bit this, on your podcast? This podcast has <laughs> fucking taken uh, a leap to another end that I was not expecting at Sea Otter. Started out with uh, how many camping spots were here to we're talking about RIP. You guys were talking about camping spots? <laughs> well, we had the camping manager on, Kathy Pruitt, earlier. Oh, I mean, we've had hilarious. a bunch of different guests through. And she's I, a legend. I mean, she's a legend, and, and we're talking about legends like Sasquatch. So, I mean, it's, uh, wow. From one to go. the next. I don't even know where to go from here. I, I, I don't want to end it, but this is wild right now. Like, what, what, Vernon, how long do we have you for right now? Can, what else can we get out of you right now? <laughs> this is insane. I, 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 I would, all I have to say is thank you for everyone for your patience and hearing rambling. But like, did my grandpa show up on the podcast? Yeah, pretty much, man. This Sorry. is like, we got likes. We've not the most fans are hitting their. Uh, what do we? What else can we suck from you at this point? Like, this is knowledge. This is insane. Ah, uh, well, that is that is, that is the kindest uh, characterization of me rambling I have ever heard. So thank you very much. <laughs> Hey, just as long as you're having fun too. I'm having a great time. That's all that matters. Okay, shit. Can we get you a beer? Like you can. What do you? Oh, would you? (laughs) You can. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm looking. You got an actual beer? Just, just twisted teas for it. A uh, beer would be fantastic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. (laughs) Well, no, no, no. I was just. uh, I, 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 every. Beer would be delightful. <laughs> so what's going on for you in, at the week of Sea Otter? Oh, Lord, what is going on for me? Well, anything anything big for you guys, Canyon here? Well, we are doing a product launch okay. uh, tomorrow. In fact, so that's why I just came back. That's why I'm all dirty. It's just scouting trail. And uh, so go and take a bunch of, you know, journalists out and nice. get them on a new bike. Super excited about that. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have an entirely new bike launch in just a few days. 
So got that going on. Outside of that, you know, just talking, talking to actually, you know, just talking to a whole lot of folks. I, you know, the big thing for us is we've only been in the U.S. for six years, right? And a lot of people don't know what Canyon is or where we're from. That they don't know that we're from Germany. Uh, they don't know what makes us stuff unique. So it's I'm a nerd, right? So I'm always like, oh, so what they really want to know is about the bearing technology and you know replaceable pivots and the hardware. And people are like, where the hell are you from? And why can't I find you in the bike shop? I'm like, oh damn. Right, I realize that people don't know, you know, the, they don't know a whole lot about us. So I find that kind of thing really informative. And just being able to talk to people, talk to people who bought the bikes and really dig them is super gratifying. Yeah. You know, uh, if anyone's ever got a little bit of a, you know, a problem or something or they have a question, being able to help them out and connecting the folks and customer service, that kind of stuff is cool. More than that, man, just seeing friends, you know, uh, I mean, I, I live in a cabin because I'm not the most social guy in the world. But I come to Sea Otter and, you know, I see hundreds of people that I've, you know, seriously, you know, folks that I've known for more than 20 years and I like them all. You know, I have, there's a remarkable lack of a-holes in the bike industry, <laughs> which is pretty damn cool. Because I work yeah. in politics and you cannot say that in yeah, that world. Yeah. There's a whole, that's loaded with that with yeah. folks and with folks you don't want to know. And being able to just be here and see people get out on a ride, um, that's it, riding, talking to folks. Uh, you know, hopefully one day uh, I'll get to spend a little bit more time outside of a booth and just see the new stuff because I like seeing what other people are producing. I find that, you know, I'm a nerd. Man, God, I'm a nerd. Lord, I have to, you know, apologize to all the ex-girlfriends that I dragged to bike shops, you know, <laughs> yeah, in the rain. We're going to walk three miles because this bike shop is really good. You know, uh, that's what I would do for fun. The fact that, you know, I get to do it as a job is, man, that's badass. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can I ask you a question? Sure. So I, I, given your, your marketing background, mm -hmm. um, when you're approaching, let's say there's a new launch coming yeah. out, right, for something, obviously there's a, there's a whole set of criteria that comes, goes behind all that. Specifically when you're, when you're advertising, marketing, all the, you know, a, a, the, the points that you want to get across, how often are you coming out with completely original, like how often are you reinventing the wheel mm. versus how often are you taking strategies that have, that have worked in the past for other bikes and then just changing the colors a little bit, you know, not, not literally for the bikes, but I mean like for the way that you advertise the bike, for the way you market it to the world. Mm. Is it, is it something where every project, every new, new launch, everything is going to be a completely new approach, completely new strategy? Um, or like I was saying, is it, is it, okay, this worked in 2015, let's take what worked in there, apply it to 2024, see how that works. It, it, I mean, how much, how much ebb and flow is there there? Yeah. <clears throat> how much is, sorry for clearing my throat on there. Uh, how much is revolution and how much is evolution, right? Yeah. How much is a minor change and how much you rebuild? And I think it comes down to the category, right? Like you look at gravel bikes and man, they could be anything right now, right? Like basically start out a cyclocross that are bikes that, you know, don't have a super goofy high BB. And then, no, maybe it's a race bike, and maybe, no, it's an adventure bike, and, you know, should we put bags on it, and, you know, man, can we, I mean, good Lord, the stuff that we're thinking about for, for gravel bikes and for expedition bikes, oh, man, super cool, right? Like, in that world, in those early days, when a genre is kind of starting out, man, like, every leap forward, e-bikes, great example, right? Every successive generation, man, the, the gains are huge, and it really is kind of revolution, and then... You know, we all get to a point in the cycle where the product has matured in its evolution, right? And you're making things a little bit more durable and a little bit lighter, but it's, you know, maybe you're not setting the world on fire with a ton of change. So it really comes down to the genre of bike. Yeah. So like in the world of, you know, e-mountain bikes, man, that stuff is just like, oh, Lord, boy, do they get better and they get different. You know, I was yeah. talking to Austin. He's like, but wait a second. Everything should just have a ton of travel and a ton of power, right? You know, Mr. Moto Man. And I'm like, yeah. really? Do we just say that every, like, every normal, you know, every non-motorized, you know, mountain bike should just be like 160 or 180 travel? No. Like, you know, we make it this huge range of bikes for different people. But like when e-mountain bikes came out, just, just slap a motor on and a battery. Good. And some people are like, yeah, maybe. Maybe I don't want a ton of power. Maybe I want it to be lighter and feel like my normal bike. So if I get that thing offline, I can actually get it back online without throwing my back out. I don't have to see the chiropractor every time I want to put the thing on the bike rack, right? Okay, that's a totally different genre. You get like something like that Levo SL, which is groundbreaking, or yep. Bayer Rise. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then, you know, but maybe now you've got like the light assist bikes. You've got the full power bikes with big batteries. Maybe there's room for stuff in the middle. How cool yep. would that be? Yep. Mm -hmm. So that kind and of stuff. The, is and there are, there are things, bikes that are coming out. I think Canada just came out. With that one that sure. that uh, that is 
that. It's the kind in the middle. It's got as much power and torque as a full-powered bike, but battery's quite a bit uh, smaller, so you right. don't get the range, but you can get that same experience. I mean, do you see e-bikes just continuing to go in that in that lighter, lighter, more torque kind of range, and then and then now it becomes a regular bike, and you're just playing with travel and geometry? I think there's going to be a point. It's interesting because, yeah, right now everything is up in the air, and people are just starting to realize, yeah, like, it all started out one, you know, full power, ton, you know, heavy as hell. Then no, it's ultra light. Like when that first Evo SL came out, it just had a 35 newton meter motor. I know it's super geeky to people, but like, in other words, it was like doubling your power yeah. instead of quadrupling your power, yeah. right? And people were like, well, that's, and I liked it. I think it was a really cool bike at the time. But you're like, eh, not enough power. Yeah. And then it's like, well, maybe we should put something in the middle. Like, yeah, it's gonna constantly evolve. And that, you yeah. know, when they first came out, people were like, well, they just, they're heavy as hell and they feel like shit. And, it's like, and they break. And it's like, well, yeah, but I mean, I remember when free ride bikes had four inches of travel. Yeah. I'm like, four <laughs> inches of travel? You'll never be able to pedal a bike like that. And they weighed, man. Like, the, I, mean, I remember riding a Gary Fisher uh, Joshua or uh, something like it was like a Joshua. And, uh, man, it had, again, four inches of travel with a dual crown fork. Imagine. Yeah. For a Sid. <laughs> a Sid travel. That's crazy. But it was, uh, you know, and the thing weighed, like, man, it was like, it weighed as much as an e-bike. It was like yeah. 45 pounds. It pedaled so bad, we used to have to ramp, just turn that rebound knob all the way to the right so it would just pack out and just stop moving. And like, <laughs> that's how you got up the hill. Now, World Cup cross-country bikes yeah. weighing 21 pounds, yeah. half four inches of travel, and pedal so damn good, you never have to reach for a little blue lever. Yeah. Right? Like, how cool is that? And that's considered a small bike. And that's considered a small bike, yeah. right? Yeah. So, the same, you know, when people like, e-bikes are just heavy piles of shit, it's like, Oh yeah, first generation. What do you think they're gonna stay that way? Yeah, give it some time. Give it some time. I remember I read this article. I think it was like Popular Science, and they're asking this guy who designed. Um, You're still reading. Yeah, I, I'm still. I mean, look, I'm I'm I'm, I'm a nerd. I love them words, right? I'm, yeah, and not just on the toilet. I, I like I like books. But, you know, I would make horseshoes. I'm that guy, right? I'm weird. Um, but I'm reading Popular Science, and this guy. They're talking to the guy who designed for Formula One, and they're like, "Man, your stuff is so advanced. It's insane." And, and he goes, yeah, that's pretty cool. And they're like, well, just pretty cool. He's like, well, it's not the most advanced kind of engineering. And they're like, well, what's that? He goes, mountain bikes. And they're like, Whoa. seriously? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, I mean, my stuff doesn't have to be on the cutting edge of strength and weight. He's like, you know, if I just wanted to go faster, I could just basically get more motor in it, right? He's like, yeah, we care a bit for sure. But with the bike, he's like the human, the motor is a human and humans suck. You got like two horses, you know, come and crank it out of this thing. The pistons are totally lopsided. They don't yeah. work well, yeah. right? It's yeah. just, he's like, you have to make this thing so ridiculously strong and you have to compensate for the fact that the motor sucks and all this. He's like, the design and the engineering that goes into a mountain bike is so much, it's so much more demanding that goes in, that goes into automotive. And this is a guy who was designed for Formula One. Now, yeah. maybe he's a little bit of full shit, but I thought that was impressive. And I yeah. don't think he's exactly wrong. It's pretty cool. Yeah, take that with, uh, we can, all, the entire mountain bike industry can take that in stride. And with a full heart of pride, man, that's, uh, that's super sick. That's, that's really interesting. I'm curious to see where everything goes. I think, I think I've been hearing rumors of, of uh, like Tour de France style roadies um, training on electric road bikes to get some consistency. And I'm I'm pretty sure that that's how it's going to continue to go. You'll see more and more people riding riding uh, electric bikes for regular training and stuff. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so I'm I'm super curious. I'm I'm excited for the future. I think e-bikes are fun. I ride them all the time. There's the the amount of haters I feel like are slowly declining, and they're, yeah. they're still out there, but. Yeah, and I and I get it. Like you know, I'm not saying that people have to stop riding their you know their non motorized bikes. Look, you know, I mean, at Canyon, we you know our non motorized bikes wildly outnumber our e bikes, of course. And what do I spend most of my time on? A non motorized bike, 100 yeah. percent, right? Absolutely. But you know, the cool thing about e bikes, uh, if I may say so, is that like when people say like, well, I want to work out, so I ain't gonna ride. I'm like, ah, you haven't ridden one yet. Yeah. Right? It's like, 100%. You know, it's, yeah, like, yeah. it's just like, if you're a good one, you know that you can adjust the power and work as hard as you want, or, you know, you can take a bit of a break day, right? You put in five, six days of hard riding. You still want to ride, though? You don't want to sit on the couch and watch a shopping network or whatever crap is on TV? <laughs> but then get on. CV. Then you, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and it's like, well, then take a cheat day, but still get out on a bike. I mean, you could use it. It doesn't have to own you, man. You can, like, 
you can own your own experience on the bike. You can make it as hard or easy as you want. And, you know, so, and I, you know, I heard did hear something today. I was climbing up uh, Toro uh, County Park to hit Pipeline. And, I mean, you know, it's a brutal climb. I took Austin up on that um, a few years back on a photo shoot. And I heard someone go, cheater. And, you know, as I passed him. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, pretty much. But then I had to stop and think. I was like, what am I cheating at? Like, are we in a competition? Wouldn't I have to know I'm in a competition with you? Like, wouldn't that have to be consensual? Like, would I have to know that I am racing you? We'd have to agree on that. Am I just cheating at having fun? Because that's what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not working the booth. I'm having fun. Uh, you know, so I always find that, like, that, you know, again, people are oddly intimidated by something that's just different than what they know. But at the end yeah. of the day, like I'm saying, anything that's got two wheels is damn cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to take a moment and introduce mm. Victor Sheldon here. We're joined by a new guest. Hey. Wow. Longtime friend of mine. Uh, one of the fastest guys probably in Southern California on a, on a bicycle. Mm. Just got done racing the uh, Fuego XL. Um, yeah, race promoter in Southern California. Multi-time jet ski whatever champ. <laughs> so many things. A slasher. We have Vernon from Canyon Bicycles and Sebastian, a.k.a. the normal mountain biker here. Yep. Good, to be, good to meet you, man. Yeah. Good to meet you. I just, I just jumped in here, so. Talking. I heard my Hopefully. name from, from <laughs> down the way, and I saw some guy in recovery boots, and there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Today was a big day. So Tell us about it, man. Go? Oh, it was good. It was my longest ever mountain bike race. So, um, you know, I've been racing for ten years now, so, um, so it was nice to jump into uh, the XL. And, uh, so how long was it? It was uh, 70 miles. God, wow. Oh, it was 9,000 feet that, of climbing, so that was, uh, oh. that was a big day. Dude, you're still upright. That is impressive. That's yeah, really right? impressive. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I was actually worried about the two-lap scenario just because you come back to the, your house, you know, and you're like, I could just <laughs> pull over here and be, right here. be done. So, <laughs> uh, But it was actually a lot of fun. My friend Sean Estes is like, kind yeah. of coached me through it um you know for the last couple of weeks and it was like dude you gotta do it and it's, it's super fun and but uh yeah it was fun it was a good time that is awesome man yeah i ended up winning my category so that was even <laughs> that was even icing question. on the cake so Hell yeah. you almost don't even have to ask that question though well the, no you can you always gotta be humble man <laughs> did, did you hit the wall at all you know i got cramp i cramped a bunch yeah but um I still I felt strong like that's what was that was I was cramping but I was you know I, I, everything else felt good mm -hmm. you know it was only that one little issue but yeah. but uh, it wasn't like you were mentally just about to just completely check out no uh, no yeah. I I kept I kept yeah I kept my uh, kept my head down and kept pushing away power too, so man. impressive yeah. I would have done by by mile number two like, <laughs> that's it that's enough for me <laughs> yeah it was a fun course though it was a lot of fun. They made uh, some changes, I heard, to it. Yeah, uh, well, I didn't do it last year, so, um, um, yeah, this the, everything seemed to be, you know, seamlessly, so it was super smooth. Yeah. Well, cool. Our latest uh, subject that we were talking about right before we came up with was uh, e-bikes, mm. all about e-bikes and, and the future and kind of what's going on. Vernon was just saying he was uh, going up a climb. I don't know if you heard, but... But uh, someone called him a cheater. And yeah. What are we? What are we? What Couple are times, you know, it's always not not to. Uh, it's always like it's always kind of the same person that kind of does that. You know, mm -hmm. kind of an old mountain biker that just doesn't want anything to change. Right. And you know, these things are coming, so it's like you got to accept them. And they are a ton of fun, either whether you're in shape or you're not in shape. Yeah. And it just opens it the door to so many new people. Yeah. So. You know, I see guys out there, 70 years old. I'm down in San Diego, and there's groups of guys that are just out on their bikes where they would either be on motorcycles or something else. And you know, and and this is a lot, a lot safer sport than a motorcycle. No, for Absolutely. sure. Yeah, well, it keeps people riding. I, I think that's great. I see young people doing it too. Yeah. That wouldn't have got to it before. And you know, and again, I think the other thing is it opens the door to fitness. You're getting a workout again. You know, you can you can determine how much you want to work out, but even if you're taking it easy, <laughs> taking it easy on an e-bike is not chilling on the couch. I've right? raced e-bike races and yeah. they're hard. Very they're hard, like yeah. they're they're harder than a regular bike. You're at the I limit agree. the whole time yeah. you're on the bike. So yeah. well, that's the thing. I work just as hard on an e-bike generally as I do on a push bike. I just go a hell of a lot further in the same amount of time. Like sometimes I only have you know an hour for lunch, and an hour on a mountain bike 
on a, on a normal mountain bike to me is just never enough. I'm yeah, just getting like warmed six up. Six or seven miles. It's you know? just, you're just getting into it and then it's over and it's like, but on the e-bike I can go and put out the same effort and actually see something. Yeah. And get something out of it. And you know, I mean, I think that's pretty damn cool. And the other good thing about them is you're going to go places you'd never thought you'd go mm, yes, with a regular bike. Yeah. That's, what's, that's what I find myself going up, you know, climbs that you would, and it's really fun going up those really steep climbs. Yeah. So. Yeah, Austin and I actually just filmed a little video about this, but uh, my dad, uh, two years ago maybe, got, got his first e-bike, and uh, it's kind of changed his life. He just turned 69 uh, a week ago, and he hasn't, he used to race motocross and has been in the motocross industry forever. Forever, and, yeah. And he got, he got an e-bike and, and rides it four, di- four days a week, went from probably a pretty overweight well not super overweight but he was a bigger guy and now he's wearing the same clothes i am and, that is awesome. and wow. he's the best training partner i could ask for really he that is so cool throws her into turbo i'm and i chase him on a regular bike and get thrown in the pain cave it's like a perfect like just like take my i take my wife on him you know it's like take my kids on him it's like otherwise they would never go right you know just it's just they're they're amazing i i i dig them yeah, on recovery I, days, I mean, you can just when you don't want to ride, you can go ride. You know, that's exactly yeah. what we're saying, right? Yeah. And uh, recovery days, exploration days. Yep. That thing that you never climb, you're because it's too far out, and then it's this gnarly climb. You don't know where it goes on e bike. You're like, yeah, why not, man? And See then on top of that too is trail work. Mm. Yes. It becomes a yeah, whole like fun. you yeah. could actually do trail work. Yeah. You know? For real. Before you, you know, you're like packing all this stuff in, and you're just zapped by the time you're done doing mm-hmm. trail work because. Right. You know, I know, I know Spencer and I, you know, have a love for trail work and, you know, not building new trails, but just, you know, making the bet, the trails that we have better. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And keeping them alive. And that's, keeping that's them alive. Yeah. 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 So. Not that many people doing it. When you look at the grand scheme of things, it's like how many people who trail build do you guys personally know of everyone who rides? Like what? Maybe one percent of the people. Yeah, yeah it's interesting though, right? Isn't that yeah. kind of like? I think it's a little bit location. I mean, I largely, I totally agree. I, I, I think it's interesting though. I think there are certain areas where it's more in the culture, right? Like we're talking about Bellingham. In Bellingham, there's like people will call you out, right? They'll be like, "Hey, man, uh, haven't seen you at the trail days, right?" Because we have places like Galbraith who have a big mountain, and it's constantly evolving. It's constantly at it because it's an, an entire mountain that people don't know that it, the trails are built and managed the stewards are mountain bikers and that's been the case for you know more than 20 years and so i mean what other sport like if you're surfing the waves are the waves right if you're if you're road riding the piece of asphalt it's a piece of asphalt but we can shape our experience yeah exactly we can make an existing trail better we can we can you know it's again it's like we're painters we're artists we can totally shape it and make it better for everybody i don't know any of the sport like that and there are some places where people like you know did you earn your turns? Did you? Yeah. yeah. Did you put in? No dig, no ride. Right. It's tough in California because <laughs> there's so many anchors. restrictions <laughs> here, right? We can't just in California. You can't. You know, it's harder. You guys are. I mean, power to you because you've got all these. You know, regulations, CEQA, NEPA, all the stuff that you know slowed that down. And there are other states who are a little bit more relaxed and are a little bit open to harnessing the power of mountain bikers yeah. to trail build. But where you do have that, where the door is a little bit more open for us to be responsible trail stewards, then I think there's a little bit more of a culture, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And I, I put like uh, I promote the quick and dirty mountain bike races in San Diego. And uh, like I get guy, you know, the, our EMTs use them, mm. you know, our photographers use them. They go places that they wouldn't go before. Like, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, I, I can't think of a, of a, you know, a non-positive reason not to have them. It's a tool. It's a, it's an insane yeah. tool. I mean, not that regular bikes aren't, but yeah, they're, they're great. And they're, I think the future, what, what I was getting at before, I've, I've heard the, some Tour de France guys are training on electric road bikes for consistent efforts and stuff. And I mean, I think we're just going to see more and more of that. Even if they're racing on regular bikes, they're yeah. putting in efforts on this super consistent bike with uh with some assist it's interesting yeah i mean i I think it's it's kind of additive right it doesn't have to be one or the other right you can have both that's the cool thing i think sometimes fear people fear that it's going to mean the death of the non-motorized bike and it's like no no no. because it's still people are gonna i mean i think most guys they get into shape and then they go back to their bicycle yeah you know, so they they, yeah. they work hand in hand. Right, and the same thing, like we don't eat the same dinner every day, right? So right. We're not have pizza every <laughs> night, right? At least we're not in college, right? You know, so it's like it's the same thing with the bike, right? I mean, it's, you know, right? It's a spice of life. And at the end of the day, look, if people are demanding 
analog bikes or whatever we want to call them acoustic right there's no good term for i don't i still don't understand the push bike term right like i never pushed the damn bike in the first place but <laughs> if people are demanding it yeah we will sell it to you right yeah, we yeah, will yeah. not stop making it so as long as people keep demanding it it's not like e-bikes are gonna you know take away the thing that you love yeah no no you know one of the things i'm super concerned about is is a lot of the legislation now that's popping up that's very uh i'm not gonna say anti-e-bike but makes it a lot a lot more difficult to take e-bikes in certain places and what's what's worrying about it is that a lot of it's being brought up by people who don't mountain bike there's this very interesting like idea in the governmental world that that for some reason they're like a threat to you know the wildlife uh it's like the more access I, this is one of the things is the uh, the blue ribbon coalition have you guys ever heard of that before <laughs> sure yeah. yeah so they're the ones that they're, they're they're mostly in like the off-road like ohv yeah. kind of scene but they're but they're very much also it, it, it pertains to everybody it's like a vehicle that goes off the road is it eventually will be considered to be a mountain bike right yeah. and that's the that's the concern of like if the rules are made for uh, off-road vehicles then what's to stop them saying oh but a mountain bike's also considered an off-road vehicle yeah and then they'll start obviously it's gonna be it'll it'll start from cars to then motorbikes then it'll be to any kind of electric bikes like surons or e-bikes right you know mountain e-bikes then it's like oh mountain bikes one day and then wh where, where does it end will hikers not be allowed anymore like are they gonna shut down you know these places uh, to nature completely for conservation it's like well, where does it end, you know? And, and unfortunately, I see the e-bike thing being almost like another weapon, you know, for these 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 groups of people who want to to, yeah. to get people out of nature. They, yeah. they're, they're not gonna, ever going to admit that that's what they want, but yeah. the, each action that they take is only going to result in people getting removing access to nature, and that's yeah. what's really really concerning me about. It. Isn't that isn't that the isn't that the thing, man? Because you know, and because they saw e-bikes like, well, it's what we always said. The mountain bike was just the, the you know the the little. The, foot of the door to, to everything being motors and, and it's going to be loud and it's like first of all it doesn't have a throttle man you still have yeah. to pedal the thing it's yeah. a pedal assist bike right yeah. but i'm not even against moto i think at the end of the day um you know people there's a group of people who want to use the trail their way uh and they're just simply not tolerant of the diversity of people who want to be outside right yeah and i think the greatest threat that we have to open space is people not using it and not falling in love with it if people mm -hmm. if we get people outdoors and we can always it doesn't matter how you recreate outdoors we can always ensure and demand that people basically do it responsibly but if we don't let people outdoors they don't fall in love with it and then it's fine when the next strip mall comes in it's fine when the development yeah. comes yeah, in and tears yeah. it all up it's a lack of use and a dis disassociation from the environment that is the greatest threat it's urban sprawl for example that eliminates the wild spaces that makes the world a crappier place and if we say that the only way to recreate is to hike and look like Gandalf with the staff and don't get me wrong I hike as well but yeah. if we say it's the only right way to do it we're cutting out we're removing the love for the outdoors from so many people and that is what actually puts open space and nature at risk right yeah yeah, no, where I'm, where I'm from is Marin County. Oh, oh Lord, I'm so, yeah. <laughs> I have a very strong feeling about these kinds of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good but, uh, I hear you. Yeah, oh, yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that worries me is that there, the, the government does have, I'll, I'll speak for, like, the Northern California area, you know, here in particular, but there are, there are plots of land that the government owns or is in control of that literally nobody's allowed to go out there. Like you can go on, uh, and I didn't know this until I downloaded the, uh, the you know that that app on X. I guess yeah, right yeah, yeah. it's like a hunting map, uh, you know, kind of app. But now they have it for like off-road vehicles and whatnot. It's a really really good app. I'm not sponsored at all. I just I just use it all the time. But um, you can when you start to like binge on that app and you can just like like blow the map up and go to certain areas. You can literally tap on that map like certain plots of land and it'll tell you who owns it. You'd be surprised how much land is owned by the government, whether yeah. it's like an open space district or it's like a water unified district, school district or something state yeah road, exactly yeah. water district and, and then it's just there and then you, you look there's there's no roads to it there's no gates there's no like trails there's nothing out there and you're like what's what's going on here yeah, what, <laughs> like, what are you using this land for <laughs> you know is, are we not to go there like what's the deal yeah so it's it's interesting there's a lot of that too yeah. you know and 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 yeah, so that was just a thought. I don't know if, if where you guys are from, and you have to deal with that stuff too. But not too bad. Yeah. Not too bad in San Diego. Um, but I did hear that Fish and Game owns the most acres in you know America. Wow, right. Not not America. Wow. You know, United States. I don't know if it's true or not. I I th it was thrown out there because maybe if you if, yeah if you knew or not, just to kind of mm -hmm. that was true or not. But 
Yeah, um, it's it's tough. I mean, I thought it was. I don't know if it was national. Well, na- you have national parks. You have BLM. Yeah. You have U.S. Uh, I'm really ignorant. Is it U.S. Forestry? There's so many different agencies. There's yeah. about five different federal agencies, and you have all the alphabet soup of state agencies. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, look, I don't think mountain bikes belong absolutely everywhere. I think that, you know, I think that it's a question of, I. but I do on the other hand. I mean, we start, the problem is we start from a position of, you're not allowed anywhere, where will we let you in? Yeah. Yeah. Which is exactly yep. the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. What we should be doing is asking, do mountain bikes or a certain whatever kind of trail app, you know, trail use application, does it actually cause more erosion in a certain environment? Maybe it's more environment. Maybe it's more sensitive because there's a fire recently or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. Uh, maybe some bird is, you know, nesting in there and legitimately you can't ride fine. But it doesn't mean they have to be excluded from entire giant swaths of land. I mean, I, I, I maybe have this entirely wrong. People out there can correct me. By all means, feel free. But it's either something like a third or two thirds of Marin County is preserved public open space and yet Marin County's got less than 20 miles of public legal single track for riders to ride on a lot of that like eight of it is in China camp yeah right so then you're like oh there's a mile over here and then 30 miles away there's another half mile that is crazy you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of miles of single track and no mountain bikes I mean it's where the hate all started yeah yeah Yeah. you know it is crazy and and where the uh where the bikes kind of started, where mm-hmm. mountain biking yeah, really yeah. kind of... Yeah, not coincidentally, right? Yeah, <laughs> Mount Tam. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a very interesting thing, because I, I grew up, you know, I grew up dodging the Rangers. You know, that was like... <laughs> I don't live in California anymore, so I can say that now, but... I mean, yeah, no, that was, that was you know, that was us. You know, me and my friends, you know, everybody back in the day, you know, it's like we learned how to ride bikes on mountains, you know, because we were just trying not to get caught. <laughs> I don't think that people realize that there are Rangers out there with radar guns. On, oh, yeah. on trails that are legal, oh, finding yeah. you hundreds of dollars yep. for exceeding the speed, which is really slow. And cameras yeah. nowadays. And cameras and, and chasing cameras. you and yeah. getting you. You can get thousands of dollars of fines for riding a mountain bike. I mean, oh. we're this is it, it's mind blowing. Given particularly given that the science is really clear that mountain bikes have no more of a footprint, they oh. cause no more erosion Absolutely. than hiking. What causes erosion is poorly built trails. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I mean, I think the, a lot of the, the hikers, they just make shortcuts everywhere. Yes, they do. So they make more trails. Yeah. You know, and right. it's just like, you know, I, I was I was talking to a park ranger and, and you know, going over things, and, and he was like, only hiking there. And I'm like, look up at that hill. There, there's just a, there's just, it's right. just a yeah. trails everywhere. And I'm like, so you, do you think mountain bikers made those trails or hikers? Oh, those are mountain bike trails. I'm like, a mountain bike can't even get up there. Right. I mean, it's just a. You know, it's straight up and down. I go, those are all from all from hikers, sir. Right. Those are all from hiking. When was the last time a hiker got a fine for hiking in no, no. Right? That's yeah. the thing that's crazy. I'm, I'm not hating on hiking. I do it as well. But the idea that somehow riding a bike makes you a criminal. I mean, come on, man. We pay taxes. Yeah. All this, I remember growing up here, it was about 84, 85, when they said, okay, no more in, in state parks, no more mountain biking. I remember as a teenager thinking, well, you know, by the time an adult, someone will fix that. But the truth is, you know, yeah. it hasn't. <laughs> and you can't wait for someone to fix it, right? We have to fix it ourselves. Right. At the end of the day, look, man, we pay the taxes. This is, you know, this land doesn't come for free. We pay to yeah. support and preserve it. And we have a, we should have a voice yeah, and, absolutely. And, and, and access to it. Again, you know, we should make sure that we're designing trail systems so that it reduces the potential for trail conflict. But the crazy thing about California is it's almost like if you decided to experiment on how to get people in conflict with one another, that's how we do it. You take all the mountain bikers and you funnel them on a couple square miles of trail. Yes. Well, of course that's going to be a problem because now you're you're running into air all the hikers and you're yeah. and it's like it's exactly wrong or you're restricting us to fire roads well fire roads are the shortest distance between a and b they're super steep they're super wide it's hard to control your speed a lot of erosion a lot of erosion so of course you're terrifying people coming down it's like you know if you design a trail system appropriately you can you can ensure that the trails close to the trailhead are primarily for hiking great the hikers don't want to be typically 15 miles away from the trailhead you go make the legal mountain bike networks further out that's where we want to be and it actually reduces trail conflict and animosity you go to Marin County people are crazy they're waving yeah, their stats at you they're <laughs> yelling at you like this is ridiculous we're yeah. supposed to be outdoors and loving you know loving the outdoors and 
it, to me, I'm sorry, man. I grew up out here. I this reason I live in Washington State, right? Yeah. No, this <laughs> reason I moved to Nevada. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is this is actually really interesting because I just uh, about a month ago had a meeting with the LA superintendent for <laughs> open space. Wow. And man. we discussed a lot of the same the same things, and we're trying to. It, it, the guy the guy's really really awesome, and he's really on it, and he understands, and he's he's. Uh, definitely got to go through hoops and bounds to to make sure everybody's happy and also make sure he's doing his job but they are well at least los angeles the county of los angeles is becoming more and more aware of the opportunity that mountain bikes one can bring and and the fact that most of the people maintaining these trails are mountain bikers because yeah. hikers aren't doing it aren't doing a damn yeah, that, thing that's no, the, that is the that is the truth of it right like that's the thing that if you if we open the door to mountain biking, you will find there are so many people. I don't know any other trail user group where people are so motivated to get out there and improve the trail because our enjoyment of the trail is directly related to how well built it is, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like we want the trails, and you can ensure that, like, look, you can, when you're approving a trail building project, you can ensure that it, you know, it's done so that there's appropriate water diversion controls and it's not eroding and it's, you know, it's not too steep and all, you know, all those things. But, you know, like, that's the thing we're talking about, places like Bentonville or Bellingham, where they've said, yep, mountain bikes, we're going to ensure that you have access. You're now responsible, which means you have to do the hard, responsible adult work of not building illegal trails. You have to build it to standard. But once you have that, suddenly you have well-built trails, and it, they're multi-use. It's not a mountain bike trail. It's a trail for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's welcome. But then that's bringing in, in Bellingham, you're seeing people come up from Portland, down from Canada. It's bringing in a ton of revenue. Downeyville. It changed Downeyville. Yeah, sure. You know, uh, we're talking about Bentonville. Through to Colorado, there are so many examples of how mountain biking helped struggling economies. We were talking about earlier about forks, right? Bringing ecotourism and building, bringing jobs, Productivity. We tell people in rural areas they can't devastate the environment, and I, I'm fine with that, right? I live in a former logging community, but then we don't give people an opportunity to actually live and and have an income. I think Canada gets it right. Yeah. You go to Vancouver Island and all these places, all these former logging towns, you know, they have they built it up for mountain biking, and it brings in ecotourism dollars, and it allows people yeah. to live out there and have a life. Yeah. yeah, it's a proven fact that, I mean, you build trails in a, in a city, it brings revenue to any city. Yes, it it's does. a yeah. proven fact. 100%. For, for the amount, and it, to build a trail is not that expensive, you know? I mean, for what for what it costs to build, for what it brings to the city and the, the surroundings, it's it trumps yeah. it. Yeah, uh, Squamish did a study. I, uh, I, sorry, Spencer. <laughs> I'm talking over you, man. But Ted Tempany built Half Nelson in Squamish, and it was the most popular trail in British Columbia. And I can't remember it, the number of people who rode that trail, and they gave them this tiny little bit of money. I'm not, not talking Squamish, but they're like, oh, here's a little bit of money to build this trail. And he kind of went out and built this amazing flow trail that anyone could ride, right? Like any skill level. If you're a pro, you could just kill it. Brandon Seminick's on there. <laughs> You know, being Brandon, you got kids on, you know, basically, uh, you know, like coaster bikes on it. The trail is so cool. And they realized, oh, my God, this, like, the tourism dollars from this one trail yeah. in Squamish, which is a great place loaded with trails. This one trail, it was like the revenue was insane. The city was, like, oh, my God, this is completely changing our financial fortunes. It's like, ding, yeah. ding, it works. It yeah. works, right? <laughs> yeah, it's so, it's so funny. All, all of this kind of comes full circle and i wish more people understood this and thought this this way because it's it is so clear how it can help and then there's other people out there a friend of mine who is uh who does a lot of nature conserva conservation stuff at least publicly also builds trails and and things and and we ride bikes together all the time and i've had a few people come at me in in my instagram dms because <laughs> i'm building trails and they're like what are you doing destroying destroying <laughs> our land as i'm like making sure the bushes are cut back so we can see and i'm making it safer for the riders and the hikers so mm -hmm. i can see you as i'm leaning in a corner and i i yeah and they're coming after me saying i'm eroding or causing erosion or destroying the land and i'm like man if you would just see the other view of this massive amazon shipping shipping fulfillment center behind me that <laughs> just flattened and took out yeah. everything like there we go right. let's just think about this for a second here i mean i understand the land is beautiful and 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 it is super fragile and 
but there also need to take care there also it. is a lot of land. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you could fly over the country and drop like heavy items, and I would guarantee you probably wouldn't hit anybody. Yeah. Like, there's so much land. <laughs> yeah. The thing I feel like we're just like in this bubble of like, oh, there's only this type of planet, and it only exists in this one particular. It's like oh, there's. It's like kind of all over the place. <laughs> like, I'm not a biologist or anything, but I feel like we take it a little bit too far with the conservation side of things. I'm not to say that we shouldn't conserve the world, but we should absolutely. But there's like, it gets a little bit too intense sometimes. It's like just here, stop looking at this inch of land, open your eyes up, look at everything else. Like, yeah. we're and good. how much? It's and fine. how much of it's, it's really about conservation? How much yeah. of it is instead just saying I want to use the land by myself with people who do it the way I do, right? Like, it's, yeah. it's very exclusionary and very elitist, right? Mm-hmm. I don't need, you know, I think the idea, like, they're saying, I'm preserving, we want to conserve the land. It's like improving a trail so it's got proper drainage, so it's not eroding, so it's safer for everyone, including hikers on the yeah. way down. That's not making anything worse. It's improving it, right? Yeah. Less erosion. If you have a sensitive steelhead stream or something, you have less siltation in those spawning beds. Yeah. Building trails properly makes it safer and protects the environment. I think real people oftentimes use it as an excuse simply to keep bikes yeah, off. And for I sure. think that's just mm-hmm. ridiculous. For right? sure, because that same person that's coming at me and it for destroying the terrain is that same person that I come up to and grab a lot of brakes because I'm slowing down and they're just absolutely <laughs> pissed. This, yeah. this guy's made a, uh, a few videos now. Um, where, where he plays a hiker and it's it's pretty spot on because he he <laughs> represents the the hikers. I know from experience, man. <laughs> yeah, I know from experience. <laughs> from Marin County, <laughs> they'll teach you. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. But yeah. Anyways, like we could. I feel like we could go on and on about trail yeah. building. Yeah, I, I I think I will say one last thing. I think that sometimes when people hear trail building, they think of it as this boring, or they hear the word advocacy. And they're like, man, I just want to ride, right? Like, yeah. that's that goofy thing. There's this one guy in, in your community, and he's into it, but, you know, he also eats a lot of wheat germ, and he's a boring dude, and this isn't for me, man. I just want to ride my bike. And I, I get why people have that. There's that stigma attached to it. But look, at the end of the day, it's it's just about making mountain biking better and more fun. There are yeah. a lot of places that have all the natural terrain and the, and the capacity to be great places to ride. But the places that truly are outstanding to ride have great trails, and that's not by accident. They are purpose-built, and purpose-built to be fun to ride, and fun to ride also can mean sustainable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. Really, man. No well, cap. I want to live in that world where that's understood. Cheers to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. seriously. Exactly. Yeah. Well, right on, guys. I don't know uh, that we have much more to go. Austin's been at this for like yeah, how long you guys been running this five for? hours now. Right? So Damn, all he's right. Been going, <laughs> and he just took a little breather now. He built a house back there and started a punk rock <laughs> band and cut a disco album. What are you doing, <laughs> man? Uh, but yeah, anything else, or should we just call her here? Mr. Nice. Mr. Big Dog. Thanks for having me on, you guys. Dude, yeah, it was yeah, a pleasure to meet you guys. You, man. I appreciate uh, give you guys a coming a second. on. A little yeah, thanks. I guess here. Yeah, thanks for letting me walk on, man. So, hey, congratulations <laughs> on the win, man. Oh, Ooh, thank you. Yeah, that's serious. That's yeah. awesome. I'm gonna eat good tonight. <laughs> and yeah. sleep. Yeah. <laughs> you deserve it. Uh, yeah, maybe a couple of glasses of wine, maybe a bottle. Who knows? There we go. Sounds like a proper celebration. <laughs> yeah. Well, right on, guys. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, Austin and everyone else does as well. But thank you for your time. And uh, hopefully everyone listening enjoyed it as well. Yeah, shout out to the viewers out there. We'll yeah, see you. Love you guys. We'll Thanks see you on the next one. Yeah. Cheers. Bravo. How long was that for you? Nice, dude. <laughs>